Well, I think we've we've said, and just by the way, there's uh, Grace Dolavira uh, going through. Grace uh, going for her tenth comrades and her eighth gold medal. So that was. Uh, She'll take a very conservative run right the way through and probably pick up a gold medal at the end. And Baba, the no assistance rule is something new that's come in this year. And uh, it's really a case of something that has been around forever. It's an IAAF rule. And that rule says basically that you cannot have any assistance if you have to go across the line by yourself. Now, it's a very emotive issue. But the reality is that we've got to understand what goes on when we're running. And running is not a contact sport. It is a sport that when you get tired, it's inflicted on yourself. When you're injured, it's inflicted on yourself. There's no one, it's not a boxing match, it's not a rugby match or whatever. So when you end up lying on the ground, that's because the body is telling you that you're exhausted or it is getting to a catastrophic uh, phase and it is stopping you from going forward. This is not the time then for someone to be picked up and carried across the line. Now comrades, spirit has been let's help people. It's a spirit as I said earlier on of adversity. Now we don't want that to be a health hazard. So of course comrades have actually just gone back and said well let's reinforce the rule the iwf rule but something that a lot of people aren't aware of is that you can be treated now on the ground something that came in about two years ago is that medics could come along and treat you and you could be treated for two hours and then get up and cross the line under your own steam if the medics allow you so that's an important uh, thing for people to remember. So if someone goes down with a cramp, it doesn't mean that they're not going to be allowed to carry on or anything like that. It's a safety rule. And in the end here, in the last 1.6 kilometers, it's a case of um, there will be marshals and medical people every 50 meters. So it's not a case that we're actually increasing the risk of trouble. It's a a situation that is going to help protect the health of the runners. And there have been some um, deaths, as you know, last year we had a very sad occasion and so on. So I think it's important people understand why it's been brought in. And the important thing is that if a body is not able to make forward motion, then that body is telling the person, you've done too much, you're in a risky situation. Donovan? Ja, net om aansluiting te, te, te vind by, by wat Nari nou gesê het, daar sê die Internationale Atletiek Federatie sy reel, wat bepaal dat jy geen ondersteuning mag kry in die, in die wetloop, vooral aan die einde van die wetloop, en dat daar geen contact met jou gemaakt kan word. He. Maar nou by Comrades, as gevolg van um, twee atlete wat verlede jaar um, gesterf het by die wetloop, is die reel nou hierdie jaar baie ernstiger en strenger toegepas en dit is vir ons belangrijk om te besef dat die geest van comrades gaan rondom comraderie, jaldhaftigheid en toegeweidheid en oor die jare is dit ontwikkel om comrades een baie speciale ondervinding te maak vir mense en wat belangrijk is vir, vir mense om te besef is dat as gevolg van die prijsgeld is dit nou nood, nood, noodzakelijk dat atlete moet besef dat enige hulp wat hulle verleen word sal, sal leid dat tot, tot, tot diskwalificatie en met die diskwalificatie sal het beteken dat um, die atlete natuurlijk nie hulp kan ontvang nie. Maar vir die, vir die, vir die voorgrote meerderheid van die veld sal het belangrijk wees om te besef dat die, die geest en die atmosfeer het reeds gegaan rondom die komraderie om dit te behou. En dis belangrijk dat ons net proactief moet, moet optree om nie weer eens um, die type nagevolgde het wat ons verlede jaar gehad het, en maar nog steeds om die geest behoor te, te blij hou. Yes, Nori, the ladies race uh, South Africans? Yeah, no, look, there's a couple of uh, South Africans in there, just uh, Grace Dolavira and then I saw Carol Mercer. Now, if you go back down to 2001, that was a sprint finish on the Kingsmead track for, uh, for the first South African position. And I think what we're going to see today is Grace... Uh, Carol coming through into the t- to the back of the gold medals, and they if if Rihanna and Farwa 
have a, a dice and blow, that's what's uh, going to come through and catch them up and pick up the pieces. Professor Mullen there, out leading, and he's now uh, into the Westville, uh, sorry, into the Pine Town uh, area and onto Fields Hill and climbing up Fields Hill. Mona, Kimomui, Paul Kalanting, how can I carus Bagasani, Sa Pine Town? How new a fellow Jalo, Uto Kena, Silen Yung, Etling, Ilimui, Pound of High Sale, we have a Kinsan, Sibjan Gaureke, Hillcrest, one how to a more Utra Hillcrest, Kibakasan, Satluf, Unulu, fellow Jalo, Soto Shibili, Bagansan, Sa Porta Seal, Ling, the Vale of a Thousand Hills, Satabua Castle, Fitilimo, Karamutu, Professor Molen, Unzai Kumakapeli, Puto Gorna, Kenny Sustain. No, I don't think that uh, Prof Mullen can sustain, but uh, at 61 kilometers to go, um, although he's got a, a South African flag there, he's actually a Zimbabwean um, down here, and he races down here every week in uh, KwaZulu-Natal, so he knows this area very well. Um, they'll be coming off here onto Village Road and then turning out to the Kloof Station, um, he's got a very big lead at the present moment of about a minute for the last time we picked up. We're minute, minute 20. Um, Donovan, do you think uh, he's got the potential to go through any further? Yeah, no, he's a, he's a rhythm like no good. And Fields Hill is one of the greatest levels in the, in the five great levels that we've had in the field. And that means that he's really good hard work. So we will see if he not only begins at the beginning of the week. And as we look at the distance that we have left now, is it too late? Well, as a novice, of course, he's also got to learn the pacing and the rhythm of, of uh, comrades. Um, but at 61 kilometers to go, it's an awful long day for him still out there. En voor alle zijn het leert alleen moet hardlopen voor zo lang nodig, want hij heeft een groot voorsprong. Dat betekent dat ze lang voor hem nemen om hem aan te hardlopen. Comrades <laughs> Over Fields Hill and onto the beautiful stretch of the Commerce Marathon up towards Hillcrest. And the sun is up, the crowds are out, and Professor Mullen is making all the running cured. Yes, Professor Mullen from Zimbabwe, a novice, only 22 years of age, so a long uh, running talent ahead of him. He's uh, crossing over the bridge now to go into the Kloof area. We saw him pass the 63 kilometer to go marker, just over one hour, 28 minutes. So he's on pace for uh, roughly about a 520. So going uh, over exerting himself in, but you never know. One day we are gonna get a guy who's gonna lead Comrades from the start and win it. You never know, 53 seconds ahead he is of the second place man. Uh, really the incentive for him here is the Bonitas hotspots. I think he was first through in the, uh, the hotspot earlier on. 5,500 Rand, but he has to finish the race. And these hotspots now added a different sort of a uh, dimension to the race because it makes it more interesting. But the lead pack to Lani, the lead group really, the real contenders are quite a long way back. And can be a good long fan now and learn to see visa more which he pays setting Kulumanga or Professor Pambilga cool Gunalaba kitchen lava and a tamba with you born about your basset to be nearly so with you bang a winner long jaholona man wabayana walk all over to a kitchen as don't tell a papa mill in a tamba with the distance young panisha magua lake the third guy coming there through Kloof, Prodigal Kumalo, also Zimbabwean and resident of KZN. I'm very excited, Ian, because although he started really fast, he's a very talented runner. He ran his first ultra this year in the two oceans, finishing 12th, so we could expect things from him. Well, I think Prodigal Kumalo has got a chance here. He's one of the runners that is coming with a good mar marathon ultra pedigree. I think he's, uh, he's, he's up for a gold. He's certainly gone out quickly. It's, uh, you know, it's all about the second half of the race, but now this stretch of the route to Tulani is 
is very, very pleasant for the runners. It's not that hilly. It's nice and cool. There's lots of spectator support. And uh, the next real big hill is both us. In Caesar, Leagam Tunga, Ukumalo, and a Tamba with Moba, Joba, a Kichimala, the Mele Ishale and Vawale in Caesar, the Ezigeza, Kichima Combres, Esme Experience, Nan Moba Ibang and Sesetin and Pella Uting at Peta, Maloko, who gain a lot of experience, and we are able to strike Masegua Lekinen, Kanti, isn't Thomas Nak Petel and Joula Papambili, everything Kiba Inga Hambing and Telefana and Teloti Hambingayo, Ungana and King and Gakulo. So staying at the back and calm is very important in a race. It's quite interesting to note that uh, Tulani, normally in comrades, you get the guys who are going out in front, they're really unknown. But the fourth runner who came through there, Tsepo Masebi, and the fifth runner at the moment, Sandile Lambete, all of them class runners. Uh, Philip Molefe in the third position, he's got a 2.14 marathon. Each of the first four guys, Tulani, are all sub-220 marathon runners. because if you don't do a proper training and you know exactly how fit you are you only run with the pace of somebody you might get yourself into trouble you rather do what you normally doing on training that itself will put you in a good chance of doing better in a race if you place the place and impel around the foot among a go kitchen mega she was always and she is into the banya bantu siak panish a little to massive yekene philip alefe is in second place 53 odd seconds behind this is the chasing group coming through now. And let's have a look at some of the names we had. Sambili Limbete, Prodigal Kamalo in there. It's uh, there Shvetsov. In the blue vest, the independent runner with a whole bunch of Mr. Price runners around him. It's uh, Shvetsov looking very, very strong and making a determined bid there in the chasing bunch. Yeah, that's a very interesting group there. You've got Shvetsov, the 2007 winner and record holder, the 2005 Comrades Marathon winner, Sipo Ungamane, and the gentleman next to Shvetsov in the uh, blue foreign number, Magnus Mickelson, who was 16th. He's got a 2.14 marathon from Australia. And the second group coming through here, Kuluri Murzin in the netbank colors. Uh, he finished fourth in the 2006 uprun and second last year. So he could uh, come through strongly near the end and uh, bring some fireworks. Well, these are the chasing bunches and they've actually broken up into various groups. And uh, Magnus Mickelson, the Australian, he was in that lead group uh, of the second chasing bunch. I chatted to him and he's very determined to do well today. But uh, we do not have a consolidated chasing bunch and I think that's indicative of the hard pace. I think uh, th this year, definitely, it's, uh, I think the guys are on record pace. Before in comrades, you used to always have um, the rabbit to guard in front and then a big main bunch. But here we have Vladimir Kotov, the 50-year-old master from Cape Town. He's the upright record holder, 5 hours, 25 minutes and 33 seconds. But Ian, uh, I think you heard me speaking in the morning. The guy coming through in our picture, Inge Dissiem Kiese. He was third last year and first South African. I think that's a danger man for today. Definitely. And Kiese is the uh, top South African last year. Also a man from KwaZulu-Natal. He uh, runs out of uh, down in the south coast from Trilumi area. And he is very, very determined to do well. The Nedbank colors are going through. And uh, that is, I think Johan Wester is on the far side there. Or it might have been breakthrough. Not quite sure about that. But the, the green colors are the new Nedbank club and also the breakthrough club. Uh, Chelani, these uh, new clubs are coming through. But uh, looking at some of the names in the top 10, Charles Gianni, these are a little bit old, some of these uh, stats. France Chaoke, also uh, uh, very, very often up at the front of races. And uh, Lefu Rachaka also in there, that really is uh, turning out to be really interesting. <laughs> Go punch yes bill or go yes tattoo. And a tamba photo would he only on the only on it. Umfana or I win at Munyawa or Zule, Lerisi, 
angachabula kakhulu if angayiwina iAprun ngoba akuvamsile ukuthi abagijimi abawina idown run baphinde babuye bawina iAprun ngiyakhumbula ugrishi yamhlula kakhulu ewina ma Abraham kanjalo nokodwa futhi yamhlula kanjalo nabo fusi bagijima kahle makwehlela nabo kelehe nabo sipho ngomane kepha amakhushu kwakuzwala abagijimi kalula kakhulu the only runner who has been able to win up and down run and in several occasions was Bruce Fordyce. The rest is have failed and there are reasons behind that. Well, well, talk about that during the course of the day, the up and the down run, the big difference. The last man to hold both the up and down records, of course, is Bruce Fordyce. And Fuzzy and Schlapper went through a little bit earlier. And uh, now they're heading up towards the Hillcrest area. And really the race is on. It's just remind you of the uh, SMS competition. It's uh, Chevrolet Captiva up for, for grabs for somebody. 38338, you need to SMS, cost you 10 Rand. Uh, we'll be announcing the winner this afternoon at around about 5 o'clock. Yeah, Philip Molefe in the Toyota Colors in second position right now. He's a class runner. Uh, he's got a 216 marathon and was uh, fifth in last year's Johannesburg Marathon. So Tulani, not a slouch over the marathon distance. Um, he is starting very fast and quite interesting to note that the first four runners in the race at the moment are novices. Sina kosha uguti usipongo mani mae wina ikombreti. Waipuma isbili gu SA Marathon. Wapinde wapuma isbili gu Two Ocean. Sisuge futi siye gu zondi. U zondi waipuma istatu gu SA Marathon. Wapinde wapuma istatu gu, gu Comrades. And the most of the athletes that come and run well in Comrades, they do very well in Two Ocean. And I find it very strange nowadays our athletes. Abasafuni ukichi malama long runs afana nabo marathon o jackie gibson kanjalo na manyama marathon na itu ocean beze na that pace kanjalo no koto of 49 what maezo iwina it yokala e comrades he was second good Kukulo go to ocean. Niego Krishi, Kanjalo na Wenza Ganjalo. Enge Temba Ugut, if you come here with a full confidence of knowing exactly what you are capable of because of the speed that you have got and the endurance that you have to go up the hills like two ocean, you will do well in comrades. So we're traveling now with the second place man, the race leader, Professor Mullen, is uh, around about a minute ahead of uh, this guy, Philip Malefe, in second place. Still a number of relatively unknown runners in the top 10. Uh, the last time we heard, and this is uh, not too long ago, Fani Machipa also in there, another guy with the gold medal chance. But amongst the women, the Nagalievas, uh, twins, and uh, Tatiana Zakova were racing ahead of the women's pack. But uh, significantly, we had uh, Fawa Mentor in the fourth place a little while back. And another runner from Russia, Marina Mishlianova, was fourth, uh, uh, fifth. And then uh, the other South African, Rihanna Finico, was in sixth place. Grace to Oliveira and Maria Bach also in the gold medal positions. But that's a little bit while back. It's, uh, there's our leading man from the helicopter camera. There's an overview of Professor Molen the current race leader in the 2008 Comrades Marathon, making his way um, on the freeway in Kloof. He'll be taking the left off-ramp now to enter Hillcrest. Um, interesting thing about today's race, you can tell, Ian, that the pace is fast, as we have a lot of little small bunches of five runners, six runners here and there, and the, the pace is fast, and I think that's being driven by the leaders and also by Leonard Shvetsov. Interesting to note, uh, Nori Williamson has got this little uh, computer program that predicts the, uh, the end time. It's uh, not quite that linear, but anyway, he's predicting a 5.22 finish. And then we talked about that magic 5.25.33, which is the course record. But uh, remember, that is the pace of the leader. So the guys a little bit back are off that pace, so they won't be quite running at the speed. But, of course, the first... 40 odd k's of this race are pretty much uphill so they will perhaps speed up over the second half of this race but uh, that is the race leader lovely sunshine down there the long shadows and there he goes working his way up towards hillcrest <laughs> Lemkanza ikala ekaleni usasuga nje kona letegini uzangapa. Mau itate mawalage uzongena enkingen ngempela njoba simbona nangempela njoba ulo uprofesa. Uguti 
ebe kupuga la panaga nzimanya na ngempela okubo nisayo ukuti iyo mpanisha iyo mfaga enki ngene nkulu masegwiwa lapa kwa small poli kanjalo noma uza lapa kwa big polis kushuti poli shoti enkulu nga ningoba ukalenge ngamawa ala lomfana lene ende se abona ngendele akupuga ngakona ukuti ka aga sena ulomzanza ebe kichi manjenga au njenga seka lene li chasing krupu gelena kushuti krupu esbili elandela yena lomfana lono la papambili si ambona umpeto wangu nyago zule efage ama kalaz kushuti imbala elu saza useli nje utulile la pana unespiti lomfana maguya la pana kanja alo no french hauko useli futi la pana ukichima na ye uguti kyo kichinywa kanja anigu kufiwa kanja nila siobona masogiwa ya mapetelu ya kepa the pressure is on the champion i'm talking about uliolit well, let's have a look at some of those folks in that group. This is the chasing bunch. Well, the real contenders, if you like. On the right-hand side of the screen, Sipo Ngomani, 2005 down run winner. Right in the middle there, the tall figure of Leonid Shvetsov, the defending champion from last year. Tucked in between him and Magnus Mikkelsen, the Australian, is Franz Schalke. So, uh, an interesting bunch of people in there, Kewen. Yeah, you actually saw Magnus actually asking France to slow down a bit and Schurzov actually did drop it back there. So the pace was going fast, but here in our picture now, the leading Russian twins, Olesia and Elena Nogalieva, both 229 marathon runners in the lead now with Tatiana Zokova, the 2005 downrun champion behind her. It's uh, one hour, 41 minutes into the race. They are approaching the top of field still, so not too far behind the men at this stage. Not too far behind the men up towards the Hillcrest area. This is the longest and hardest hill of the race. And just look how many men there are around them. I must say they're looking quite comfortable because there is a bit of space around them. Very often they get jostled and pushed by the men around them. But the Negaliavers, I think these guys are experienced enough and thoughtful enough to give them a bit of space on the road. Nyempela nyoba sibona ukuthi babavulele isikhala esihle kusho ukuthi baba protectile ngamampela babavikele but bayazi nabo ukuthi khona into abayithola la abawokuzuza ukuthola isikhathi esihle ngempela ngoba these ladies are going to run the silver medal and that silver medal imqoka kakhulu in all these athletes because ye umngena ndlini mina ngobizo umngena ndlini kulabantu abagijimayo ngoba mawufika ujengisa owakwakho o or is trouble that for our bathroom utina i congress me kichimi i've got that medal that medal is a very specialized one and you can only do that if you stay in the pace of these ladies because they will finish within six hours elena nagalieva on the left there the up run course record holder and the pace projected for these women by nori williamson now is a sub six hour pace very very quick running right on the far side you can see the little short figure of tatiana zakova one of the only three women have broken six hours on the down run. She's very determined to do well. She's never really done that well on the up run. The Nagalieva twins have got this race aced on the up run for the last few years. There's Olesia right in the middle of the screen, the two of them. And uh, it's team tactics all the way through for these women. A lot of people say they decide who's going to win between them. And I am one of the people that believe that. But that, be that as it may, they've never admitted to that. It's uh, right now they're running over the top of Fields Hill. Well, as we watch the woman coming through over the top of Fields Hill, one of the big landmarks behind them will be back after this break. I've seen you take off a bite off any man of eh? And he think got a quite clue. Dat de dame hier voorbij om hardloopt, maar die omlijk wordt een haar door die laatste 40 meter. Lindsay White. Ze winnen haar tweede medaille. En die vorig en die vreugde is haar. Die eerste dame thuis. Only one bank gives you the opportunity to help make a difference at no cost to you. You could help thousands of needy children. Or help the conservation of our precious environment. You could help support South African arts and culture. Or even help the development of our future sports stars. So why not join a bank that understands your bigger picture? Open a Nedbank Children's Green, Sport or Arts Affinity account and support a cause you care about at no cost to you. 
Nitcare 911 is the official medical partner for the Comrades Marathon Association. Elena Nagalieva, Alessia Nagalieva, the train in the Caucasus Mountains and a training camp in the Black Sea. The two of them were down in Durban at the hotel on the beachfront. And uh, they really were very, very confident when he spoke to them. They are absolutely experienced in the uprun. They know exactly how to handle it. They're very, very good at pace. And perhaps the only woman that could really challenge them is over on the right-hand side, tucked away amongst that big bunch of men. Tatiana Zakova, the other Russian. We have another Russian, Marina Mishlyanova, up in the top five. And the Russian woman, very, very dominant in the world of uh, ultramarathon running. As we heard earlier, the pace that they were on, a uh, 5.52, Elena staying true to her word yesterday at the press conference. She did say that she's broken the, the course record twice in a row and she doesn't see anything different happening this year. The only concern I do have, Elena does look like she seems to be limping a little bit. Um, if the camera could zoom into her um, left knee, it looks like she has actually taken a tumble and uh, there's a bit of a graze on her knee there. I hope that uh, that won't affect her later in the race to London. Well, let's uh, wait for the lane. It's very important to know quite what's happened to her. We can't really tell. But uh, she was full of confidence when I chatted to her earlier this week. Welcome back to South Africa. It's good to see you. Are you happy to be here? Yes, of course. I'm so happy. I thank South Africa for inviting us and uh, um, just enjoy my trip in South Africa. Elena, now you are the course record holder for Uprun. You've won the Uprun a couple of times. For you, is it better to run to Peter Maritzburg? I don't think that the running up better. It is difficult, of course, than I run down, but two times I am, was winner, so maybe it is better, maybe it is not better, but it is uh, definitely, definitely, I know it is very tough. I know that you won't predict, but do you think your record is, is possible to be broken this year, or is it too tough, your record? I think it is possible if I in great shape, and uh, I'm sure in my shape, it is possible. Because, because uh, two times it is my record, so if two times uh, at last I smash record, why not? This year. Are these the most important races for you? Of course, it is most important for us. I feel that ultra marathon I run better than uh, a simple marathon. So it is uh, for me. It is better. I can. Oh, I do it. I did it on the best than simple marathon. So I prefer ultra marathon. Will you go and run another ultra? For example, the World Championship, the IAU 100K World Challenge. Will you run a race like that? Or the European Championships, 100K? Or just the comrades? <clears throat> if my sport government pay for me and my sister for uh, 100 kilometers salary for example per month month of course i will run this 100 championship average uh, every championship or a world championship but our russia government not pay for it so i choose only comrades where i really good will uh, when i really can got money so i am sorry of course that i uh, speak this same with this uh, things but uh, it is my job it is my job it is my work and uh, at first i come here for 
getting money. I'm sorry, of course. Well, she's a professional athlete. Interesting comment there about not going to the World 100K Champs because the Federation doesn't pay them. So that's uh, co her comment. But I think, Kewen, the key thing today is, is her leg. Have a look at that left knee of her. She's obviously had a tumble. Now, she must have taken a fall maybe somewhere in the uh, 45th cutting area while it was still dark. And it is a bit of a concern, especially due to the fact that they were running at a pace um, of a finishing time of around 5.52. That could be due to the fact that she's fallen now. Her rhythm is out of swing. And she could be trying to put as big a gap into the uh, third place lady as possible. So if at the finish, if she does have any, any problems, she would be uh, in a far enough cushion. I think this just underlines the unpredictability of this race. Everybody said, Elena, she's won it twice going up. She's the record holder twice in a row going up. But look at her, she had a fall. Mpela iwile le nto kazi ngoba kubona wabi igazi ngiyake elimane eliphukela I mean liphumela phana edolweni uma ingawanga engethemba ukuthi umqondo wayo lapha ngempela ngokuhluzeka kwayo izoba nalo ento esibiza ukuthi ngesilungu amaguts to make sure ukuthi she finish the race she pace herself properly but if the I mean the injury is severe she must just stop but if it's not severe you have got to prove that you are a champion stay out there and show that you don't get into trouble and just give up but it must be determined about how severe the injury is well there we go we're back with the leading men and uh, the Nagalieva saga will unroll as the day goes so stay tuned to that one but we're back with a second place Philip Malefe Actually, now it's in third place, Philip Molefe. So that means that Ian Prodigal Kumalo, who was 12th in two oceans this year, is coming through. So Professor Molin, they are eating into his lead. We could see a new lead about the halfway mark, Prodigal Kumalo. He is a 222 marathon runner, was 12th in two oceans this year. And he's not here just to lead the race to halfway. He, he's, he means serious business today. Well, that top 10 chopping and changing a little bit with uh, the likes of Molin, Lebete, and uh, the rest of them. Uh, chasing hard it's uh it looks like uh, there's a lot of pre uh, pressure pressure on that race leader now yes prodigal kumalo in the picture now running in second position as i said earlier a very very much fancied runner he's a zimbabwean um, but he has he actually has an uh, asylum permit now he lives in durban uh, and he's looking very good um he's got his sunglasses on so that could uh, indicate that the sun is coming out now it looks a little bit cool out there on the road and Alone at this moment, Tulani. Lapem Kumudo, we are bandang and Pella, get Petagrin, go foot to Melega, Kudwana Nangapa, Ukuma, Loso Faramat Lassa, Kenjamanji, Nziza Lapa, no Protica, Ushila Lis Billy, Funa Bonisang and Pella Lins is with Zang and Mova, Utimatot, Zoan and Lagos Sinus or Mashego, Asinis Mashizang and Pella, Soki Chimala, and a Tamba with Negabam Vumele, Uti, Avule Ikep. Nendlela enkulu kepha le phambili ke insizwe professor izinto ngathi asamhambeli kahle ngempela singakhohlwa ukuthi ngempela i first novice yakhe yayidlula i halfway lapha yaphindi yayiwina i comrades mkhuluma ngo Alberto Salazar so don't write guys off abafana abafana nalo ababa okhumana mabe zokuphuma yenza show ukuthi stay in contact in case things happen ukuthi ube ne gap yokuthi strike u strike properly because if you leave give them enough gap i mean too much gap they'll punish you if you've just joined us welcome to the broadcast of the 2008 comrades marathon on sabc2 this is the race leader prodigal kamala the race is now coming up for two hours old heading up into the uh, hillcrest area and that's the chasing bunch and in there are really the main gold medal contenders. On the left of the screen, Leonard Shvetsov, the defending downrun champion. In the colors of nobody, that blue color is an independent group. But also in there, Franz Chalke with a cap, Sipo Umgomani. There is a small character right behind Leonard Shvetsov. A little while ago, we had uh, Magnus Mikkelsen, the Australian, in there. And a couple of other South Africans giving Shvetsov a run for his money. Yes, Butiki Junkies, you just saw him took a, take a sip of his uh, water bottle there. Also, an interesting runner with the red bandana on his head, Mabule Chili's Rapotle. He was six in the two oceans this year. Actually, a training partner of Hendrik Romala in Zoo Lake, and his uh, running has improved tremendously since training with Romala at Zoo Lake. Um, his speed has come in leaps and bounds, and maybe a guy to challenge Shvetsov today. Well, Kieran Walker, it is an absolute pleasure to have you with us because how you know these guys with their red bandanas and who they train with, 
Well done, but uh, still, that's your job. That's our job. Leonard Svetsov is in there. The men are queuing off him. But Franz Schalke is up there, the guy with the cap. He's there for a reason. Yeah, Franz led the 2006 up run going through in the halfway mark in 2 hours 39 minutes. 10 minutes ahead of Oleg and Co. And he actually hung on until 23 kilometers to go when they did catch him. He's now taken a conservative approach to this year's race. He's running with Svetsov and he does look very relaxed. And Svetsov now driving this, this bus. They've just caught Sepo Masevi, who was one of the early leaders. And it will be interesting to find out how far behind he is uh, from the second position athlete, uh, Prodigal Kumalo, who Nori just earlier mentioned is on actually a 518 pace, Solani. We are Jabuli, Saukbona, Usipongoma, Neganjalo, no Franz Chauke. Then as don't the Pambili Lapana, Beselna, Lumpana, Lompeto, Mobanga, Xia Kumbula, Gulunya, and not Lozu, the Guloya, Oland, Lelo, Ozule, Uguti, Wa, Tatamawa, Lang and Bella, Usipongoma, as don't the Pambili before halfway. Oh, and Yanja Lang and Bella, and King and Nkulu, Uguti, Anga, Kon, Kitli, Kitimarash, Wafunda. And keep it up the good work, stay with the champion there. Race leader heading up towards Hillcrest. Race leaders, right now, the chopping and changing amongst the top ten is uh, quite significant. Yes, Philip Molefe, who was in second position earlier, has just been passed by this runner in the picture now, Charles Gianni, from the Mr. Price Central Karting team up in Johannesburg. A very class runner. He came fifth in the recent Netbank Johannesburg Marathon. Uh, if you can remember, viewers, that was tremendous conditions there with heavy rain. He ran a 2.20 there, so a very class runner, and uh, today might be the day of the novices. These guys aren't afraid of taking the pace out. Gwagbona kwa mngata kaka mtolu uchi ya nila pano u professor Uso uzo mtolu Kepa kaza ayo nju ukwiti laba fanabe Mr. Prize Kune plena nyana aba ishanga nsile la pano Gwagbona laba basheli nombe talono ulioni Pambi la pabana baz kwanza Ende se mbona ngempela ungo Ungo kusipongo mani ukwiti Ukichima ngobiyoni kuno kusha woku Ngempela bogboni isa ukwiti Wago wae uina lini ismagi walina Ende nam nam shangela Uzo kichima gashe Pela nje maizo kichima ngendela Efane legleo Kepa sazi ukwiti benza nufana e training If the training is enough For him to put, bring him here He will But if he didn't He will get into trouble But I don't think so He must come here totally prepared well Franz Choke was ninth two years ago in the uprun and he was pretty determined to do the same when I had a chat with him earlier the month Franz Choke do you really speak 11 languages yes I do tell me some things in different languages okay Saubona, Dimelan, Avsheni, Luchan you're also quite a runner, France. 2006, the upright when you got a goal. Tell me how you felt that day. Yeah, the, the, I was happy because it was for my first uh, time to go for the top 10, especially for Comrade. That is a big race on his, uh, everybody's watching that. So I was very happy for that. What were your tactics that day? Uh, when I wake up, I was not even a race plan. I just went because uh, I never slept in before the race. And then what I was thinking, uh, when I get tired, I have to see that I've already run uh, four hours. So that the best way is just to run up front. And then when I get tired, I'll be already at the finishing line. What was it like crossing the line, getting the gold medal? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that moment I was so very happy in my life. And then I was thinking that I'm the winner when I reached that place. So, yeah. Now, France last year, again, was not a very good year. Have you now come back with a different attitude this year? How are you feeling about 2008? Yeah, 2008, I think, is my year because uh, I, actually, if you check, uh, my performance last year was not good. But now, according to the preparation, because I never changed anything. Uh, my training co program, it was the same. I only changed the place for training. I was training down in the suit. So if that thing gives me power that I will come back in the upper hand. Last year, well, in 2006, you said you woke up without a strategy. 
Are you going to do the same this year, or maybe are you going to do it? Yeah, the, the, the thing that uh, comrade is no longer the same as uh, the slow, the same is that slow, you run fast. But the only thing about comrade is the speed. It's speed now because of the guys from Russia that uh, just of, uh, have changed everything. Now, so uh, you have to be ready with the speed to and everything. So I'll be ready for that kind. How important is it for the South African men to, to get back the upland? because they don't normally work. How do they, how is it the South Africans versus the Russians? Yeah, the only thing about us South Africans uh, is that we don't want to run for first position. And normally, if you go and ask the people, they talk, they talk about the top 10. And if we can just prepare ourselves and challenge the Russians, then we can come back with the first position for the top 10. Well, Franz Schalke in our picture now, two hours, one minute into the race. Mark, uh, last night he actually sent me a text message and said tomorrow's winning time is going to be five hours, 23 minutes and 43 seconds. On pace for that now. And I think today Franz is going to prove a lot of people wrong about his front running. He's, he's, this is the first time I've seen him running very sensibly. Well, Franz Schalke, a lot of history in this uh, Comrades Marathon. And uh, <coughs> as the runners head down and through Hillcrest, which is one of the most populated uh, spectator areas of the Comrades Marathon, they have Boaters Hill that uh, leads them up into the area around Nchunga. So it's still a, long, a lot of running to do. But of course, all the money on Leonard Schwetzoff in the blue on the left hand side. I don't know, Zitzel Lelisenko, I'm getting a good feeling about the South Africans today. We've seen, we talked a lot about Franz, Franz Schalke, and Sipon Gomani, the winner in 2005, right in the middle of your picture, also looking very comfortable today. South Africa is certainly taking the race to the Russian today. Two hours and ten defending champion well there's the leader as he heads down uh, towards the area of uh, Bertha's Hill and it is Professor that is good taking the lead. There's two professors in the race today, and one of them is in the lead. This is a man who's uh, run a very handy half marathon, 65 minutes, but he's very well known here in the Quasar Natal area. So this is uh, no front runner for the TV cameras. This man is certainly capable of a very good Comrades Marathon, although it is his debut. And uh, it's interesting, Nori, just to watch a, a man of this kind of uh, stature. He's doing pretty well. He's leading the Comrades Marathon. We're really kind of expecting him to blow out, but you never know with an athlete like this. Well, he's, he's running probably just a bit above his uh, ability at the present moment. And Comrades is, you know, it's one of these races you learn as you go along. Um, it's, there's 54 kilometers to go. And that's not a distance that he is used to doing. So the question is, how is his effort? Is he pacing his effort? Now, we're not talking about... Uh, time per kilometer we're com combining that with sort of heart rate percept perceived effort etc and if he's feeding that out in a nice gradual way throughout the race then he's a danger man but if he's actually getting carried away by the his perception of what people expect of him then he's going to pay for it and unfortunately for us here in terms of predicting he's only going to pay for it in the last third of the race and that's what catches so many people in comrades so they tend to run too much by the perception i think that's the point you were making early on with Z, that to this year for the first time we're seeing south africans run with some uh, genuine pacing strategy as opposed to going out there because they're feeling good and being carried away well now the descent as they go down to both both his hill and he's uh, overcome the big climbs of fields hill has professor mullen and uh, it's, it's it's quite amusing just saying his name because he that really is his first name and uh, now he's got the tough climb above the zillin zet this is this is an important part of the race because as uh, nori has just explained it's all about energy management at this early stage because it is all about the second half but if he can get through halfway and he's got a two minute gap do you think in the back of his mind he'll think you know what i could hold on here and maybe really push the guys behind <laughs> 
if you get tired at the back, the person in front is getting tired as well. Bavuka gang and seni Utiman if Pencil Bake City Kalis in Tonaga Lobenogo Une Kushin comfortable Kamawe Lekalao no Karieva Elena Olesia Elinia can find in Lina Titile Zintatu Elinia Lina Gold Z4 Five Gold the other one, the other one is four gold. And I'm aware like a Puma Pera Shamfondini, Sawaz Gatanda Balsika, Kotok and Amtanje, Apeg and Nobunzima. Zirkova Tatiana is there. Marina Mil Milo Yasnova is there. In Zoga Zigena, Yoga Tandege, Ubalsika. She has got three gold medals. In Zoga Zige, Ekribol Zulapa. Well, there you are, the leading ladies, as they also head uh, through Hillcrest. And uh, the story, of course, of the comrades so far today is the performance of Elena Leglieva in your picture now. She has definitely fallen early part of this race. Her leg is bleeding, and Nuri, it doesn't look like she's that comfortable either. Not at all. In fact, that shot that we've just seen with the, with the feet, um, you would see that she seems to be landing further back towards her heel. That's a beautiful shot there. We can see it now on, the, on the, her right foot, our left. You can see she's landing midfoot, but on the on the her left foot, she's landing further back. Now, the problem here is this is not her normal running style. So this can use muscles that she's not used to using. And so this can develop into an injury. And you can see how it's sort of rocking one to one side to the other. Mike, it's a long way to go. They've got 55, 56 kilometers to go. That's five, uh, 56,000 strides of using the long, long foot. Well, the lead about to change now in the lead of the men's race. And uh, Professor Modern is losing out as they head up towards both his hill and uh Zed, this is this is interesting because he has run very well up front but now the leader really begins to change this early in the event well uh, mike without uh, you know discouraging the viewers you know these guys they feel uh, energetic but uh, the really leading punch is coming from the back and see uh, Mr. Price, second punch, second Okay, well, Professor Mullen falling back and Prodigal Kamalo moving up. But that gap actually opened a bit too fast for my liking, <laughs> particularly on Borthas Hill. You know, that's uh, quite a climb. You're climbing up to 51 kilometers to go. Um, there's a couple of twists in there, and that's one of those hills, if you look to your right, you have one of these phenomenal views over Hillcrest. It's, it's almost like world's view because you're going up that high that you can actually see the ocean. Uh, so it's early on to be using that sort of acceleration. I mean, that gap there now is well over 100 meters. <laughs> um, so to me, that might have been too fast. Of course, Professor was falling back very fast. Well, Prodigal Kamalo, who's a local lad from KwaZulu-Natal and uh, also knows his course very, very well, is now taking the lead here as they head up uh, both hill. One of the tough climbs of this course as they get to the top of this. And this particular part of the route uh, that you can see running through here is the, is the hardest part of this hill. It's the most steepest part. It kind of levels out a bit towards the top. And he's running very, very strongly at the moment, is Prodigal Kamalo. And as you can see that by the lean into the hill. But what's interesting as well, at 51, which is the top of the hill, you then have the easiest and fastest part of their comrades up run, which is the eight kilometers into Drummond. Mato Daga Lenka gave Subul Samalipa incentives as big way of a logo. A ponytail's top figure, Pagan Fondini, a go halfway mark, Kimbage, Indo Taga, a cocole like a Indo Pago sixteen and over, Kai Baleke Kago Sege, E. Kibe race, Sambona Kumalo, Ogaga Logunje, Sai Laula, Kotuaga Vutondaba, Luzaba, Pagan Vago Tramont, 
apo ke izinto zithanda uthintsha mfondini amadoda ke senukiselwa ipita Marisberg insizwa ke ziqonda umcimbi zithe chungcembe kuhle phanga semva tingatsho ndithi ke kudlana ke insimbi superb performance in extremely trying conditions a winning time of 5 hours 37 minutes and 1 second somehow everyone in the field suffered more in this race than previous uprunners nidbank bringing you all the action of the comrades marathon Hi, ma'am. We're TB license inspectors. We'd like to see your valid TB license. Valid appliances? Valid TB license. You want to lie down? TB license, ma'am. Well, I'll make you a nice cup of tea. <laughs> We're TB license inspectors. If you do not have a TB license or it's not fully paid up, there are going to be penalties and it might even lead to legal action. We wouldn't want that. There you go. That's valid. Thank you, ma'am. TV license inspectors will be in your area soon. Please make sure you have a valid TV license. The body has many different yet equally important parts. The eye cannot say, I am more important than the hand because I see. The finger cannot say, I am more useful than the foot because I handle things. When one part hurts, the whole body is affected. And when it is healed, every part finds relief. Like the body, we find ways to make complicated processes simple. Bonitas Medical Fund. Serious about what you need. Marina Mishlanova from Russia, and uh, she's now lying in fourth place, just overtaken South Africa's big hope, Faro Amenta. And uh, we talked a lot about the lady so far. It's definitely a Russian invasion this, after, this morning. And Mishlanova, one of the more experienced runners in this field, fourth in the world, 100km uh, championships in 2007, so lots of endurance in those legs. But uh, a little bit off the pace at this stage. She's just going through Hillcrest, and the gap, according to our spotters, out on the route, uh, just over about uh, three minutes minutes at this stage but uh, Zet it, it's a bit sad to see that the South Africans even at this stage really battling to stay pace with the Russian uh, juggernauts and the Tandega no go go Tandega ke then the Tandu ba ke ifana uba ifagelo no go is buko ngoba lo kwinzo ka sine temba la zomfondini stata ke kwinzo ka sesizaziyo inzo ka zivano Riana Fanikerk for Romento Christ uh, veteran Christ got to get a uh, petake a gold just pack seven. So those are our hope, uh, but uh, say, I want to get Russia that is Chela Itegola. I am for I must say, the women's field is very tough for us. Uh, when I see uh, the Russians, uh, or you know, the, the whole team is here, it's gonna be tough even for the fifth position for us to get. Well, Marina's got a 2.42 marathon, and uh, that's the same as Farwar Mentor. So, you know, she was in the right sort of ballpark, but I think Farwar actually did overstretch early on by going out with the Twins. And um, I think we're seeing her now going into Hillcrest. Still a long way to go, 56 uh, kilometres and a bit to go for Marina, but she's got a nice running style, looks relaxed, and it's nice, Mike, that she's come through again, and she's always come through. She's had two fifths and a sixth, and she's always come from behind in that. So this pace is probably more realistic than some of the other ones we've seen today. Well, if you've just uh, joined us, this is the split uh, amongst the women. It's a uh, one minute and 20 seconds to the uh, leading uh, three laddies, the Olesia Neglieva, Elena Neglieva, and Tatiana Sukova. And this is fourth place in the Marina Mishlanova. But uh, just we'll take a bit of time now just to discuss some of the issues that have happened so far. And uh, one of them, of course, is the injury to Elena Neglieva, who's uh, going for her uh, third up win. And uh, just looking at the women crowding around Mishlanova at the moment, they're not crowding them around as much as they have early on in the race but Zed, we, we were just discussing it off air that uh, this is a problem for the, the leading ladies that they get 
really a huge amount of uh, men around them early on and the potential to trip over and fall is obviously uh, a, a big danger early on well very early in the race because uh, the race is still very tight you know it's very difficult to give them space but uh, you can see there by marina marina was uh, uh, very comfortable the surrounding him this is the man uh, who came first the former winner of the race and uh, he came third position and uh, I still remember that uh, third position because I was fourth behind him. In Sizo, I guess, Suga Park and Fondini, Poland, Mfana, Janischi, Betrena, Pagula area, Kruger Stop. He is very strong and uh, definitely he can be in the first turn easily. Well, this is a real amazing development here for Yaroslav Janicki, as Zet has explained, experienced comrades runner. And we all thought maybe his best days were over, but not today. He's now charging up both until in fifth place and has really charged through this field. In fact, he's ahead. Um, I think he might have even moved ahead of Schwetzhoff and Co. as they head up there. But it really is a great performance here from Yaroslav Janicki. And with his experience, we can't count him out of anything, even at this early stage. Yes, he certainly knows the pace and rhythm required for uh, uh, for comrades, and of course that's who he's chasing. He's actually chasing these four guys in the uh, second group, and in fact, look again as they are closing in. Leonard Shetsov is closing in on Professor Mullen, the early leader, and they're going to take them with 51 kilometers to go. This is Kersney College. They're passing now, and the school kids are always out and cheering the runners through. And uh, Mullen's gone totally, uh, having had, what, 35 kilometers of racing and lead. Well, if he finishes, he might still get that little hot spot at the top of Cowie's Hill. But when he finishes, it's going to be, I think, fairly late in the day. It's going to be a long walk from here. Uh, just looking at the, the leaders here as they uh, crest this uh, hill is Sipon Gamani. And we're going to try and line up a bit of an interview with, with him that uh, we had early on in the week. But Sipo, a winner of the down run in 2005, probably one of the most prodigious talents in South African ultra-distance running. And um, he really is a man on the day that can win anything. But he's looking comfortable. He's lining and facing head-to-head -head with Leonard Shvetsov today and uh, they head now towards the fastest part of the course. Well Shvetsov is a 209 marathoner, Sipon Gamani is a 214 marathoner and you can actually see it in the um, in their running style and in the expressions on their face just that difference between the relaxation and the cruising. That's it, Sipon Gamani, what's he looking like to you? I think uh, he's a bit hungry now because he had some few disappointments and I think uh, uh, he might do well today because he's young and energetic but uh, there is an uh, experienced uh, Butichi Janjis next to him. Gomane Gelos Tetanga into the Sukapa in Pumalanga, a former winner of this race, eighth position the other year. Clearly, Gepa William Likola Kola, Kona Gepa, Fanos Mazio, Kuma 42, Ekago Butichi Janjis, Sbona Ges Bom Vukwe, Ama Wisile, Mr. Price, Ekla Pugetan Bastrong of Le Province. Well, this actually goes into one of the most dangerous parts of the race uh, for the runners because they've had all this climbing up to 35 k's and now they've got a big drop into Drummond and so they they can over uh, overextend themselves into Drummond and go through halfway too fast set. So it's important they, they keep control of themselves so that they can go through and are reasonable well we've level. just we just heard uh, that elena apparently has fallen again at some point in the race she's uh, already fallen once and uh, we just missed it on camera but apparently ha she has fallen again as she heads up towards uh, the both hill area but uh, this is a lot of drama for these leading ladies because uh, it's very tough there's huge group of men around them and it's uh, they can't exactly keep shooing them away because they really want to run the pace of the leading ladies but it, be it becomes such a major factor and i've never seen this issue as quite as relevant as it is today. I've never seen a, a lady fall and actually have a race potentially ruined by falling. We're not sure whether she was tripped, to be honest. She could have jumped on a cat's eye or something like that, but certainly she's having a, a bit of a nightmare today as Elena Niglieva. Well, there are a couple of issues here, Mike. First of all, these ladies are 229 marathoners. We do not have this number of 229 no marathon runners in the country. So they're way out of their depth and they're not helping the race. You're talking about uh, the crowds around when, in 1985 and 86, and we actually have the lady in the commentary team, Helen Luca, was uh, leading the race. 
and it really was a problem uh, to to have that number of people and in fact in those days trying to get the the drinks out to um to the head to the lead lady was a major major uh, problem so it's not new but it is new to see so many people thinking that they can run with 229 marathon runners and if it has been a trip because of these uh, this group of runners then you know we've got to start thinking of what can we do about it well, she is compensating in Dogengam Costa, in race in Amtanje, Russians, Tatiana Zinkova, Yoa Kuba, Gelamanto Bazana, Aquano Karieva, Oma Logunje, I love her. Well, we have word uh, from the route that the support team of the Mr. Price team have, in fact, set somebody up at the bottom of Bothers Hill to uh, strap her leg uh, as she gets towards there. So we're going to see uh, in the next few minutes, uh, potentially, uh, Alessia, Elena Neglieva just uh, moving across the, to the side of the road and getting strapped. She's just on the left-hand screen as you look at the, the, the pictures now, and uh, she's just approaching this little climb up towards Bothers Hill. So we're going to see if she does get uh, a little bit of medical attention, whether that's going to make any difference difference to her ability to run uh, pain-free, I doubt it, but it'll certainly make her a little bit more comfortable. And I think uh, the interesting thing, Mike, is that uh, Tatiana is just sitting there behind. Now, clearly she is a lady who could fill that gap if uh, Elena uh, fell out. And she's on the right sort of pace as well, again, with 54 kilometers to go. This is again saying, Champondini, Vugile, Gumfana, Pampondini, Besiti, Upumile, this is Agelia, Ibuile, Abafana, Gestumba, Nogoke, Basabazum Seven, Zom Shepag, Mr. Price, Bapag, Benzage, Leto City, get pacemaking, Godwagi Pace, Tandel Pagamangobage, in the way, Shakotwagin Cizwa, as you call down Slimbin Fondini, Amakoma Kuluke, Adum Tuma, Atizipesiga. Ayesa Panga Semva. Professor, he's back. <laughs> well, you know, this pace is absolutely flying. You swear they're running at 10 kilometers now. And I'll tell you why. Because in a few kilometers time, they're going to go through halfway. And there's a big incentive for this halfway mark. And Charles Chiane has caught up with uh, the uh, the leader now and is now pushing pretty hard. So there's the men up front chasing that to the little hot spot through halfway. Don't forget, they have to finish the race if they're going to get their hot spot prize. But the pace is absolutely amazing. Just a little bit so uncomrades-like if you can call it that. <laughs> yes, the pace has picked up. And as I say, that's a danger. It's almost a, a guarantee that you're going to battle in the last uh, last third because this is very steep downhill from uh, Hill, uh, from Kersney College down into Drummond. And you will go down um, Alveston. And Alveston is extremely spe uh, steep and takes the knocking into the quartz on your legs, which you pay for later on. Well, I, I, I sometimes think we're commentating on a boxing match here because we're looking at the leg of uh, Elena Negelieva on the right-hand side now, and you can see it's starting to bleed as well. And uh, it really is being a bit of a nightmare for her today. But uh, the, the Russian twins are known for their toughness. They train out near the Black Sea in the Ural Mountains, and they have the toughest conditions you can ever believe. So a little bit of pain in the leg will be uh, a minor thing, I think. Uh, we're, we're probably all sitting here thinking, well, this is going to affect her performance in some way, but the Russians are so ridiculously tough that they uh, can pretty much overcome anything, and uh, I think Elena is going to be one of those that uh, will just ignore the pain. It will definitely be a factor in a race today, but don't count her out. Well, as you notice there that uh, the runner in the yellow passed out the water to the twins, and I think that's a big help, and it's, it helps to stop people tripping, tripping up, having to go in to get their fluid, to get their energy drinks. But uh, watching her foot, I'm still concerned that she's landing slightly on the outside there, and uh, that over a number of kilometers could cause an injury. 
at the pace, you can now see just how fast that pace is, because again, that gap is opening too fast for an ultra. An ultra, you take two kilometers to close a gap of 100 meters, at least two kilometers. But as uh, Mike has pointed out, there's the hotspot prize uh, going on, and uh, that's about five kilometers from where we're seeing them right now. Mr. Price, I hope race South African Championship 42. Uh, at uh, Comrades Marathon, Oleg Karatanov, Uyelo Fagege Duk, Unzi Magalom Fanal Sika, Ukachwa Genga Mato Tagea La Pekaya, Oleg Umfana Serasia, Wamba Namato Tage Asna Wakon Dika Kushe Park Tande Baluzis. Well, what we're seeing here today is just a, a race within a race to some extent. This is probably the race for the comrades, but up ahead of them is the race for the hot spot. And uh, just looking at the prize money, they get 11,000 Rand if they get through the hot spot at halfway first, but they have to finish. So uh, the two runners that you saw in the pictures before, they're certainly the going for that hot spot. Here's the contenders, Oli Korotonov, the defending uprun champion, just trying to find out exactly where he is on the field. But uh, he's running very strongly with two Zimbabweans, and uh, they are running now towards the halfway point but Karatonov not necessarily tipped to win today with the overwhelming favorite in Svetsov but there's no doubt he has loads of experience and he'd be quite keen to defend his title. Well on your left is uh, Stephen Masingi he's a Zimbabwean with the Formula One uh, club and Paul Mesa from Mr Price also a Zimbabwean from uh, Durban. Uh, Karatonov is uh, the world 100 mile record holder which means he has the strength he has the the ability to pace in a hundred mile track if you take one second just a simple one second too fast or too slow per lap it's six minutes so this man knows how to pace himself i spoke to him uh, on friday and uh, he's quite confident that uh, he can make an impression uh, impression today and possibly even compensate for uh, a lenoid Shvetsov having a faster marathon but they're, as they're coming in now they've got a nice controlled pace and if you compare that Z with the pace up front going for the uh, hot spot you can see these guys are really um, much more controlled Well, uh, uh, when you compare the two uh, uh, Oleg and uh, Shvetsov Shvetsov reminds me uh, the man that won this race uh, Salazar uh, when you look at uh, 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 stretch of he's strong and a little bit heavy although some other people they say uh, they say you know heavy people they cannot uh, run up well, on. they're about to shake hands now that's comradeship and that's the spirit of this race this wonderful race the greatest road race in the world there they are two teammates running shoulder to shoulder now come I on the last three, Bruce Fordyce with a 50 meter per on the sixth year, name to her in the wet of the win, and as wonder of it all, I'm going to think of his fans to change na six days. Bruce Fordyce, the winner, five uur, 24 minutes, and ongeveer seven seconds. That can be that he the record with more than three minutes verbeterd. The body has many different yet equally important parts. The eye cannot say, I am more important than the hand because I see. The finger cannot say, I am more useful than the foot because I handle things. When one part hurts, the whole body is affected. And when it is healed, every part finds relief. Like the body, we find ways to make complicated processes simple. 
Bonitas Medical Fund. Serious about what you need. Well, welcome back uh, to the leading uh, woman in this Comrades Marathon. And uh, we're looking at the two Nigelieva sisters. It's the story of the day in 2008 so far. The men's race is heading towards the hot spot at halfway. And we're seeing Prodigal Kamala and Charles Gianni uh, racing for that hot spot. But Leonard Schwitz off the big favorite just behind them. But the leading ladies here. And it's nice to have a former winner of this race, Helen Luca, with us. Just to give us an idea of your, your feelings towards this. And we've seen a fall from Elena so far. It, do you think it's going to affect her today? or do you kind of believe that uh, maybe she's going to be able to overcome this? Look, we know that um, she's a very tenacious athlete and I think it will take a lot to kind of um, make her stop or really impact on her performance. She doesn't look that comfortable, but um, we'll just have to wait and see. But they certainly will dominate the race and um, I think they will be getting frustrated because as it was mentioned earlier, these women will come in the top 50 and she's being they're being surrounded by so many guys that I don't think they'll f even finish in the top 100. So it is frustrating at this point in time for them. I know it's a, a few years ago, but it, was it an issue for you guys when you were running in those days with the, the men surrounding you? Was it literally a problem where you had to kind of tell them to keep out the way or they're getting in the way of the race? Yes, it is a problem because what you will find is that many of these guys are actually running above their level and they're actually not running consistently so there'll be a lot of surging they'll they'll try and run with you and then they'll be they'll fall back because they can't actually keep up and then they'll surge ahead again and so that makes inconsistent running they can't run in a straight line it is a problem donovan writes uh, a gold medalist in the Commons marathon and lots of experience there and uh, just uh, looking at the ladies yourself uh, this is a top part of the course both as hill a uh, real one of the big climbs on the course the, the twins looking very strong at the moment just a little disappointing that we haven't seen the likes of Farrell Mensa and Rihanna from Kirk potentially pushing them a little bit harder early on in the race yeah Michael but the point is is that the group one of the months that on the middle of the summer is busy to make it it is a big problem, because um, as we look at the, the, the knee of Elena, she has twice already fallen. And we hope now that this is one of the men's athletes that this has caused. But as we look at Farwa and, and uh, Rihanna, they have the type of sport that these two sisters have, that are around 230 per, per marathon can hurt. And that is a big difference, Michael. And as we look how far after these two sisters is, can people also understand that they are not so... so uh, yeah, it's true. Uh, there's a problem with the South African women runners at the moment. It's just the pace, the overall consistency of the Negli Ava Twisters. They, sisters, they just are absolute metronomes over this course. And they just keep a very constant pace throughout the course. And they just know it so well. And uh, looking at the stats, so they've uh, had 13 starts between them since they've started. And in those 13 starts, they've only, it's only been twice where neither of them have finished amongst the top three. And uh, the lady behind them, Tatiana Sakova, a very big threat here today, Helen. And uh, she's just biding her time. She doesn't look like she's in any kind of stress. She's letting all the running happening from the front. But Sakova, certainly a, a, a big favorite today and a, a major threat to the Twins. I think she's definitely the one athlete who could cause quite a major upset. Well, we, we still haven't got to halfway, and we do know that anything can happen, but um, she's just sitting behind them, pacing herself. She knows the ability of these ladies, but she also knows her own ability. She's won this race before. She's, she knows that she, she's of the same sort of caliber athlete as, uh, as the twins, and she's not sort of phased, or, uh, phased out by them. I think our local girls, they actually just almost run a separate race to the Russians. They think, well, we haven't got the two sub-230 marathons, we're almost quite happy to settle sort of for the for the lower pla placings um they'll come into the race committee but until they our girls can get up and sort of be competitive over the marathon distance we're really going to possibly not see them dominate and win this race so, I mean, is it just about pedigree? I mean, obviously, the, the, the performance over the marathon is a key factor in how good these athletes are, and South Africa doesn't have the quality of athletes who can do that. But is it, is it possible that we can, that they can literally train to be as good as these athletes, or is it just the fact that they don't have the basic speed that they probably might never have? 
Ja, Michael, as ons kyk na die achtergrond van meeste van ons atlete, wat die eerste aan weeg neig om, om nie op die baan te hardloop, he, en spoed te ontwikkel, he, dan is dit ook een van die redes, ook om ons af vrouw ons oor die, oor die jare, uh, al hoe verder achteraak by, by die marathon te atlete internationaal, en as ons kyk na Tatiana, sy het al klaar hierdie jaar derde by twee oceane gekom, in 3 uur en 39 minuten, en dan ook, wat ons moet natuurlijk na kyk, is dat sy al in die afkom reeds onder 6 uur gehaard loop met met 5.58. We spoke to Helena earlier on this week, just in preparation for the comments, and then it's good. We spoke to Helena earlier on this week, and uh, she's going to uh, chat to us uh, just in a few moments. Alessia, you've run some very fast standard marathons, 42 k's, and then you missed some comrades. Are you still focusing on 42 or just ultra? In that yes, I understand that <clears throat> if I don't did, didn't don't run ultra marathon for me very difficult prepare prepare it in the simple marathon so I decided run ultra marathon in June and after that preparing in the simple marathon your two oceans you won this year what what was that like to win in Cape Town how did you feel about did you enjoy the Cape Town run? Was it two oceans this year? Was it nice when you won the race? Uh, I, I was very happy because I, I, I was a winner. And I saw it is a very good result because in, in January I ran Asaka Marathon. So I have speed, high speed. And so for me, uh, run easy ultra marathon after marathon since two oceans you went back to to the black sea or to russia where did you go what training did you do we again training in the caucasus mountain we <clears throat> one month we are in the caucasus mountain training very hard before this year we never training so hard because all girls training in the same place um, we I saw, I saw that girls training hard, we also training hard, more, 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 run more, more, more. So I think we, with my sister, must show good result. Alessia, when you say you train hard, how many kilometers a week do you run? Uh, two weeks, two weeks ago we ran 250 kilometers and last before this week we ran 220 kilometers do you then stop for the last week and do nothing or do you still keep last last week we run but not so much how long do you take to recover after comrades do you rest how many weeks after Comras, I feel that my stomach, mm, mm, stomach is not good, and for recovery, I need two weeks. After two weeks, after two weeks, we begin training, but only jogging, not fast, fast speed walk, only jogging. One month only jogging, and after that we begin and prepare for the next competition. Fifth place in the Johannesburg Marathon, Ray waving his hands as he goes across the line. He knows if he finishes today, he's going to win 11,000 rand. It doesn't matter how far down the field he finishes either. So Charles Gianni takes the first, well, the second hotspot of the day through halfway, 238.57. Donovan, that is pretty quick. That's by for now, Michael. And that draad die ander atlete om ook vinniger te hardloop. So, mens kan sien die hele wetloop is vinnig vandag. En hierdie manne is achter die aansporingsprys. En dis ook om ons vandag seker makkelijk nabereid 5.5 Van, van well, just interesting to see 
exactly how this race pans out when you've got this sort of pace going through halfway. And there's a lot of uh, twos and fro's about uh, the idea of this uh, halfway hotspot hit. And, and uh, you see the pace he's running. I mean, it just, it's impossible to run this pace throughout Comrades. But there was a bit of a surge. He's looking pretty comfortable there, Chani, And he certainly has a bit of pedigree in him. But uh, is he going to survive towards the end? I guess at this pace, probably not. I don't know. They say, they say when you run, um, well, when you do run Comrades, you must get to the top of Nchanga, which is the, t the hill that he's now about to face. It's a long, long climb. That you must get to the top of Nchanga as fresh as if you're lining up to start another marathon. Because the whole, the, the shape of the course changes now. It's a very, very steady climb until the top of Boiter's Hill. You then see the athletes actually loosen up. They pick up their pace down towards halfway. One more hill, and then you get onto Harrison Flats. And that's when you start to see the guys looking, stamping their authority on their race. They can run with a lot more ease um, and really just try to put in distance between themselves and the others. Up until that point, the race is a little bit congested. Well, Charles Chani has gone through the halfway mark. He heads up towards the massive climb that is in Changa. It, it rises from the valley here, and uh, as he turns this corner, he'll see this massive climb. It's about two and a half kilometers long, <laughs> and uh, the crowds here are just fantastic, especially uh, later on in the day when the majority of the field come through here. They'll be cheering these runners on. But Chiani will just be really willing to kind of get uh, the pace, keep the pace going. And I, I wonder if there's a point where he kind of thinks, well, I've got that hot spot, but I'm feeling okay. Okay, maybe I could actually take this right through to the end. Or do you think maybe that's that's my that's my race? I'm going to pretty much pack it in and just cruise through to the finish now. I think what happens, we've seen he he changed his pace to kind of get ahead and go to beat the others through halfway, and then you slow down. And I think one of the biggest challenges when you run an ultra marathon is if you've pushed ahead and you've run hard for a kilometre, as you start to slow down and get into place, you actually find you're going to go slower. You, it, Ultra running is not made for those long surges. And Donovan, would you agree you're an ultra runner? How would you feel about that? Yeah, Rapid change extent, of ek, pace. Yeah, Lindsay, ek stem volkomme saam met jou. En as ek kyk word, Charles dier die veld gekom, het hy het baie vinnig dier die veld gekom. Maar daar is twee groepen achter hom. Setlofte groep het omtrend vijf manne in, en dan is aan die groep van Ole Caritane wat drie manne is. So, hy sal probeer voorblijf vir so lang as wat hy moendlik kan. En as hy uit die, die top 10 uitval en uit die goud uitval, dan sal hy seker maar besluit om, om tot net tot die einde te draf en die aansporingsprys te kry. Well, second place is a protocol Kamado. And uh, he's, uh, well, looks like part, well over a minute as they've gone through. Looks like three minutes is the gap between him and uh, Charles Gianni. We're looking for official times on our computers as he goes. But uh, the gap was quite amazing because he caught him probably about four kilometers or so from this hot spot. And he has charged through halfway as Gianni and is now heading up towards uh, the top. But Paul Kamada, a much more measured pace, although maybe not more tired than measured, I guess, Helen. Also, and what is interesting now, as they go, they've got a lot of support. There's huge crowds here. That run up in Changa as well is very lonely. Very few people can get onto that route. It's probably quite cold still in those areas because you're tucked in behind, sort of underneath the hillside. And I think psychologically, it's a bit of a challenge just to maintain that pace and keep, keep the momentum going up in Changa. En dis wat ek gesê het, as ons nou kyk, hier kom Setsnof en sy groep aan, hier is die gevaargroep, hier is die groep wat heel moendlik die wende van die dag gaan, gaan, gaan voorleef vir ons. Maar ons sal kyk hoe dit ontwikkel dier die loop van die dag. And here we have, this is the first significant bunch, and we'd like to think we're probably right in saying that the potential winner is possibly one of these four people. Well, lovely to see Sipo Ngomani, the former winner of this event, in the front. He's looking very comfortable at Sipo Ngomani. And uh, also Franz Chaki and uh, Butiki Yankees in there as well. And uh, Shvetsov, well, he was so dominant last year. But uh, to this year, there is a... There is a I'd say vague hope, but I don't think it's that vague anymore. The South Africans are really running very well today, and uh, they are now heading up towards Nchanga with Shretsov in tow. Here comes Yaniki. He's lying in about 8th place, so 7th or 8th place now, and uh, it's going to be a good run from him. Very experienced man himself. He knows he particularly how to run the second half of this race very well. Yeah, Michael, for all in 1999, I've had to and he does exactly what he does. So he will probably one or two of the other athletes in the group of Zetnov in the group.
It's a very competitive race, and if we look at the predicted finish time, we're looking possibly around um, a 5.23, and that's, that's breaking the record. And what is interesting is we've actually got, I think we've seen about eight men pass halfway within that predicted finish time. So we're in for a great race. Well, as uh, Yaroslav Yaniki heads up, Batiki Yankees, in fact, has dropped back somewhat. He's just behind him now as they head up towards Nchanga. The Yankees was right up there. It's fetched off on the boys as they went up both his hill, but uh, is not looking particularly good now. And uh, Levo Nkota, Lokota, who has uh, been a Comrades Gold medalist here, very tall man, and uh, is uh, fifth two years ago, last year, and uh, is now looking, uh, well, I suppose he's tall, so I suppose it makes him look a bit slower, but he's still running pretty well there. And 2.45 through the half marathon, through the half comrades marathon pace, I guess it's still a pretty quick time on him. Yeah, as we speak, Michael, say half part tight like now a 5.30, and a 5.30 for up comrades as a buyer for your tight. He can yell more than the top five come, and I like not buyer stare, Michael. Well, this big climb is now the big. Uh, moment for these athletes. Here's Karatanov wearing the bandana. He's going to come through halfway in about 12th position. So he's lost a bit of time now over this course. He's been chasing these leaders. He's way behind Schwetz off the gaps. Now beginning to increase. So already they're about six minutes behind the leader as they went through. And just looking at our computer here, Charney went through in an official time of 2.38.46. But Schwetz off was three minutes and 58 seconds behind that. So the gap at the moment looking pretty half for Chiani, but uh, potentially he's blown his legs apart as uh, he heads up towards the second half of this route. Michael, you've chatted to a lot of these runners, the overseas runners when they've come here. We, we know who they are. The South Africans know who they are. Are they very aware of the runners that they're running around and their potential ability? Um, it, it can almost make a bit of a psychological barrier. Do we sort of get overwhelmed by the foreign athletes? Ah, good point, Helena. It's very true. I mean, obviously, we know all our local athletes pretty well, but does Lennon Shvetsov know how good Charles Chiani is? Um, he probably doesn't, but in that, he might think, well, this guy could be a potential winner here today, and uh, he's a very good marathon runner. So, uh, Donovan, it's a very interesting idea, I guess. Yeah, Michael, let's just get the, the top 20 players. En ons gaan vergelijk van al die, die mans en die, en die vrouwen top 20 tijden. Dan zullen ze opmerken dat je al van die internationale mans het die, het die, die, die top 20 tijden en, en ook wat ons zal zien bij die vrouwenwetloop. En die top 20 tijden is 15 van die vinnigste tijden wordt gehouden door die internationale vrouwen en net 5 keer Zuid-Afrikaanse vrouwen. En als ons gecombineerd ge kijkt naar die mans en die, die vrouwenatleten samen oor die top 20 tijden, dan kan mens duidelijk zien dat die internationale atlete, 26 van die internationale atlete het die beste tijden in, in comrades. En dit is omtrent 30 sien, 30 procent beter vertooning as, as onze Zuid-Afrikaanse atlete. Well, just looking at the leader now as he goes up to Charles Chiani, looking very comfortable, a very small man uh, with a very light demeanor, and he's really light on his feet. And he's gone through the halfway mark. He's got the 11,000 round in his pocket if he finishes today. But I don't think he's giving up too early at this stage. We're looking at the uh, computers here. We're looking at uh, the leaders have gone through. Seven minutes and 20 seconds for men like Vladimir Kotov. And he walks. As I say that, he begins to walk. Now that's, <laughs> I was, I was going to almost say, maybe he can hang on to the end and then he starts to walk. So maybe Charles Gianni's race is a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, done already. Well, I think to walk, especially on the hill, unless he's waiting for a group to catch him up. But when you've, when you've been in the front, you start walking, you get caught by a bunch behind. It's actually very difficult to just join in and pick up that pace of that group. So the challenge for Charles possibly at this point in time is to finish, finish the race so that he can collect that hotspot prize money. Yeah, Michael, we can clearly see that today, comrades, is a hard route. And Charles can see that it's not very far to the end. <laughs> it's a long way to go, Phil Charles Gianni. And he, he looks so good when he's going up the hill. I thought, nah, this is, here's a South African who's going to come out of nowhere, limited experience, and he's going to take this race and he's going to win it. But uh, I'm afraid to say that little walk is there he goes. He walks again, does Charles Gianni. He's got 42 kilometers still to run. And uh, that is a long, long way on tired legs. I guess he'd be very happy to finish somewhere underneath uh, the uh, sort of uh, silver medal barrier. But uh, 
uh, Charles Gianni's race. He's got a big smile on his face. He knows he's had his day in the sun. But Helen, uh, I think he's just going to... Uh, what would you? What would your advice be? He knows he has to finish the race to get the 11,000 Rand for the hot spot. But uh, how do you do that when you, you're suffering like a dog with 42 Ks to go? Well, he's got a lot of time in the bank to have a very... You know, he could probably walk from here and uh, still finish well in time. But as we can see, this is a, it's, there's about 13 turns on this particular hill. It's long and it's lonely for him. And he's just, he's probably really just feeling that no man's land space at the moment, not a nice place. Yeah, Michael, as ik uh, Charles was, dan zal ik hier volgende eer maar baie rustig gevat het en probeer herstel. En dan kijk of ik mezelf een eerste kan krijgen tot bij die einde. Well, there's the Australian on the right, left-hand side of your picture, Mickelson. He was really uh, mixing with him. Looks like uh, Walton calls you as well. Uh, just uh, and uh, Wally, it is William Toller. There we go. Just in inducted into the Runners World Hall of Fame on Friday night for his uh, performances. And I know Helen, you uh, very close to Willie over the years. Yeah, Willie spoke to me last week, phoned me just to have a chat, and. Um it's the first year he's actually lined up in comrades for some time without an injury, he hasn't been sick. He was confident of his training. He acknowledges he's 44 now. He can't get out there and mix it up front. But if he just runs sensibly, he could certainly come through and maybe pick up a gold medal. And I think that would make a lot of people very happy. Well, this is one of those races where it's, we've seen many races in Comrades over the years and we talked about the threat of Schwitz off today. It is lining up to be a fascinating finish and second half to this Comrades marathon. So don't turn off your television screens because it's going to be really marvellous to watch this. William Tolo there, one of the legends of South African running. Here's the leading ladies. They're heading up now in Changa. This is, uh, no, this is not in Changa. Uh, yes, it is. Um, he's just leading ladies with 50 kilometres to go. They've still got to go through the halfway. And uh, for the first time in the race, Tatiana Sokova now takes the lead. That is, it's quite a brave move for her, but um, maybe she, you just wonder. I, th I, I think the, the, the sisters, they, they play a little bit of a tactical game. Maybe they've allowed to drop back just, just to see what sort of pace, just to see how strong she is. Because Tatiana has been actually just keeping to the back of them, to the left, staying out of their way. So they don't actually can they don't see her they can't see any of her grimaces or just how she's feeling so we'll wait and see well don't forget there's that uh, little 11,000 man carrot lying in front of these athletes now and uh, that's probably why Tatiana's decided to perhaps push the pace a bit they'd definitely like to have a little sprint at this because uh, it's almost like a, a cycle race we have uh, pri Prince Primes halfway through all these leading ladies Tatiana Sokova right in the front they all are contenders for the overall title but 11 11,000 round in the back sky won't do them uh, any harm either so uh, Donovan this is this is more fascinating because these ladies are going to have to have a little sprint for the, for the line here Ja, Michael, als we kijken ook naar twee oorzaken aan de jaar, het is hetzelfde gebeurd. Tatiana het ook begin die voortel neem. En aan het einde van die wedloop was het beide uh, Olesa en Elena, wat in twee oorzaken aan de eerste en tweede gekomen. Maar wat ons ook moet onthouden, is dat die twee zusters werk altijd samen. En als mensen naar Tatiana gaan, moet ons proberen druk te laten op die zusters, zodat so zij ja, een van hulle kan krijgen om dingen so om samen te laten haar loop. En dan lijkt me heel moeilijk met Elena wat gevallen is, dat Tatiana um, hulle moeilijk kan, die pas kan, kan, kan versnellen, zodat so hulle twee kan opbreken. Well, this chase, that there is a chase to use, try and pick up the halfway hotspot. It could actually lead to interesting consequences later on in the race. These women have definitely picked up their pace. They are running downhill. There is a light, quite a nice, a nice gentle downhill towards the halfway. But once again, as we've seen in the men's race, when you pick up, you surge. It sometimes can have a disastrous effect on your overall race. These women are talented, but maybe it's a Tatiana tactic of just trying to stretch the uh, Nagli Ava twins a little bit. Well, we saw Tatiana Zakova taking on the, the Nagli Ava twins at the Two Oceans a few years ago, where she fought it out with the Alessia Olena, in fact, over the last uh, kilometre and eventually won a sprint finish. And it was amazing to watch that. So she has a little bit of speed in those legs, and it's going to be very interesting to see. They've got a few more Ks to go, probably about three Ks still to go before they get through halfway. They've got a big downhill section now that they've got to get through, and then it's a big uh, sort of gentle uh, flat bit before they go and drop down through, through German. So 
uh, the tactics among the leading ladies beginning to muster themselves and uh, Sokova has just been completely shadowing the leading twins at the stage and uh, now looking like she's just is a little, little gaps beginning to show between her and the, the two twins I, I, I personally find it quite an unusual tactic simply because they've still got three kilometers to go to till the halfway and at least for some reason she feels this the time is or the pace is a bit slow which it isn't so um, I'm surprised that she didn't stay just behind them and uh, let them do a little bit more work and, and just race ahead just before halfway. What would you say, Donovan? Ja, dan zit um, Tatiana's van die, van die enkele atleten met diezelfde kaliber van gehalte zoals die twee, twee zusters. En als ons kijkt met, met verleden jaar, in de materie jaar, ze twee oceanen marathon, het zij ook probeer wegkom van, van die twee zusters en zij probeer diezelfde hier vandaag doen. Zo so, ons kijkt maar hoe die wetloop ontwikkel, wat voor mij belangrijk is ons om te zien dat die focus van, van Elena is verskrippig goed. Nadat zij gevallen het, is ze nog steeds bezig om binnen die wetloop haar focus te bouwen en competitief te hardloop. Well, talking of Tatiana Sakova, Ian Lexton uh, caught up with her uh, just before the start of the race. Tatiana, you come now for many years to South Africa. Is it nice for you? Do you enjoy the people? Do you enjoy the trip to Durban? Tatiana, ты много раз уже была в Южной Африке. Тебе нравится это? Ты получаешь удовольствие от приезда сюда? Да, конечно, мне нравится, потому что я сама северная женщина, поэтому Ну, юга как бы так мне как экзотика и почему я приезжаю потому что э, у нас вот всех марафонцев единственный такой старт хороший такой старт поэтому и приезжаю yes i'm very like visit south africa it's very very good competition very famous competition uh, i'm very like visit south africa and participate in this competition i'm nose woman and the, uh, South Africa exotic for me. What is, Tatiana, what have you done since two oceans, between two oceans and now? What have you done after two oceans? Where have you trained? What have you done? I went home to my children and then I went to Kislovodsk, to Kavkaz. I trained there and I came from there immediately. Uh, after two oceans, I'm back to home, visit my, uh, my child, my children. <laughs> well, um, after, I'm going to Kislovodsk. This is a South uh, Russia mountain place. And more than one month, I had training in Kislovodsk. Just after Kislovodsk, I come here. In 2005, when you won the down run, you were in very, very good shape. How is it now compared with then? In 2005, when you won, you were in good form. How do you feel now? The distance is now. The distance is now. I don't say anything, so I can't say anything. All the best of the team. I don't know now. This is a very long distance. And there will be many surprises, many good runners. And uh, will show. We like having you here. Welcome back. We hope you have a nice run. I want you all the best. So that I can get my back. Thank you. Well, it would seem that if um, the secret, there's definitely a secret if one can go and train in the mountains in Russia. And we heard. Um, was it Alicia say that they put in 250 kilometers three weeks ago? That's high mileage, correct, Donovan? Yeah, as you see, Alan, what the algemene afstand is, what what international athletes per week afle, then like it's what 225 kilometers per week. But all that now all clear, 250 kilometers to do, and that's for scrappy kilometers. But that's the flag that they're going to go. That professional athletes, they, they, they don't have to hold down a job. So I think that certainly does make it a lot easier to put that type of mileage in. And um, I don't know, I think it, it's, you can run quite a risk of getting injuries if you put in your body through that type of work for sustained periods. But it doesn't seem to have negatively impacted on these ladies. They, it seems to be the answer and it brings through great success for them at Comrades. Yeah, I understand. 
die afstanden wat hulle afleid, dit lyk my dat uh, oor die algemeen die Russische saad leed uh, 250 kilometer doen. Ek het al gehoor dat uh, die Russe in december 300 kilometer um, per week doen vir die totale 5 weke van december. Well, there is about two kilometers now to go until the halfway mark, so they seem to have settled down a little bit. There seemed to be a definite surge. The pace is settled, uh, but I think we will see quite an interesting dash for cash at the halfway line. And um, yeah, I, I, I don't know out of these three, who, who is who would the be best, the best sprinter? Yeah, Ellen, it's all about your winning, and as you can see, the pastel up. En um, een van een van hulle gaan, gaan moet, moet um, die pas so snel om te probeer uh, die aansporingsprys kry. En het lyk op een van die sisters naar voren te kom. Ja. Moet moet aan zorg vir as wel ook a kwaro. Die wil al in alle 2008 la komreitie. Iets lege garbe la bom me otase oussie aan kan nete hoor hy sali. Barana bam raar bam rasia Elena is... Maneno Elena na Olisei Nogalieva Elena Nogalieva le Tatiana Zukova ba matela mane halfway o tsebe ha fita mo hona le moroko tso le nteng o iphumanela ngona ka nnete bo iyane bo sabileng ba chelete bo manga pa manya fita pele mo e mutsuka tsa ngwa tsoke halfway tsantse ba tsebe nnete ba raba fita mo ka nnete e motho sa tsa ntla gona o tsola pele ka lebelo ena mang kibilo le lelele Bona ba haisa ale Dramont ke mo re libilente ka ona motsotso ha re tlo mo tla be sentse tala ho theosetsa ha nyanyana e be he ntlo di afeto wa bilon lena o tla tlo bona ka nnete ba shanyana ba salam rao ba nna ka nnete ba ipabola ka maghabana bona ke bua ka mashman ba shashile le ka nnete ka ona motsotso bilon la bana la masadi ba ta ka re ba nna ba tshwan ka man ka rashia so pretsa sa mr price ke bona ba ntse ba etsa bo nnete ba re bilon lena Iba bilo le bana le tsile ba mathanke ona ba e ba etse lewa le itseng gore e tlhela ba tamela palonya tlolo e mongwa bona e be ka nnete o ba yena ya tsama pele o hapa bilo lena empa ke bona ka reng zukhova tsa tsila ka jeno ha ba tlo ho dumela lore ba ba la o le bilo lena ba etse se bona ba sratang o ba ne ha isa le tswa bilo lena le tarile o tsa re tsile bona fela tswalo a ba hadile me rebele Ja, we gaan ons kunnen duidelijk zien hoe intensiteit van die wedloop nou toeneem. En vooral hoe die sisters nou beginnen domineer en probeer wegkom van Tatiana. Sjoen, de twins seems like they have a plan to really frustrate Zukova. Moreover, we're going towards the halfway mark now. Yeah, the, the Elena now definitely dominating this uh, leading pack at the moment, but uh, she is known to pick up her pace when it does come near to a hot spot. And the, you know, Baba, as she said in the press conference, she's broken the uprun record in the past two years, so she doesn't see anything different this year. So she did fall twice earlier during the race, but uh, she looks uh, her normal self at the moment. But uh, don't write off Tatiana; she's just sitting there and keeping off their pace, and uh, she could show them a thing or two in the latter stages. Donovan, the pacing of the three girls um, at this stage, um, are we ha looking at prospects of maybe new times? Baba, that's the like of of the früher in the wet loop al klaar onder zes uur is en het gelijk of alle vijf 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 twee en vijftig probeer gaan aarde vandaag. Maar als we kijken naar hoe die intensiteit nou al toegenomen met Baba, daar is zes uur negen minuten record is nou definitief een gevaar. Record ya basari kiri horatse tsile tseng ka ofela le metso tswana e le metso tso e robedi ka ofela ha ile ya banna a kiri horatse hlano se o so bontsa papang e le nteng le bilong la banna le la basari ka dimo ka ofela ha o lo jwang ha banyolo wa batlo ka kwana ka etsengwini ba tla ka kwana mo re le nteng em gungun tlofo msunduzi municipality ka kwana ka ba ka sene se tswa ka hore ke Peter Marisberg e tle bilo la la bo me ka ona motso tso motho ka tla bua ka rona holo they, they seem to be running in tandem and they've planned something. 
Uh, every time when she tries to search forward, one of them moves ahead immediately. Yeah, that's just really love on the road, Baba. Uh, they're coming down into the halfway mark now. They would have just passed the uh, landmark Arthur's uh, seat. Arthur Newton, a former winner of this race. Uh, the legend has it that if you uh, leave a flower next to his seat, he wishes you good luck for the rest of the race. But uh, these twins, I don't think that was on their mind as they came past. But definitely, Baba, they're working together. You can see they're handing each other their drinks. And 3.04 at the moment, it looks like they're going to be going through halfway in about a 3.06, 3.07. And the pace is on, Donovan. Ja, Kieu, en jy het nou verwijsing gemaakt na die gedenk meer wat hier net voor afvat is. En as ons kyk na die wetloop en, en hoe die, die wetloop nou ontwikkel, sal jy ook oplet dat die groot groep mans wat saam met die drie vrouwen ons hart loop, al hoe minder word. Ole Seja Nogalieva, Le Lefata Lahai, Elena, Elena, Ntewalife Lachualo, Tatiana Zukova, Lena, Ja, ons kijkt Farna het nou al zes gouden medailles gekregen over de afgelopen paar jaren. En ons hoop dat Farwa het deurbrak en meer tot weer in die, in die top drie kan halen vandaag. Zij doen verschrikkelijk goed vandaag. Ze is op die oomlijk vijfde, ze een vinnige wetloop. En zij probeert aanhangen hier in Russen. Actually, I wanted to say that, Kjell, that it looks like it's a very fast pace that they're, they're running at now. I'm not sure about the splits now. Yeah, they, they're on the long downhill into the halfway mark now. Elena definitely has picked it up. You can see there's a lot of men around her actually trying to sprint to, to keep up with her. Um, she often does this at Conrad's at the halfway mark to, to do that uh, the second hotspot of 11,000 rand. She's going to go through halfway in 306 and I'm sure just as she goes under, she will drop back uh, to run with her sister and Tatiana. But 306, 11 seconds of time through halfway for Elena. I definitely think that in the men's and the women's race, we're going to see new course records today, Baba. Jonathan, you should know better. Ja, Baba, as ons kyk na die wetloop hier, dit is duidelijk dat hy pas um, al klaar onder 4 minuten per kilometer is. En as die, die vrouwens op hierdie het tempo gaan voorraak loop, Baba, dan gaan ons definitief baie na aan die rekord kom van 6 uur en 9 minuten. En dit behoort ook aan, in elk geval behoort die rekord aan die lijna. Portas Hill, Baka Sestra, Holo, Kakwan, Wysewarki, Kwan Nieuw, Swa. A value of a thousand hills. Baka Sestra, Katsile, Makatang. Basi mama tonga tabare hauka fita moka nete watamezile hodimong lele nyanyana lele ha kibino la banna empa hante tikino la bomme ki wala munta te mama ta fela mona ki wala fa ba ta ko pele ga nyetsa ntsele bilo la bo la bomme ntsele bitse fela jo la ho na di peto ntsele no galieva olisei le elana e bi tatiana zukova le ntsele tempi la bona Heil ma Afrika boro ari ana fani kerling wana ni le faro mentior nse balting ho ba ba itlomeng kapele ba supa kapele pilong la banna wana tiani onza tsa ma fela jwalo onza tsa ma fela jwalo ke a tsepa re mokoka wa hail ka hle o mutuse ya dat lekker so as of charles weer se ritme teruggekreed en as ons as ons nou die volgende opdraan kyk dan sal ons kyk of hy of hy nog Probably should talk about this man, uh, Kion. Now in the picture, Charles Gianni, the early leader, still in the lead. Interesting to note uh, if any of yours can remember from early on, if you're looking at the color of his shoes, they were green. Uh, news from the course was that uh, he was looking for one size bigger. The shoes were hurting his toes, and I can see that he has changed his shoes along the way now. So um, he's, he's looking very good. He, he was walking up in Tonga, but maybe that was a tactic, Baba. Walk, get your energy back, refresh your, your focus, and carry on. Well, I think um, it, it, it is a trend in, 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 Comrades, in Comrades Marathon, whereby they say if you really feel that it's getting tough, you can start walking, and then just to get some energy back, and then maybe to relieve yourself on your, on your, on, on your thigh muscles, and then start running again. Yes, definitely. To, to walk, you, you regain your focus, your, you use different muscles. Uh, in 2001, that helped Carol Mercer to become the first South African lady across the finish line. She had uh, numerous walk stops along at the depression stations, and that gave her the energy to sprint past Grace de Oliveira at the finish. And 
the more people who who can learn that process oh as i say that he takes another walk ja ki und da begin hy weer te loop en ons moet onthou dat die 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 wetloop is om train nog 39 km om om te gaan dit beteken ons sal om train 2 uur 30 nog moet hardloop en as hy nou al paar hierdie probleme het ki ons het gaan baie moeilik wees vir hom om sy voorsprong te behou ek ek glo dat binnen die volgende 10 minute sal sets nog se groep voorby hom kom Donovan, at this stage of the race, something like dehydration, um, can we start talking about that now or is it probably in the latter stages of the race? Yeah, Baba, for an uh, athlete that's been running at this pace, um, you obviously have to have to keep in mind that if he doesn't doesn't uh, maintain his fluid levels, that he could de- get dehydrated. But that's one of the great problems you have comrades. When the athlete begins to move around, dan begin hulle, hulle concentratie verloor en minder drink en dit, dit leid tot krampe. Kjo, nu living here in the in Cape in Kosovo Natal, humidity at this point in time, where they're running now. Running from Deben, that has got a very high level of humidity coming up this way to put Marisberg, which is more inland. Um, does that affect the runners in any way or the other? Um, I think the guys who are living at the sea level could get affected slightly as they, way, as they make their way up to Marinsburg as it is at a higher altitude, but the humidity shouldn't play any um, bad bad pass today as in Durban, generally your humidity is in February and March when it makes it really, really hard to train. But uh, in your picture, you can see Leonard Schwitzov, he's really driving this pace and Donovan, prodigal, they've caught him, but this is where the difference between him and the early leaders were. He's a class runner, he's come 12th in two oceans, and he's hanging in there. Ja, en dat is belangrijk om te onthou, dat Lennart het nou van achteraf gekom en hy het vir Pradikal ingehaard loop. So, hy kom met een groter momentum en het een beter kans om aan die einde van die wetloop um, onder Pradikal in te, uit te haard loop. En Charles wat al klaar probleem het aan die voorkant, dit beteken Lennart is seker die sterste atlete by oomlik. En wat, wat belangrijk is om te onthou, is dat Lennart nou weg van Sipong Gemani ook gehaard loop het. You know, uh, Leonard is a very strong runner, I must say. When he won the comrades, that's they came very, very strong. For me, things are changing now. Look at Chiani. There's going to be a change in leadership immediately because Chiani is now walking. As much as he's started running again, it doesn't look like his body is carrying him enough to challenge um, Chetov. Chetov looks more stronger than almost all the guys that are in the leading bunch. Uh, you can see he's grimacing now and his walking is it's coming too often now but uh, we're going to see a new leader soon i was just about to say it, one minute 27 behind was shretsov but they've closed that down and now shretsov has given him new momentum shretsov is now in the lead with uh, romalo's training partner right behind him abula repotle so maybe mabula is going to show this africans this year a thing or two and show that a south african can win but shirts at this moment looking very very strong yeah mabula is nog die enigste atleet wat nou kan kontak hou met sesnof maar wat ons verlede jaar gesien het is dat sesnof die op dieselfde wyse op die opdraande begin weg hardloop het en in die op die afdraande het sesnof net sy voorsprong totaal vergroot ons hoop maar mabula kan kan kontak behou met sesnof want het lyk asof die hierdie wetloop dieselfde soos verlede jaar die of the character Hanet and, and Sesnov as he the fourth of the game can definitely now say pass for snow. This is what I was scared of, Donovan, that if Sesnov can really make his way towards the front, I can tell you now problems are there for some of our top our top runners. And I hope that probably today uh, Mabule Rapote might surprise us, maybe do it. But uh, he, he looks the only guy at the moment who can challenge Setov in terms of pace and strength. Yeah, I'm not worried to look at Baba. But I'm not going to make sure how good he is. If they are going to go to this pass, what a murderous pass is, then it means that he must be definitely good. And the way in which he has made this pass and has made it like that, it looks like he is definitely in a very good position. Last year, Shetsov really showed his mantle. Uh, he pushed, I mean, with many kilometers to go, and no one could really, really touch him. When he went up the hill at 45th cutting last, last, last year, no one could touch him. You could see that this man is in a class of his own. Today, yet again, he's showing the signs of that he is the best, probably, at, at the moment uh, in South Africa running in ultra marathons. Yes, Shretsov at the moment looking in the exact same shape as he was in 2007, but not having it easy today. Mabule Chilis Rapotle right there on his heel. 
I think the race is going to be changing soon. They're going to be making the right turn into Radnor. And uh, along Harrison Flats, I think uh, Leno Shretsov is... That's where the difference between a 209 marathoner who Shretsov is and a 220 marathon runner who Mabule is. I know Comrades is about endurance, but speed is going to play a vital, important role in this right now. 209, it's, it's, it's a very quick uh, marathon, I must say. If he runs a 209 marathon, that means his speed probably will be the difference between him and whoever comes after him. Donovan. Yeah, I suspect now, um, Shetsnov, but but in the afgelope three years, 2016 had he not for the year gehad for the marathon, and in 2006 and 2005 had he 210 gehad. As an athlete, 210 gehad for a marathon, that means that he had to train 3 minutes, 6 seconds per kilometer for the total marathon, what he passed for him to make it easier. He can drink place on the pool, and um, as we see in the following 5 kilometers, we can see that he can definitely break it here. And Baba, you saw earlier the word comrades, it's my brother. And what was very nice was seeing Leno Shretsov handing Mabule Ropotle, who's not even in, his, in the same team, handing him his water. This is what comrades is about, making friends along the way, the, all the runners in the back. You, you, you think that it will only happen in the back of the field, but in the front of the field, it's just as, as much. Canete, la comrades marathon, ase libelo fela, kilibelo lenang le. Ho <laughs> so as you can see, plus six was not verschrikkelijke druk op Mapule. Maar Mapule moet nou net iets diezelfde ding doen. Hij de aardloop eindelijk nou van die energie van zes nog af. So as hij energie kan besparen, dat zal grootelijks een verschil maken in het einde van die wetloop. The important thing right now for Mabule is that although he's sticking behind Shretsov, if Shretsov is going too fast and Mabule is feeling that this is too much of an effort for him, he needs to run his own race and drop back a little because Shretsov might run into problems later and that's when Mabule, who's got the endurance, can come through. But uh, Shretsov not running for any of the professional clubs today. Baba, if he wins Comrades today, it will be the first time since 1994 that a professional club outfit has not won the race. And what I mean, so athletes, professional athletes, all for corporate clubs, and there is great price held here on the field today. 220,000 rand for a for a winner today. And as the record is broken, then we get the person who has the record also broken. 50 ounces gold stand built, and that means that the person 250,000 rand is worth it. Ik zie de kanetten moro koto na omgaat. Wanneer we hij zal ibuiani, moet als je bemgaat die kiti. Zeg maar, kolom abidan met schoma bedka ofela. Omonna le mosaik bata zo maar monga pele. Ibe bata maar monga buberi kaneti. Zeg maar, van die metal leta kauti ka ofela. Oto maar monga pele, of te maar monga alle schoma. Moet je dat zo maar monga schoma te van die kiti. Zeg maar, schoma le na le mosolo mong. Als je scherp tegen kwaar, dan kun je tegen alle arab. Anna. Yeah, Mabule excites me very, very much. This is Baba, kind of like in 2007. It's a bit of a replay of last year's race. But if you remember when Shretsov was breaking away, Sipong Gamani and Leboko Norto were running their heels off to stay with him. And look at Mabule, very, very, very relaxed. Mabule <laughs> 
most of the runs who come from Lesotho, they do very well when they run in South Africa. Yes, yeah, so Lesotho, uh, I'll, I'll put it down to um, the environment, you know, the training grounds. If you're living in an in a urban area, you have to contend with robots, traffic. And in Lesotho, it's the natural air, it's the mountains, it's off-road. But now we see Leonard Schwitz of pulling ahead three hours, 19 minutes into the race. Um, this is on Harrison Flats, so this is where the speed will... Leonard will have an advantage over Mabule, but hopefully Mabule not uh, battling too much, although he, he is leaning forward a bit. Donovan, your, your take on that? Yeah, here is a critical one in the wetloop now. You can see Mabule must now concentrate on his own wetloop. Leonard has definitely a break to make, and as I look at the time, he has a whole two-year hardloop over. So, Kyo, and as he is not forsichtig, he will have a problem with the problem and there are two groups that come from behind. I would like to say that he has to concentrate on his own pass and his pass is asleep. But as you can see, in a few minutes, Leonard has to make sure that he 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 has to make sure. This is where you'll see the likes of uh, Yaroslav Janiki, who at the moment is 2 minutes 6 seconds behind in 5th position with uh, Steven Muzingi and Paul Amiza, both Zimbabweans. Uh, the strong guys like Oleg and Kotov in that moment 10th position, 3 minutes 38 behind. It's going to be hard, Donovan, for them to come and challenge Shretsov, but for 2nd, 3rd and 4th, the, the gaps are not that too big. Yeah, Janiki is someone that can only work and he has a wetloop strategic plan. It looks like he's near the field and where he now is on the 2 minutes after beide Lenoit en 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 Mabule lijkt het definitief op Janneke van Mabule dalk en die en die volgende drie of vijf kilometer nader en om zal kom. Hou je bij mijn neus je zo van Melua hij kan uit Malit heka op een andere limon na ja schakeling haholo. Hou je bij katla sulte kala hij hou je bij je mani die potong waning. Uwasa kan je bijhouden tot bal over ke mon na ja schakeling. Asebeta katata una esale, kubane upa ukono pa misa manguele hai, lai bilurka nete wanyo luseta, ke amata abonza mbui tukse tobo ne paiting, bali bilole chana lina la comrades, mane na uduti maimong aburaro kwa na mtoto, ebi hae maimong abone huna limu na enta mlatela, kwa maimong aburaro kwa na mtoto, tasa rofe mavicho abona, zawa na baba 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 na baba basa kama ni kana hinya Zimbabwe. Kijk hoe goed lekker aan de kieven. Ja, ik was about to say that Donovan, this is very, very dangerous man. I think he's been second in the 2004 uprun and sixth in the 2006 uprun. He's now moved into third position. He's a former winner. He won the the 1999 down run, running five hours, 30 minutes and 10 seconds. So, also, if you look on the left of him, 40. It's the veterans who are dominating. Lena Shetsov in the lead at the moment, also a veteran, Baba. Actually, if he can win the race, well, if he can win the race, it will be a double for him. He'll be the first veteran and also the first man home. Yes, definitely. Yeah, Kyo and Baba. So, let's look at the gemiddelde ouderdom of the of the of the athletes that they deal with, comrades. Is het reeds vastgesteld dat 40 jaar oud is het gemiddelde ouderdom van alle atleten wat hier hardloopt? If, if you look in the top 10 at the moment, uh, the man in the first position, Leonard Schwentz, of 40 years of age, Janiki in the third position, 40 years of age, and then you also have Oleg Karatanov, who's also a veteran, and Vladimir Kotov, the first master at 50 years of age. We're still watching the 2008 Combrace Marathon, and Apran from Devon to Peter Marisberg. We'll go for a break and we'll be back. Bij een sportief wordt ze begeleid daar die er vijftal hardlopers. En Lindsay of Lure, Helen Luker, eerste vrouw dan om taart te maken. In drie stadion weet ons niet waar Lindsay White is niet, maar ze heeft in een stadion bij een lelijk uitgezakt. En, en Helen Luker voor twee een prachtige tweekens. Lena Shetsov, Wasaka, Watutubala. Kanete ore ekile ekaribulu lena kanete ubata ulinga kajasi. Obane akibone ona le mochi ona le mata le kala hai. I don't see competition coming from anybody at this stage. This man looks strong. Donovan, 
Baba, dit samper is speelbeel van verlede jaar sy komerheid waar hy precies die selfde gedoen het. En kijk sy goeie ritme, hy werk uit sy skouwers uit en hy kan sien, sy, sy voete ligt nog hoog van die grond af. So dit beteken sy bene is nog baie sterk en het lyk of hy totaal in beheer hard loop. Kijk, hy, hy kyk op sy roos, hy werk sy tyd uit en is duidelik dat hy sy oog het op die rekord. Ik zou zeggen, maar look at his upper body. The coordination between his legs and his upper body and his hands. That tells you something. Okay, he's got a very strong upper body, just like uh, Janiki in the third position now. I would have thought that they would have been more suited to the downhill, but obviously the upper body strength and the legs playing a very important factor on the upper end where you need your, your, your strength and endurance. But it's not as if uh, Leonard has actually picked up the pace. He's been consistent, he's carrying the same pace, and it's just unfortunate that Mabule couldn't handle it. But um, Janiki not that far behind. Uh, I'd estimate it at about 1 minute 30. So Leonard mustn't uh, relax too much because there's a Polish man coming behind him. <laughs> Kenetemotemotemunenua <laughs> Yeah, we shouldn't wish anything bad on the runners. Shits off. I don't think anyone's going to touch him now, Donovan. Yeah, Kyo, and it's like if he now can 3.30 per kilometer hard loop, so as he can hear it, he can hear it, he can hear om hem dan te komen naar het loop. Janneke lijkt goed op die oomlik, maar als hij kijkt naar die, die ritme wat, wat Lennart hier met haar loop en Janneke is, dan kan hij duidelijk zien dat Lennart bij een sterker haar loop als Janneke. Oh, oh. 3 hours 25 minutes into the race now. Uh, Lennart actually running on the Harrison flat stage at this moment. He will be approaching Cato Ridge soon. And um, I think today definitely a chance of a record. It's 326. He's done about uh, 56, 57 kilometers already. Donovan, your prediction of about a 5.23, 5.24 maybe? Yeah, Q and as, as Lennart can hear it, we're going to go for the next for the um, two years. Then we'll be able to get a lot of money to the record. And it looks like he's going to break the record, but he's going to get a lot of money to the next year. And we're going to get a lot of money to the next year. There are still a few other levels, but we're going to get a lot of money to the next year. We're going to get a Coming in on his seventh win is Bruce Fordyce, beating Bob Delamotte and Hosea Charlie. An exhausted Bruce did the run in five hours, 37 minutes and one second. Grimacing with pain after a stupendous effort. Bonitas Medical Fund. Serious about what you need. The Chevrolet Captiva. With a seven seat interior and all terrain capabilities, it's easy to see why the driving seat is worth fighting for. Play nice, the new Captiva. If you could see your heart, would you take better care of it? Flora, the pulse behind the Comrades Marathon. Nearly three and a half hours of, nearly three and a half hours of running time. And this is the women's race. Still three of them there to get up, the Russians Tatiana Zakova on the left, and the Nagali over twins. Elena's still looking uh, okay. But uh, I think we might have had a little bit of a breakaway. We haven't been with the women's race for a while. I think that's uh, Alessia on the right-hand side there. We need to uh, get a wide shot of uh, what is happening because we haven't seen the other Nagali ever sister. 
This looks interesting. It does indeed, and uh, Tatiana Zakova on the left-hand side of your screen, Alessia Negolieva on the right-hand side. She's having a look back to see where her sister is. And, of course, the big story, if you've just joined us, is that uh, Elena has fallen twice uh, during this uh, first half of the race and has actually injured her knee. So it might well be, uh, Zet, that uh, potentially Elena has either fallen back or even dropped out. We're going to try and find out from our spotters on the route, but certainly just two left now in well, the one of the, event. One of the things about the comrades is things happen very, very quickly and uh, we've been away a little bit from uh, from the race but uh, Zitulele we've been watching the whole morning about how Elena was doing so as the girls see when I see telephone in it well I okay see born you pagger a cavalega or corner pagger pound as talking for the let's see a look at you Tatiana Zirkova, uh, the former winner of Comrade herself, uh, I think she's gonna give uh, uh, the Nogareva a tough time uh, for her win, but uh, the win can come either of the two. Well, if you look down at her left knee, it was uh, looking a bit of a sorry state earlier on. She might have had it cleaned up a little bit. But uh, that is... That is a Nogareva sister. And in fact, that is Olesia. Now, let's get this absolutely right. Olesia Nogareva is now in third spot. And that's why we couldn't see the knee. It was Elena that fell early on, right at the beginning of the race. So, up front now, Tatiana Zakova and Elena Nogalieva. And now Alessia seems to be the one that's struggling. Well, that's a problem with twins. It's difficult to, <laughs> to figure out who's who unless you can actually see their names on the front of their bibs. But there is indeed Alessia. She's the one less fancied to win uh, today, although she has won the Two Oceans Marathon already this year. But Elena, the one that's had all the drama, isn't one, in fact, sitting in and mixing it with Tatiana Sokova up front. So very interesting. Not quite sure what's happened. It almost looked like quite a dramatic change, but it was certainly that climb of Mchanga yeah, that uh, seemed to break up this leading women's field. The other thing about the Nagaliev is that one needs to remember is that they run together as long as they possibly can. In other words, if they break up, it's only because somebody's having a problem. And they little, they, I've seen them, they have a little chat, and the one says, well, I'm having a rough time, go ahead. And they will not go ahead unless they have to. And uh, it looks like Alessia is having a bit of a problem, but the gap, Zitulele, is not that big, and she could come back. She could, she could come back, but uh, Tatiana Zikova, uh, she can take that advantage when uh, she noticed that the other twin is not around. You can see now he's putting the hammer down, but uh, Alessia Nogareva, uh, the one we suspected that uh, uh, she's going to trip back early. In Zoka Zikeliango, we have full and those searches, they work, especially at this time of the race watching those men around them they're not that many men but they're still very close and i think tatiana gave the one guy a bit of a a bit of a push to get him out of her face and they want to take the it's a bit of a left-hand turn they take the the tiger line around the the shortest course but it looks like uh, Tatiana Zakova is really pushing the pace now. She's not the strongest uprunner. She doesn't have the kind of pedigree on the Comrades' uprun at 38 kilometers to go. Still quite a long way, almost a standard marathon, but not the pedigree that the Elenas of the world have. Elena, of course, has won the last two upruns, both in record times. Yeah, but the great thing about Tatiana is she has beaten them before, and she's beaten them in the downhill, obviously, but it's it's amazing to see. This is enthralling racing. This is what ultra-marathon running is all about. They kind of get it together. Tatiana sat behind them for pretty much the first 40 kilometers of the race. She's put a bit of a surge in, and she's definitely putting a bit of pressure on Elena Negalieva on her tail right now. They are very tough. There is no love lost between them. There's a little bit of uh, a little bit of niggle between the two of them, between the three of them, and uh, they certainly don't want to be losing out to Tatiana Sokova. So the fact that the two twin, the twins themselves have actually broken up here uh, puts a lot more pressure on Elena just running by herself. Looking at our leaderboard on our database system here, uh, the three of them, uh, as you know, Elena, Alessia, and Tatiana, first three. Then uh, we had Marina Mishlyanova, the other Russian, in fourth place. Marina Bishkova, the fifth Russian, looking for her eighth uh, comrade's gold. 
one of the most successful women ever in comrades she's in fifth place and far more men to her back in sixth place the top south african that's uh, other south africans in there rihanna finikok we're not quite sure where she is that's uh, grace de Oliveira, uh, carol mercer and uh, devera magson also knocking on the door but it's unlikely that they're going to dip into the top five it's either get the win or the second. Uh, your sister will see what to do. She is sitting comfortable in third position. Step take and get so guys if I'm finding it and so guys get a like and she's using the advantage uh, of uh, uh, the knee injury because Tatiana could see that uh, uh, there is a problem in that leg because uh, she's limping a little bit. Elena, Tatiana, uh, we are in Laula. Well, just uh, moving away a little bit from the women's race, we can see those are the leaders. But all sorts of things happening in the men's top ten. Prodigal Kamalo is still in there. Stephen Mozingi, the Zimbabwean, up in uh, fifth position. And then we have Vladimir Kotov, who's moved into sixth. The uh, the 50-year-old Paul Maiza is also another Zimbabwean up there. Limboko Noto has now moved into the top ten. And Charles Gianni, uh, as well as Ntendiz and Keys, the top for South African last year. So all sorts of things happening in the men's men's top 10 behind the leader with the woman but Mike that men's top 10 is exciting oh it's actually incredible to see I know Shvetsov's got a bit of a lead here but Kotov's moving up we're looking at uh, Yaroslav Yaniki also moving up here's uh, looks like uh, uh, it looks like Mumbule Rapotla fifth in the two oceans this year and uh, is now still, still sitting in second place now running fairly strongly here but he's somewhere off uh, Leonard Shvetsov now he's uh, a bit further down the road and this is my bullet report. Fun like a tandy old tool. I discipline with Patum Fana, the Kamaka, Kapam Fondini, Kangalaga, Noga, Tumkin, Duko, Pelaga, Gutle, Latino, Wambaga, Gutle, Nogo, and Catalo, Kabiko, Polande, like a in this or get tandy, Gubalusika, Panago, Suga, Pam Fondin, Elvegi, America, Swetchhoff. And like a pambi, Logalogunji, Mabute looks comfortable and focused. Yes, Rabule Mapotle, 27 years of age, and uh, he's had a good two oceans pedigree. This year he was fifth, as we heard last year, he was uh, sixth overall, 13th in the Comrades uh, in 2006 on the last up run, and 11th the year before. So he's been knocking on the door. So that's the second place, uh, Mabule Rapotla. One of the many, many, many very powerful Mr. Price runners. Now look at that top ten. Laboka Nota, a very tall man from the Sutu, and um, Tendiz and Keys, another Mr. Price runner in the top ten. Charles Gianni just hanging into the top ten, but maybe I think that might change as well. Well, Charles Gianni, he's probably been the, the story of the day at the Rizal, other than this man, Leonard Shvetsov. Shvetsov running through uh, the Kata Ridge, the outs, the, out the back of Kata Ridge now. But uh, Charlie was the man who went through halfway. He picked up the 11,000 Rand in money. He's dropped rapidly down the field, and he's got to hang on and just finish the race to win that 11,000 Rand. But uh, I'm very impressed with the report lead today. He's uh, looking quite tired. He's trying to mix it with threats of as much as possible. But he's a class act. He's got a bit of pedigree both in the Comrades and the Two Oceans. And uh, even if this goes down as, as a gold medal, not necessarily a win, I think he's going to be a man for the future in terms of South Africans at, at the Comrades. Zitulele, I think it's it's important for the viewers to understand the difference between running up and running down. Just as we see the 40-second gap there between the leader, Shetsov, and that man, Rapotle. But we haven't had a back-to-back -back winner or a runner that's held both the up and the down titles at the same time since the days of Bruce Fordyce. And the likes of Vladimir Kotov has only one going up, Dmitry Grishin, only one going up, the South Africans win going down. But uh, Shvetsov, that would put him into comrades' great territory. Well, uh, I should think, Ian, uh, though my, some other guys might say Sweshoff is a good uh, uh, down runner, but uh, uh, he, he's muscular, and I thought, and I think he's more good on the up runs, and uh, he knows that by himself, because uh, he's doing well right now. As Monaghe Pamfondi, the veteran, and Sizoga is over 50, as Tetakeng of Vladimir Kotov, Tekung and Begutle, 
kodwa ke into ka lena sweso vithande ucaca phaphambili and naye uyayazi lonto leyo eh nsizwa ke liya the veteran the master umfana ke usuka pa Cape Town Vladimir Kotov a former Russian Oh, wonderful to see Vladimir Kotov uh, in this field. He's in sixth place at the moment and looking very good, actually. And uh, 50 years old, can you believe it? And he's a man who uh, just never, ever lies. Oh, this is uh, second and third. Well, it looks like Rapala is going to be taken by Yaniki. Yaniki's making the biggest charge in this field. A vast experienced man of the Comrades Marathon. One downwind to his name and lots of top five positions. And he's definitely going to take second in the next few moments. There's Kotov and Laboka Nota right next to him. And and uh, can you believe the age of this man? I've said it over and over again, but he is an incredible athlete, is, uh, is Vladimir Kotov, and don't count him out of the top 10 here. Again, send ease and keys. There he is on the right of the screen, third last year. Top South African running for another gold medal and another top uh, five placing. Very, very experienced runner. Two golds uh, already to his name. And uh, the race now getting to the, the really, really sharp end of this race. And he's in keys, hero of the KwaZulu Natal South Coast. But really, I'm so impressed with Vladimir Kotov. He is such a tough middle character, 50 years of age now. Easy. We've seen that from Brian Zondi. We've seen that from Mfana uh, Kabambiza. But Sipongo Mane are doing well this year and doing very bad. What is that? Well, just looking at some keys, he's a very talented athlete. Last year, he really came out through the ranks and was the top South African finisher. But there, Kotov, already at the age of 50, he ran just over 33 minutes for 10 Ks. And he's built up to this race. He's been the last two months training in Poland. And uh, he's done all the preparation, needed loads of experience. And uh, let's see how he does over the second half here. That's fourth place, running through the Medbank Spectator spot at Cape Hill Ridge. One of the race sponsors. Uh, very popular spot there with entertainment and uh, Vladimir Kotov now going underneath the bridge and he's going to run into the very crowded place 30 k's to go very crowded spot of Cato Ridge one of the designated spectator spots and huge crowd support with Kotov really living in a little a little zone there isn't he because he's not even noticing anything well he's just got his head down and don't forget uh, Kotov really is an absolute gem over the last uh, 15 kilometers he knows how to use little polys and poly shorts in his record breaking win in 2000 when he established the record that they're all chasing today of 525.33 um, he attacked up little polys so if there's any chance that he has they're expecting if it's a slow time and we on our rough uh, Norrie Williamson uh, uh, gauge here the time at the moment uh, estimated at five minutes uh, five hours and 28 minutes so it's slowed up a little bit although it could pick up towards the end but it's a kind of pace that Kotov potentially could run so so don't count him for an overall top three or even maybe a win if things start really disappearing in front of him. Cato Ridge, the leader's gone through, sets off way out ahead. We'll be back with more action right after this. You can see Mark feels a lot more relaxed now and he's running a lot easier. Bruce seems to be taking a bit of strain but still talking. And there comes the famous sting, as they call it. Fantastic effort by Bruce. I think he has that he knows how to bring that his body absolutely can Bruce. Only one bank gives you the opportunity to help make a difference at no cost to you. You could help thousands of needy children. Or help the conservation of our precious environment. You could help support South African arts and culture. 
or even help the development of our future sports stars. So why not join a bank that understands your bigger picture? Open a Nedbank Children's Green Sport or Arts Affinity account and support a cause you care about at no cost to you. Nitcare 911 is the official medical partner for the Comrades Marathon Association. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Comrades 2008. And if you've just joined us, the time is now a quarter past nine. Coming up for four hours into the race. But, uh, we'll go back a little bit for those of you that uh, were not up quite so early this morning. Councillor Obed Malaba, the Mayor of Durban, set them on the way. Beautiful conditions early this morning. 11,100 runners set off on the 87-kilometre journey to uh, Peter Maritzburg. Well, the brilliant uh, conditions in West Street this morning and the temperature just on 12 degrees Celsius. Early leaders going through the area just about five and a half kilometres into the event and it was uh, the local athletes who were particularly doing well but it was the big ominous figure of Leonard Svetsov who was in the second bunch chasing that early leaders. There's the leading ladies going through, Negli Ava twins along with Satyana Sukova. Huge crowd of men around them packed back in around about four or five hundredth position and Rihanna Fenikark at that stage, there she is going through. This is earlier on this morning in the dark, around about uh, six o'clock or so this morning. But already we were having the look, what looked like to be a great uh, race. Professor Mullen was the early leader over the top of uh, Fields Hill and into the uh, Kloof area of Durban. And uh, he was the man that went through the hot spot first and uh, did a lot of running. And going up Fields Hill, one could see problems with Elena in the galley over. There's Elena on her vest. And uh, if you look down at her left knee, there's blood coming out of it. She had a bit of a fall early on. And uh, we were wondering if she'd uh, be on course. Well, the first sighting as they went up both the cell. The lead leader is uh, fading quickly there, and Svetsov chasing them. The two sisters, of course, heading up both the cell, and the two of them being shadowed by Tatiana Sokova, keeping a very tight rein, already steering clear of the South Africans. This is okay, Mr. Price. I'm going to go to the corner. I'm going to go to the corner. I'm going to go to the corner. Two times TV run is still out uh, front, and I think that was Charles Gianni that went through the halfway. Under 240, really quick running, and Chiani picked up the hot spot at the halfway mark and uh, headed up up in Changa. But he walked up in Changa too. Lots of uh, the people really tipping him to do well, but as soon as he made it way through halfway, his race was pretty much run. He was going backwards from there. First of the line, as far as the ladies were concerned, was Elena Negulieva, just leading Tatiana Sokova and heading for that 11,000 rand bonus. Well, the lead uh, took place, the change in lead took place coming after in Changa, and Leonard Svetsov, the, the Fanny champion from last year, powered his way through, and at that stage, he took the lead, and he was moving like an express train. Powerful figure, big high knee lift, strong upper body, and uh, that was the big lead takeover, and uh, that was maybe the last change in lead of the day. Everything is strong here from head uh, to toe, uh, the doctor uh, from uh, El Bekegi in Fanage, Uzai Tata was being into like Pele Kanga. Uh, we win again uh, back to back, down and up. Well, Lena Negli ever uh, shadowing Tatiana Sukova and big drama in the ladies' race because this, as they got over the top of Munchanga, the sister Alessa Negli ever already battling to stay pace with the two leading ladies. Well, that was the highlights back live here, Comrades 2008. A beautiful shot from the chopper, the men's leader. And uh, there he goes, Leonard Svetsov, the Russian, running in a blue vest. Very, very unusual color. Normally they're red or green, but this one's blue. He's not running for a club. There's our race leader, working well up into the Natal Midlands. And uh, I don't think anybody's anywhere near. 
Well, uh, we say that. I know there's Ray Fries, uh, one of his uh, helpers out there. He's a real helper throughout comrades over the years, many of the top athletes. But uh, Shvetsov has still got a few kilometers to go, and uh, he is definitely looking a little slower than he has before. I'm not saying that anybody's close to beating him at this stage, but comrades have got a knack of really hitting you hard. And he's definitely pushing. The face is beginning to show the strain. He's got to climb on the last road still. He's still got probably shorts to come. And Yaroslav Eniki and men like Vladimir Kotov and Mr. Dizim Kize are chasing pretty hard, so he can't take it easy. I don't think the race is over. I think Leonard Shvetsov still got a lot of running to do. No doubt about that. Absolutely no doubt about that. I remember Bruce Fordyce in his book described the second half of the uprun as a long, bitter struggle. And that's what he called it, and he should know. But uh, Mabuli Rapotle running very well. Prodigal Kamalo still in the mix there. Stephen Muzingi, the Zimbabwean who got a gold last year in position number five. Yaroslav Fjernitsky in the second place. Uh, so it's foreigners for the first two. But let's have a look at that top ten. Zendiz and Keys, top South African last year in sixth place and looking very, very good. Vladimir Kotov at age of 50, sitting in position seven. And personally, I think that he can only improve. Maybe we'll see a top five from him. And uh, Laboka Noto, the very tall man from the Sutu. This is sixth place, but uh, Laboko Noto, the tall man, he's a miner. He works in an underground situation out in Rustenburg in a little squashed up working place. He trains at four o'clock in the morning and cut off that familiar figure moving up. But Oleg Korotonov, the uh, defending upright champion, is in the top ten as well. Yes, got two goals. Uh, yes, got two goals. Fanagelo Leonard Sweshov. You know, this guy, uh, Ian, is very interesting. He does not do speed work, really, but he has got a 209 over, mar over marathon distance. You know, uh, I stayed with him in one room for six months, and uh, it was very interesting seeing him training. You know, he put things around the waist, water and everything. He goes far. Discipline, when he's got problem, he treats himself with his doctor. He has got, him, he has got a knowledge as far as uh, uh, injuries. Then I stress off, it's possible that uh, he's going to take it again. Well, it's all about the record. Remember that magic number we've been talking about all day, five hours, 25 minutes and 33 seconds, belongs to Vladimir Kotov, set up in the 2000 Millennium Comrades, where they didn't finish here at the Oval in Peter Maritzburg. They finished uh, at Scottsville Racecourse. I think the distance was pretty much the same. But on this man's mind, it has to be the record. I mean, really, you know, he could slow down, cool it, and still win the race, probably. But maybe he'll go for the record, and maybe that might be his undoing. Let's just keep going at this race. It's not over yet. Well, uh, it is indeed uh, fifth place that we're looking at at the moment. Just having a look who that is. Looks like Stephen Mzungi, the Zimbabwean, and running very solidly in there. He's also chasing pretty hard. It's all about how well they do in the second half. We've seen a lot of the guys going out very hard in that first half, chasing those hot spots. But now it's all about the overall victory. And uh, Steve Mazungi looking very comfortable. No glasses or hat or anything to speak of, just a running vest. And away he goes. And uh, looking through Sipun Gamani, uh, just from our spotters on the, down on the road. He was one of the big favorites here today, running along with uh, Schwetzov at one stage. He's now in 21st position and almost 14 minutes behind. Some of the other names that are in the top 20, Paul Meiza, let's have a look there. Grigory Murzin, who was uh, second last year. Claude Mashiwa, Johan Westhuizen is in the top 20. Halvrens Machadi is in the top 20. Lucas Nonyana, and uh, there's enough time for some of those guys to perhaps move up into the golds, but the golds now have got strong, strong contenders like the Bokonoto in there. When you look at this man, you can see this power, power. That's all power. You see, he's putting the hammer down, switch off, taking the wash. He want uh, to take uh, the, the record. Well, it is all about the record. Just, uh, I think it's just an indication there for the first time since the beginning of this race, we've seen Shvetsov going, OK, I've won this race, now can I break the record? I, I think it's a mistake. I still think there's a lot of running to do. I think the last rise is going to be fascinating because it's a really tough climb to the highest point on the course for, for Shvetsov. And uh, he's just, he, you know, his time's going to be where how he uses his energy at that point. And 5.25.33 is a very respectable record. Well, it certainly is. And I'm very, very impressed with Prodigal Kamala because he was one of the guys that that was up early on. And Charles Diani's fallen, by the way. Professor Mullins fallen, by the way. And this guy is still hanging in there. But 
I've just heard from uh, Nori Williamson, who's got this model on his laptop back here. It's uh, Schwetzoff is back on uh, on record pace. And as Mike Finch has been saying all morning, the minute he pushes the pace, goes for that record, he puts himself under pressure. That's, uh, that's the only way to get satisfactory after a race. Because you don't want to say, what if I should have done this and that? You know, you better go and do or die, and uh, you blame yourself if you didn't finish. Because you don't know when it's going to come. You just push your luck. This is like gambling. Well, Schwitz off now heading through uh, this climb towards Umlas Road. He's, he's about a kilometre away from this very steep climb up Umlas Road. And he's running very strongly at the moment. It almost looks like he's doing a 10k at this stage. So quickly is he running. But the, the climb will certainly take it out of him. And uh, it's just it's amazing just to see the power of this man. And I, I don't think we've ever seen anybody running as powerfully and as dominantly in the comrades. For years, the pundits, we sit and we talk about the race beforehand. But never has there been such an overwhelming favourite than Schwetzhoff has been in this race. And if he does get the record today, he'll be the first man since uh, the great Bruce Fordyce to hold both records at the same time. And that really is a fantastic performance. On, on two races that are very different. 600 meters now, the gap between him and Janiki. Janiki, uh, pretty much a journeyman of comrades. He's been around since about 1991. Remember, he won going down that year and uh, promptly set off to Pretoria to meet President Tabeki that day, which he said was more exciting than winning the comrades. But he's been around. He's like Marina Pushkova and Maria Bach. These are foreign international runners have been at comrades year in and year out, making a great impression. It's uh, Shvetsov now, and he has got the bit between his teeth. It's uh, back on uh, record pace. Let's have a look at some of those uh, top ten names that roll through. Janiki from Poland, and we pull in report lab, the first South African now, and that is a very important thing. There's lots of money there for these guys, and lots of uh, club incentives and whatever. Prodigal Kamala, we've so spoken about how well he's been running, hanging in there, and he could well end up in the golds. The Zimbabwean Stephen Muzingi, and of course the Zimbabweans come down with great success in South Africa. Marco Mambo, his countryman, of course, won the old mutual two oceans this year. That is uh, Janiki back in the second place, and Zandizi M. Keys in sixth. Vladimir Kotov, the first master at age 50 in seven. Maboko Nota, the man from Lesotho, the platinum miner, is in uh, position eight, and he is uh, another gold medalist from last year, Karatonov, the defending upright champion. Those are your top ten. It's a uh, knocking on the door or a whole bunch of guys that are just able to get into the top ten. Well, just having a look at um, the Yanislav and Nikki's stats over the last few years of the Comrades Marathon. And uh, in 2006, the last up run, he finished in sixth place in 5.42, then second in 2004, 16th in 2002, and 17th in 2000. So that gives him an idea of how good he is on the up run. He certainly has a pretty good pedigree. Of course, his win coming on the down run in 1999 and in 1997, he did very well in finishing third as well. So he's done very well. This year, he's finished uh, races in 100-kilometer uh, races in, uh, in Madrid in 6.50 and he's also second in a marathon in Europe in 228. So he really is a journeyman of the event, but uh, he knows exactly how to run this event. And uh, he's looking very, very strong of this leading pack of five runners. Uh, certainly, um, other than Svetsov, he's looking the strongest. You see that 11 medals? So as, of, as we know, he's been around for many, many years. One of the internationals who comes back year in and year out. And a really super guy. Very, very quiet. Not at all pretentious. Very modest. Doesn't talk much. But uh, very friendly. And he knows the local journalist. He comes up to me and Mike Finch and shakes our hand. <laughs> so it's, it's really great to have these guys here. They're almost South Africans. And he well, runs in that cap every year. Uh, he's run that cap, I think, since he's run Comrades from the very first day. And uh, it's almost a traditional little cap that he says he keeps uh, in a prouder place at his home uh, where he in Europe, so he's uh, he's half South African, he reckons. Zitalele, the crowd support at Camperdown is really great. This is like a stockish police, um, fun against Trimbake, the Abran, maybe in Abake, in Favaris, and Obalogo. He's not tall and he's very powerful. Stetake, um, fun police, and so on. Bagas, your Salamans will be back. Zitalele, Sinkwe, Mike Finchie and Laxton will be having a bit of a break now and we'll be back with a new commentary team in just a while. And on the video from the Skodak Seed of Negan Grindalis. You see that Fritz running with a rose that was presented to her by one of the spectators. You can see the smile on her face, the jubilation that she must be feeling now is tremendous. 
Maar eerst de helft van de wedstrijd op 3 uur en 12 minuten en in de tweede helft 3 uur en 20 uur uitsteken de wedstrijd. En een nieuwe record ook voor haar. Vroeg van Merve van Benoni Nordens dan. Daar die record tijd 6 uur en 32 minuten en 55 seconden. Imagine a world. Imagine a world where young people are not pressured into having sex to impress their friends. That world is possible. Imagine the possibility of an HIV-free generation. It begins with you. Third Comrades Marathon at Drummond and halfway four hours just coming up. That means that we're looking at the runners who are going to be doing round about the eight hours, but ideally these guys should be able to get into uh, 7.45. Helen, uh, this is where we start seeing the, the pace being very critical for the guys um, who are going to try and get that silver medal. Very much so. Everybody running at this pace has got a goal. They're, they've got an objective of either attaining a silver medal or a Bill Rowan medal, which is the sub nine hours. And these guys, four hours through halfway, they're on eight hours. They'll drop possibly 20 minutes. I don't think very many of them will run even split. So I think most of them will be coming in in about the eight and a half hour range. Um, they'll probably be happy. They want to get that special Bill Rowan medal. and. Um, They'll be pleased with the performances today. Yes, indeed. And uh, you talk about the 20 minute added on. Of course, Talani, you know, ideally people should be spreading their effort out over the whole race. And therefore, with a 35 kilometer uphill, you'd expect them, if they did it properly, to, to actually have about even pace going through halfway. Men, the Maui Akaga, Fanego Kale, Nayo Futi, the foundation, La Pana. Maba is strong foundation. Yo, it pays you with Leon Vileo, Yo by Saku Essinjani, our Funu Bakua in Jesuit Tilio. The training nigger, your comrades in Jale, Fanega was with Waka and Pace, your final Leo, was with his own case in those Akomasus Shella, Maparaki, Pamu, which you teach my race, Shelling and Jale, a final Leo. Everything you need to prepare, have a plan. After the plan, you make sure when you implement it, it has got a very good pace. Well, the sort of standard of runner that we're looking at here is probably about a 315, 320, 325 marathon runner. Um, that's them, they would, for the marathon, they will run about uh, four, uh, sorry, yeah, four, 450, something like that. And yet they're coming through here running six minutes a okay. case. So that's about the right sort of pace. Helen, this is your good level, average level club runner. Absolutely, and I think it's important to note that these runners have sacrificed a lot of time, that none of them are professional runners. They'll all hold down jobs, have families, and they're probably trying to run between 80 to 100 kilometers a week, peak, peak period of, um, to, to get in the training, and, and just to get that sub nine hours, which is a very, very respectable and a good run for, for your club runners. And indeed, Bill Rowan medal, of course. Bill Rowan, the first winner of Comrade, 1921, and he got just under the nine-hour mark, which is why the medal is called after Bill Rowan. And the gentleman going through there with the long white socks, you're going to see more and more people wearing this sort of compression clothing because it, um, it provides additional performance enhancement, and we'll see a lot of that, I think, in the Olympics coming up. You also see people running here, Tulani, with uh, braces, knee braces and various other things. That's how important the comrades is to them, that despite having little niggles or whatever, they find a way to carry on that running. No, my mom from teaching me all the lap, 
unendlela yakhe azishelela ngayo nendlela futhi eyazogqoka ngayo ukuze ukuthi akwazi ukubonwa le makhaya ukuthi ngempela ebe participate lapha ngaba lezo zinto izona ezikubeka ezikwenza kalula ukuthi ubonakale njengoba sesikhuluma ngazo nje and it's quite vital because masu hlelu ngasagijimi you will use it as part of his history umlando wakho phela ukuthi niyasibona isithombesana emagijima ngaso congress and these are the colors i was running with and that itself believe me it's a, something we call a souvenir because it's something that maybe we will never achieve in your life but it will be there forever yes our comrades made on if you look at the numbers you will see different colors of numbers there a uh, green number of course for 10 and this is the hot spot and this is the top of the hill your mother forgot to tell you about and uh Schwetz off going through in 403 uh 404 and he of course has just got the the hot spot prize helen but that is the area that's the one that these runners are going to come to at uh, 22 kilometers to go and they're going to ask themselves that question what the am i doing this for and if they cannot balance the reward of getting that medal or that time with the pain they're going to have to suffer that's where it will split absolutely um but the, but these runners they all look pretty comfortable and i think most of them if they can just sustain the pace um they'll get that that sub nine hour and this is this is what the medal that these people are aiming for you might have you might find mixed up amongst them a couple of um, silver hopefuls falling off the pace, having a bad day, but uh, they run sensibly, maintain their effort. That nine hours, sub nine hours, should be there. Talani, again, good pacing will get them eight, but they're definitely silver uh, Bill Rowan uh, medal runners here. Um, what's it like out there? Which have led you and Pelamova Sierra Bonca Bakichi, Abadula Lapa, a halfway, Badula Gulula and Pella, Guapa Nomaba Sepe, Mikansa, Emin, Nescati, Esmin, Sweet Babila from Emin M. Kakuin, Kapa Loro Banigaza, who calls you with Manga Ketanga, Lumcha Holona, and Yagan Ibe is Tom Bessie, Shaman Fiakai, Melan and Pella with his name, Emzin Benuami, but Given that determination, go shooting Fagum Jans again, who was a new pet. Mam Buella La Pana and Jogulita, Doba Ebezula go hotspot, Kuluma Molian Chatsov, Bona Wam Yendela, I control and a corner le race, Uzo Itata Lubi Price Lena, a pin the a win and a race, Oyo Tata Ama Ama in Kuluma, I mean in Kuluma and Ezin Chanu, Namashumi, Namakula is Tupa, Ama Randi, Ogo Menza and Pella Uti Achabu, Uti, Yazu team. I led that race not just at the finish, but about 30 kilometers before the finish. Well, we're back with the leader, Leonard Spetsov, uh, downrun champion, downrun record breaker, and on pace to take the uprun. Now, to do the uprun, he's got to get under 5 hours 23, which was Vladimir Kotov's record set in the 2000, and it finished at Scottsville Racecourse as opposed to the Oval here at Peter Maritzburg. Um, he's looking very, very strong, and as I say, Helen, he's he seems to be on record pace at this present moment. But there are a couple of challenges ahead of him. That, that there is. He he's he's heading towards Umlas Road, which is actually the highest point um, in the Comrades. And I think there's I think about 19 kilometres to go from from that point. He, I think about another kilometre, he should be there. There is some, and then if the race evens out. Then he's got a couple of more pulls, and then. Home, home into Peter Maritzburg. But I think what is important at this, at that pace, is that he's got to have the strength to focus because he's running out there on his own. Talani, do you think perhaps he's just pushed the Weberty too far, too fast, too soon? Mazina Kosha Omlando, while in season, is Prince Alapana Pandili, which had so fully on it. In 2001, he finished second. 2002, 423 position and uh, after that he didn't run congress for a very long time when the show when he comes back last year he wants to win this race he won it in a very good time that was about four minutes breaking the record and uh, coming back here he knew very well that it was one of his worst races he ever had in the year 
When he comes here, he wants to defend this title, although it's an upran. He wants to correct the mistake of 2002, which at the moment he will, and will also be part of history. Reason being, he will be the first international athlete coming out from South Africa to win a back-to-back -back comrades, which is a down run and the up run. And let me tell you, he's about to achieve that. Yes, that's him uh, coming through towards the uh, highest point. You can see that almost as your horizon over there. And uh, he's got uh, 20 k's, 20 and a bit kilometers left to go. The, the, the route from this part and apart from your little pollies and, and poly shorts, it's, it's relatively easy running if one compares it to the first half of the course. And if he's feeling strong, there's enough slight downhills for him to sort of maintain that lead. And, and talking to um, Zetalele, he was saying when he trained with me, he trained a lot on his own, and I think that will come into play now. And here we are back with the leading ladies, and it looks like they've consolidated again. Indeed. Now, earlier on, of course, Elena uh, fell twice in the race. Uh, we thought that might have had a, a major effect, but with the twins together, see her, they're working together, and Tatiana is now behind. And I think that's really where it's going to be, um, Helen, I think, in the, in the ladies' race. That's what we would have expected to be at this point in time. And while, whilst the um, camera is on Shetsov, he's the runner out in front. If one just reflects back... We saw the Nugli Ava twins before and there was a definite split and we actually thought that one of them had fallen out of the race. And I think the one of the most important things in, in comrades is to acknowledge that you're going to run through a bad patch and that you will come out the other day, other side of it and carry on running. And, and it would seem that um, that is actually what Alicia, I think, has done. Yes, and Shvetsov, as he turns this corner, will have 20 kilometres uh, left to go and he's in a very much a commanding position. Now, what's interesting is, comrades, in my mind, you have to take control of yourself at the beginning and control your race at the beginning. Now you get to this point and you control the race. You judge how you're going to take the race and win the race. He has opened up uh, a three minute, 12 second lead um, over Yannicki. The last time we looked at it, Tulani, it was two, two minutes and something. So he's taken another minute out over about six k's. That's quite substantial at this point in time. I mean, but the race is and the more you can race, the more excited or utate mamawala. Fanege wazu uguti la mandla uzwa tinga ekpineni. Yindo ayenzi lege lapa ulono uchetsov. Kut nama para tine race, ufunde abakichime abakichima around you. Be able to learn the athletes around you. Who's strong, who's not strong. But at the same time, don't get caught by running somebody's race, you run your own race. And the logo of Buya Gupi, the type of training you were doing before. Because that training is the one that will take you there. If you are doing a training that is different from what other athletes are doing, you'll be in trouble. That's exactly what you do. But what is important, the race counts at the end. You only win the race at the end. You won't win the race from the start always. And that's a very important fact to remember, that a record is broken by one second. So going out and trying to push for a two-minute break or whatever in the record isn't important. The record is only one second faster. And uh, he's got about uh, 500 meters to the highest point. And he will get, as he turns this corner, he will get a bit of a view of the drop down into Peter Maritzburg. I think it's quite apparent that he's actually now running for the record. I think when he went past a definite kilometre mark, he had a look at his watch, his seconds gave him the splits, the times, how he stands for the record, and he's definitely running with a purpose. I think if his seconds can feed back to him that he's running on his own, and I think what you'll possibly find, we, we can't see the second, third, fourth place runners, but they are also running on their own, which probably makes it easier for him. If they were running together as a group, they may be able to work together to pull him back. If they're running on their own, they'll all be racing themselves.
Okay, well, we've got Stephen Masungi um, from KwaZulu Natal. He's a Zimbabwean running for the Formula One club. He's in third place at the present moment, and he's sitting about seven minutes behind. Uh, Masungi was with uh, Kotov, uh, or ahead of Kotov, so Kotov is also moving through, but this man is going for the record, as Helen has said, and uh, he's getting information as he gets his drink, and that's very important, to know just how much to push, how much to hold back, because he's got to have the energy, Kalani, to handle that poly shorts and little poly shorts. Ukichima agmuxigo ukichima jengempela ngo utukichima lapa is about the supplement that you are taking during the race. We can see uguti yengela akichima ngayo uchetsofu. Uyaz nesa kushutu uyaz nagegela. Uyawa puza amanzi uyai puza futi na lama electrolytes amnigeza i energy. Si aboni ntoga si shana lapa na mkuluma ngayo utatiana. Gwele la gepa uyaz uguti. Joba gwele la tala be zimsu pali ntoga slow. Munya uli melo u elana fanege anga vumi uwitba kichime i reisi yake. Yabo, yena uzo kiba kichime sangempela njoba simboni yanzi ayanza lentola. Skumbu ule ugutingo 2005. Washia u elena kukombrits, kutu ocean nge sprint. Wapinda futi wai wina i kombrits na ayo futi ngo 2005. So she has got a very good record of beating u elana. And she doesn't worry much about to Olesia because she knows she always beat her. Well, we're on an area that I like to call the roller coaster. It runs along beside the N3, and as you can see, 28 kilometers to go there. Um, as you go along the N3, you then cross the bridge and you go through what I call the Big Dipper, and uh, that takes you into Camperdown. Now, what's interesting here, Helen, is look at the number of men who are now with the lead ladies. So that tells you just how many were running way, way beyond their uh, ability. And of course, um, that could have been the, respons the responsibility of uh, Elena's two falls. It may well be, Naveed, but I think, Nari, also the, p the pace of this run, I would be quite surprised if the record went today. We've just passed the 28 kilometers to go. Would they run 14 k's an hour? That would still give them only about a six 6.12, the record that they've got to run is 6.9, and, and they would have to pull something quite exceptional out of the bag to break 6.9. Indeed. But and I think they that's, can prove you wrong. Yeah, days. no, sure. But I think that is why Tatiana is able to stay with them, because Tatiana, um, on a record-breaking run, would, I think, be quite a bit behind. Just to update you on what's going on behind this, um, Rihanna Van Eker, is sitting in sixth position last time we our spotters picked them up. Maria back from Germany, a regular here and uh, well established and also just turned 50, uh, 1437 behind the leaders. Then uh, Leslie Train, 1732 behind and Carol Mercer coming in at ninth position, 1956. I haven't seen uh, Grace uh, Dolavira recently, so. Uh, we will see, oh, Grace, I believe, is in uh, 12th position, 21-41. And here we've got our um, fourth place lady, and uh, just coming into Cato Ridge, and I think she is lying at approximately four or five minutes behind that leading bunch of three ladies. Um, also an overseas athlete, Marina, she's run this race several times before, but she is just not in the pace. She's not going to be one of the top three contenders today. Not at all. Uh, Interesting the... Interesting the... Interesting the... Interesting the... Interesting the... Interesting Kichimi, Beslisa, Aba Kichima, Nale, Ntoga, Zekalen. Singa pegi nje, e, Shen Loguti, Aba Vangeti, Mshampe, Baba Tigameza. Baba Ngata Rakuli, U Kichima, U Wetwa from the beginning, right to the end. Aksiyo, Indo, Elula Rakuli. Noma se Baba Shihile, Nje Nga Manje, Njoba Siba Kichima, Aboto Lapa. But Le Intis was Banga Tile, Le Ntoga, because they were actually accompanying them, and they pacing them. And we must remember also, with these ladies have run very very good times breaking this record through the support that they've been getting from the uh, from the men and so there is also a positiveness that these guys are doing for the girls to break the records and for the viewers who are watching this you'll see the different color numbers on these run runners and there is quite a lot of significance in this and that 
um, Alina has got a, a green number, which indicates that she has won this race three times. There's quite a combination of reasons and ways one can get a green number, run 10 comrades, etc. And she's got it the shortcut route. She's won it three times. The blue numbers indicate a foreign athlete. And you'll see different blue numbers right throughout the field. You'll see green numbers throughout the field. But they, there is a significance, and it will have a meaning. Well, the ones that really count uh, and have a lot of meaning this year, of course, are the yellow ones, because that means someone in yellow striped ones, because they're either going for a green number for 10 finishes, and the yellow means that they're on their ninth or their 19th with the stripes yellow. So keep an eye out for those. And of course, striped greens are the uh, 20 and 30 runners. And uh, you get someone like Bruce Fordyce, who has earned his number seven times. So uh, seven laurel wreaths. In Toga Ziga Eshire skin in German Manja, Utatiana, Gobau Yazu, Utu Elana Limele, and the Uyo O Soup for a racing. So Angam Niges Nelananji Ituba, Loguti, Arika, Vegli, Injari, Liana, Lapana, Etole, and we should Jobali Mele to Len Lapan. So Sambona and Pella Batons and Pella Uti, Magi Walema Petelin, Aguiwe Assez, Yasazuil and Pella Ublop Sung, Kanjalu, no Pefum Lagna Secolu, and over psychological Ugly Malaga. Another interesting point about the way the, this group is now running is everyone is going for their own piece of the road. Everyone is getting free rein to run with their own rhythm without feeling that they've got to chop their stride or anything. And that's made a difference as well, I think, to Elena, who now has much more of that rhythm back that we're used to, as opposed to how she looked going through Hillcrest um, and... Um, you know, the way that she was limping there. But at this point in time, let's take a short break and uh, we'll be back with you for the 83rd Comrades Marathon. This is where we begin to be in the middle. Cramp on the right side, this spear. Pain on his face. You can see the problems he's going through. He wills himself to carry on. And now the last 30 minutes over for the 1989 and 64 comrades winner Samuel Jabalana. Well gedaan and a time of over 5 hours, 35 minutes and 50 seconds to the stop of the Bonitas Medical Fund. Serious about what you need. Out of Gauteng province comes an event so extreme, it's gonna hurt. The ultimate Grand Prix drive gears down to the workshop with the country's top 18 drivers. It'll be 14 days of pain, performance and limitations. There's only room for one in a Renault F1 car around Silverstone. Follow the action with the ultimate Grand Prix drive on SABC3, Sundays at 6. Come be part of the dream, brought to you by the Gauteng provincial government and the Renault F1 team. The body has many different, yet equally important parts. The eye cannot say, I am more important than the hand because I see. The finger cannot say, I am more useful than the foot because I handle things. When one part hurts, the whole body is affected. And when it is healed, every part finds relief. Like the body, we find ways to make complicated processes simple. Bonitas Medical Fund. Serious about what you need. Nitcare 911 is the official medical partner for the Comrades Marathon Association. Well, you're back with us at the 83rd Comrades Marathon and we're looking at the lead uh, ladies. There's the three of them together. They've been together for most of the race. Tatiana was shadowing the two twins um, early on and uh, now is beginning to mix it up. They know that something's got to happen, Helen, fairly soon they can't leave it till the till the very end well, I, the way they're running now i think they look as though they're going to be sort of all time we could throw a, a blanket over them but we'll wait and see but i think the interesting thing to observe in the women's race these three women are dominating it, it, it is a, there is about a seven minute gap back 
to the fourth lady. So we've really got almost two ladies' races. I can't see that kind of being closed at all, which, which is unfortunate, but that's just the way it is, and, and the excitement will be amongst these that's three right. women. Well, in fact, you're quite correct. The, the top 12 are separated by 20 minutes at this stage. So there's almost sort of three races going on. There's the, the front one, there's a first South African, and there's a one for the what we call the lucky goals, the nine and 10. And now we're right up front with the leader, Leonard Shredsov, down run winner and record holder. Uh, four hours 23 and he uh, I think he is into uh, the Darnadells area no he's gone through Darnadells and he's going down towards uh, Lion Park but look at the high knee, high knee lift high kick back there to Lani this man has a style of power Abala Leli, Kanjalo, Nababugeli TV, Le Ekai, who would have a pere amastrite alum fan, Yangela Astrid Amacom. You could see exactly who would he athlete. He has run nine sub to twelve marathon. This is not something that he he just doing it. He's it comes from the professionalism that he has been involved in for years. He didn't just come here from comrades doing this. And I think the second place South African, we may have Rihanna von a Kirk in front of her. We need to just get clarity on that. She's looking strong and I think as always, Fava runs her own race, what she's capable of. And we've got the second man, Yannicky, coming through. Um, and this is Darnadells, and uh, that's the two chicken farms in this area. And trust me, that's quite a wake-up call for you. These, I mean, they've got to finish this race running on their own. And I think I can't recall when the Comrades Marathon was. There was such a, a the runners were so spread out in the last 20 kilometres. I mean, there's quite a gap. There's two to three minutes between the first and second, and we can't see the third runner. And this, this makes it even more difficult for the runners, and you may well find that the times, because of this, might be a little bit slower in the lower-placed goals. Well, there's another danger as well for the people in the, in the chasing packs, and that is that they start going after, um, after Shvetsov, because that can pull them too fast again too soon, and they will pay for it on that climb up trolley shots. But our athletes need to learn. These top athletes from outside, they come to comrades after the history of their marathon background, whereas most of our athletes don't know what they are capable of because they have never run good marathons or sometimes some ultra marathon, and they only come in here at comrades. And after they've run comrades, they fought, what they do, Basuge Baokichima, just long runs, no speed sessions, no heels, no repetitions, and that puts you in the disadvantage. You can see the man, the way he strides, which is a total athlete. All the combination of speed, distance, uphill, down runs, he has done it. He's not struggling. That's what our athletes need to learn, um, to learn not just in comrades, in all aspects of athletics, from cross country, track, half marathon, right up to a marathon. Then when they are old, then they can, can come and run comrades. Well, across the bottom of your screen there, there's some very interesting things going on. I don't know if you saw that Vladimir Kotov has moved into fourth position. Stephen Mazinga from Formula One in Durban, he's uh, sitting in third, third position, I think that was. But he was seven minutes adrift, and uh, Kotov is ten minutes behind. Now, take away that early lead of uh, that beginning of 310 from... Yannicky and uh, Shvetsov, and you've got Kotov sitting 
seven minutes adrift at a 50-year-old. Helen, that is absolutely unbelievable. I, it's a remarkable performance, and I hope it's one that inspires a lot of people. But I think what one has to remember is that, in a way, Karov comes into this race with a slight advantage. He's won this race. He's the rec um, record holder for the uprun. He knows that he's possibly not going to win it unless there's a lot of disasters happen up front. So he's got a slightly more relaxed approach. He, he is running with incredible wisdom and talent, obviously, but I think that just allows him to have a, just a, a far more comfortable run. He's not actually out there racing for the record. He's not really racing for first position. He'll be happy with just getting a goal. More than happy, I would expect. Delaney, I wonder, I wonder if the question we should be asking is, what will the new record be later today? In about an hour's time, what will the new record be? The record might go or the record might stay. If Ishala le record, he, he, he will miss it with a very few minutes. It won't be a, really some double minutes, like five minutes and all that. But he's capable the way he's striding. But one most important that our athletes need to learn, I mean, to realize, come to comrades with a great experience for you to do well for years. And we have got classic example to learn from. Andrew Keleche won 10 gold medals in succession imnyaga ilandela na yonke and the one of those 10 gold medal is a win, i mean is a win and i don't think andrew keleh is getting much recognition for what he has achieved for that race and i hope people can talk about them because i don't know anybody who has got 10 successive gold medal except him and this is uh, Stephen Mazinga, as you've seen, coming through Zimbabwean from Durban. Third place, and uh, he won the Chatsworth 52. He's been very focused, and uh, Cliff Down in uh, Formula One, the, the manager of that club, has been tipping him this year. And he's really sort of cut back on his racing for uh, this race. And I think it's going to pay off dividends, Helen, for him this year. And here we are. We the, nothing has changed. We've got the Nerglieva sisters running out front. Tatiana hanging in there, and they they are just looking all strong. We've got to wait and see. I I don't know. This race could end up a sprint towards the finish line, and I mean that would be absolutely tremendous. We've had feedback that the fourth lady is nine minutes behind this leading bunch of three, and the fifth lady is 12 minutes behind. So. We, unless something happens to one of these runners, I think we're looking at the first, second, third lady in the comrades. Yeah. Yeah. Go nagele pa. Go sisi. Go tande ke ubanzima. Tso aga zike za segu ambeni. Zizche la ju itego la yo. La zo. Donovan, you know, uh, we've been talking about this. Girls, girls in South Africa, when they coming into party, it seems as if we're becoming softer and softer day by day. So the lady has on speak now the top one of the year and for once as it by a day like an one that the 15 best that they have worked on international athlete and at five that they have worked on once a South African South Amos. So it's going to take now the marathon that they have done for the first time in the 14 to 15 minutes of the school to see international people that they deal with in our own athletes. So it's going to be a lot more clear that our female athletes must be harder work than 10 kilometers in the half marathon, but the half marathon type of sport om hulle marathon tijd te verbeter. En dan sal hulle meer mede dingen wees op Comrades en Twee Oceane. En so gaan sieke met dota. En sy as tjel en sy tegola so is as Rasia. En umbo koke, no koke. No koke, as nou tandika kutle riana van die kerke. Voor momento, ama tjembel om zan sieke. As ka wabo nipa. En ga tjike i kepia vule kam fondini. I'm a daughter, get on and get in a go. They doing well on the other side. Tatiana, in so far as any quality, as time to balance, I think she has got about eight to nine gold, if I'm not mistaken. In so far as get Zambana, get um, you get up to four, um, you up to five. 
what is very interesting here uh, the lady that uh, fell is still uh, uh, leading and uh, the sister is begging you know with uh, uh, the sister uh, Nogareva uh, the pace is not as fast as it was earlier on yeah, the women's race is actually very, very exciting today. Is that uh, Elena, who's won the past two upruns, uh, no one's actually stayed with her this long on an uprun so far, and, uh, and already she still has her sister for company and Tatiana. But I, I like Tatiana, she's uh, just behind them, she's not doing too much of the work, although the twins are looking very relaxed. Uh, Tatiana's just keying off them, and that could play into their favor later. But uh, back to uh, the chicken farms in the men's race. We're picking up the uh, fourth position athlete here, Vladimir Kotov. 50 years of age, and you can see behind him the fifth, sixth, and seventh athletes. Oleg Karitanov, the 2006 uprun defending champion, moving ahead now of Ngadisiem Kize, the South African Hope, and Grigory Mersin. The pace, four hours, 33 minutes. Uh, Donovan, these guys on pace for about a 5.30, 5.31 slow at this stage. Yeah, Q and D. The athlete that was here seen had no career to go yet. That to pass on it so around on five, five and a half year at loop and then pass on her five year of year. But so as I can see, um, in front of the top South African athlete, in the case, um, I saw a little bit so as I so as I did a field come and I came close to Murzon. And with all the characters of that did a field come and now naturally up sky for the medallions with cut of net for all. This is totally different atmosphere here is on the lead. This is the lead. This is the lead. I think uh, of might be more than 70 when we're talking. Wait. He looks a bit, uh, you know. Yeah, I think uh, Shretsov probably weighs in at about 73, 74 kilograms, which is quite heavy for an elite runner, especially a 209 marathon runner. But uh, his stride has not changed the whole day. He looks as fresh as he was from the start. He's now running on the long downhill into um, Little Polly's. He'll be climbing up that soon. Four hours, 35 minutes into the race and uh, looking as fresh as ever, Donovan. Yeah, okay, no. Ons kan duidelijk zien dat zij nog te bouwen is baie groter as, as onze gewone Zuid-Afrikaanse atlete. En zij twee lengte is ook baie langer as, as onze Zuid-Afrikaanse atlete. En als we kijken is 13 kilometer oor. So, dat is minder as een uur om te hardloop. Dat betekent zij nog als in een omgeving van zo'n so, uh, 25, 26 of dat een beetje vinniger. En hier die atleet Janneke het mooi dier die veld opgeskuif. Hy leed een tweede op die oomlik. Hy is ook die wenner van, van die afwetloop in 1999. Dan is die mfanake smasga kool. Ook moet sê maak die pakuma hils. Maar die oene kreisake elite kak setliwa. Third and the win was from the town. Kot wake utilisa nake no ansa kotsonge pake. Very disciplined person, very quiet. Um, seven zige when so as in ya on Jagupella and says, Okay, a sugar pack a Poland, a itekung and Begutem Pondini, no pot at the back, no pot in front. I think uh, he's a bit lonely there, but uh, the position is good. Yeah, Janiki running in second position at the moment. It will be quite interesting to see what the gap is because uh, Janiki is on the same downhill as Shretsov is. But back to the chicken farms, Hamans Mokadi, the Netbank athlete just coming through your screen there. And behind him, the 24-year-old Melikaya Situba. Is that a guy from your hometown, Charles Guy? This is Hamans Mokadi. He has got a 10th position uh, in two oceans. Uh, he has been doing well. Uh, he's in the first 10, Johan Ostezen. He has got uh, two gold medals. Uh, he's doing well as well. Uh, he's moving up steadily, but uh, the pace here is the same. You know, when you put a cruise in a car, that pace, if it was 20 per hour, it has been 20 per hour even now. 
stress of the law. In total, in Amava, he has got lots, lots, lots of experience. Uh, you know, you have got all the experience if you were a 10 kilometer specialist, 21 kilometer specialist. When you go up, the experience is there. Yeah, extreme sum kills at the Lille. As you see here, Zwitserland so had to be stressed for 4 minutes a kilometer. And this is for all the bars that they can get in the opdracht here. They are passed on the hand off. But what is duidelijk is, is that they are much better than they are from all the athletes. And that they work at this course. Here is a strong athlete. Here is the last one of the wet loop. And he, in terms of his concentration, focus now on the last kilometers. That is now 13 kilometers to go. So that is in the period of 50 minutes to be at the end. Uh, Shretsov currently running up the low polys, if I'm not mistaken, I think he's just uh, already reached the top of that and he'll face a long downhill about, of about a kilometre and then he'll reach the grueling two kilometre climb of poly shorts, that's a make or break. And in the history of the upper end, no one has ever led past poly shorts and not won the race. So if history repeats itself, uh, it's going to be hard for anyone to beat Shretsov today. Well, John, there's no doubt about uh, this man. We can't even think about the person behind. Uh, him, you know, you can see uh, Janiji with his short legs, he's trying and he knows himself that uh, he's not younger than Sweshov and uh, even if he's in position two, he will be very happy with that position. Stronger Gindo Tagam Fondine Tande, Ebanzi Mike Pam Fondini, Mfana Geom Futsana Gam Teguyapi, Fano of Puma Pai Poland, Ama Kringa Gea Peli Lekau Seuglandau, second position. He's doing well. There's nothing left, and those gap, you know, it's big gap, but uh, comrades, uh, you know, even if the gap is, is big, anything can happen. Ja, ons het geleerd oor die jare dat die atleet kan in die voortouw wees en dan skiele kan hy kramp kry en um, in die moeilijkheid beland. Maar soos Janneke, hy hardloop en sê snof, lyk het of hulle duidelijk die, die wetloop um, gaan, gaan klaarmaak. En, en as mens kyk na die gaafings tussen die atlete, as die gaafings groot tussen Janneke en met um, sê snof, lyk het so as die gaafings so tussen 3 en 3 en 1,5 minuten is. In dat dag, hy leem van die nie. Hey, Pagunda has been the Saga Siambege, Sidizi, and Manzin will be back live. Plus, she was 15th overall. An incredible achievement. And in in 50 minutes, in 53 seconds, Penetra has Lindsay Wait, the off record. Chevrolet Captiva. With a seven-seat interior and all-terrain capabilities, it's easy to see why the driving seat is worth fighting for. Play nice. The new Captiva. Bogi soge umchelo si utsala pezulu gwindi zamtini mfondini si pago zanda uge kutuwa ngo little pushen inzi zwagele ay gobi ili mfondini you know Caught when Kotov is climbing a hill, he does exactly what Shoshov is doing. You know, he's digging deep now. Tombazan, Tombige is a third hotspot. Aman Tombazan, Agela, Julapan Fondini. The twins. Lena Lesia now taking the uh, scruff of the neck at the, at the beginning of. Uh, 441 into the race. They've just gone through the last hot spot. 16,500 rand richer. I think it was Alessio who went there, through there first. Uh, getting a gap now of about 100 meters over Tatiana Zakova in the third place. And uh, according to Nori Williamson, the pace that they're on at the moment should sustain to about a 6.16 finish. So uh, no record on the moment uh, in the ladies' race, but on the men, it's a different story. 
Ja, en het lijkt of die twee zusters nou de terecht gekregen om van Tatiana weg te breken. Hulle is nou so pas dier die laatste aansporingsprys. En daar is 16.500 rand in die bank vir een van die twee sisters wat nog to, totaal saam haar klop. En dat is net verbazend dat Elena na haar harde twee vallen nog kon herstel het en haar focus kon behoud hier in die wetloop. Maar het lijkt of hulle nou geleidelijk saamwerk om weg te kom van Tatiana. It's becoming interesting now. You know, she, uh, Olysia had uh, her own problem, but uh, it seems as if that is a thing of the past. Uh, they cruising together. Uh, Tatiana, uh, she made her searches, and I think they're reporting back right now. It looks like they're enjoying the pace and they're talking to each other. So no one was uh, like uh, wanting to move. Yeah, they're running well within themselves here, Zet. They're looking very comfortable. And it's also interesting to note uh, when you saw them this morning going through the first checkpoint, they must have been in about 500 or so position. And I can guarantee you that at the moment they're in the top 60. En as ons nou kyk na hulle twee, daar is net twee mans rondom hulle, vanochtend was daar so groot uh, groep mans rondom hulle en dit het uh, heel moendlik een van die valle veroorzaak, maar um, oor, die, oor die twee jaren daarna het hulle die mans bono met so geleidelik, geleidelik dinner gewerk, dat daar nou net twee van hierdie mans oor is. En hulle twee werk nou saam om weg te kom en het lyk nou duidelik dat uh, so daar die rekord, Nee, nee, nagejagen wordt niet. Alle lijkt zoals of alle voor voor een zes, zes, zes uur en zes, zestien minuten um, die partij dan gaan komen. Zo ongeveer van van Bruce, nog niet naar boven plus, maar kon een pijn delen. Zeg eens, mama, leg baba Peters tien, massief. Thank you so much. Of course, I'm at the halfway, and who better to start off and kickstart the halfway mark of the 2008 Comrades Marathon than the man himself, the king of Comrades. This is my trainer for next year. He was my trainer. What are you going to do next year? How is, how is it going so far, Bruce? Is this the finish? No. I thought this was the finish. <laughs> Don't tell me this is not the finish. No, this is our second lap. Oh, no. is this second this lap? is our second lap. <laughs> okay, how are you guys doing so far? We're great. We're great. We'll be there. We're going to be fine. Hi, my God. Yeah, we just got a it's, a, it's a doddle from here on. Uphill, you say, you always say to me, uphill are easier, Bruce. Is it easy still? all the uphill. Yeah. We just got to go up in Changa, along Harrison Flats, Polly Shorts, Little Pollies, and we're there. I can't believe you're still, you're still no, running like it's easy. No, but they better switch the stadium lights on for us, because we're gonna, we're gonna, it's going to be dark when we get there. Okay. I'll see you at the finish. That was the Bruce Ford, the man, the king of South African comrades. He's absolutely outstanding. He's not even sweating. It still looks so easy to him. Well, I'll check you guys. A bit later from Mila, we moeten hier at the halfway mark. Yeah, we have a lot of people who have seen what in 1981 and they have been able to get the comrades to win. And he has two records in the half comrades. So, as you can see, this pace looks like enjoyable. Corner of the Pamfordini in Cesar. So what has he le lamento mbazana pati kutande uba kuhusheke kwa kumpera nenseni ya namcha njenga lugo bilu kutulu lupamfundi ni skutla ana zoga zase rasia zite kuhunga begutle sinzo gaske zukonda na koko umtimbika steta the ultra distance running the experience is there. I said these girls are very, very experienced. They've run from distances of 10 kilometers up to the 100k distance. Although 100 kilometers is not their favorite, they've only done it once. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they did that in about 7.10 when they came first and second in the European 100k champs. But they are dominating here today. I don't see Tatiana coming back. And uh, all that's left to tell now is, is it going to be Elena or is it going to be Alessia who takes the victory? Yeah, Kyo, and over the years we've learned that these two dames come together and as they come to the end, then one of them will try to win the race. So, they are not yet at the point and they will work now together. I'm going to go to the end of the day. I'm going to go to the end of the day. I'm going to go to the end of the day. I'm going to go to the end of the day. I'm going to go to the end of the day. I'm going to go to the end of the day. I'm going to go to the end of the day. I'm going to go to the end of the day. I'm going to go to the end of the day. I'm going to go to the end of the day. Kunzi makubo ke bumbabini kama wele ke lampondi ni azikela ke iteko la onje apekaya ende aliko ke itemba loba iza upela ke lo tego ngoku 
Yesha gelando tamfundi ni siamba pisa unyuka kengo kwa polisi kote za poko kwa kuchonge zanzi lena swesof mshaba ge utande utamba gelo but the surprise is coming ahead. Yeah, Lennon is going to be seeing the big monstrous poly shorts in about uh, two minutes from now. He's really improving on his uprun record though, Zet. You remember in 2001 when he came second, he came back the year after and finished in, if I'm not mistaken, 490th, running 7 hours 25. That's not happening today. He's in the lead, he's, he looks relaxed, he's very controlled, and you can see that knee lift very hostile. He looks as if he's just started the race. And four hours, 48 into the minute. Um, it's, we'll have to see a marker board to get a definite uh, direction, but there's Ray De Fries on the right hand side of the road telling him, you are on record pace, go for it, Leonard. And Zet, this is gonna be very exciting. Yeah, ons het nou net vir Ryder Fries gesien wat vir Lennart sê vir Nathalie die hele dag probeer jy op en hy het hom duidelik laat verstaan dat hy op record pas is. So waar jy kan sien wil Lennart werk uit sy skouwers uit, hy gaan ook nou Pali Soort opgaan en dit sal vir ons kardinaal wees om te sien hoe hy klimt in Pali Soort of of hy record vandag gebreek gaan word. You know when uh, Salazar uh, won the up run, he took this race uh, from start to finish and uh, if it was not for those rabbits, uh, Swatch of should have done the same today. But uh, you know, now Uberta is singing a Kayam Pondi Nunuki Selwa gave my respect. Who said Kringa gave me a lap from Pondi? Say as Baba Suso Paisanzi, Dagam Laba Sazge, Bagge, a pause of Pinda Fortige, a Bashanga Bezena. Yeah, still the same as it, as as if he's just started the race. Leonard now starting the two kilometer climb up Poly Shorts, four hours, forty-nine minutes, so he should reach the top in around about four hours fifty-seven, four hours fifty-eight if he goes at four minutes okay. But uh, the record holder of the uprun, Vladimir Kotov, currently in fourth position. 13 minutes 24 seconds behind Leonard so definitely no chance of Vladimir coming through but just behind him the 2006 uprun winner and defending champion Oleg Karitanov who's clawing his way through the field 13 minutes 37 seconds behind and he's running together with Grigory Merzin and Ngadisiem Kiza the local guy from KZN Donovan you were fourth in the 2000 uprun running five hours 34 minutes tell us what is it like how are you feeling when you so close yet so far still from the finish up poly shorts kion here is i fast back womlaka and here is the last kilometers but they but they definitely feel character and the quality of your character but safe so so you can see lenitsa copas near i work at this cover side and i probier with the alka three what i foreign to fat net net foreign to wear does does he a type of type of a deal to funny weight look but they definitely feel concentration with mood much care piece so close and so far that was nice you know John, you put it nicely you know i remember when i was lying pushing 10 uh, pushing 10 and it was only about uh, five kilometers to go but uh, i didn't finish it was so close but still so far i'm sure that must have been the longest five kilometers in your life that it's a short distance but it feels like it just takes forever and ever at this stage a lot of the guys just putting one one foot and forward of, of the another that's uh, more than enough and uh, tatiana zokova the lady in third position uh going past one of the mr price runners Fani machipo who had halfway was in position four so a lot of the men having a bad day at the office today and the women showing that if you pace yourself correctly you'll get the results on event yeah, she's got now that he and she is not six seconds after the two sisters. So the gap is not too great for Frony, and she can heal more than herself yet terug weer. Here is a deal to what what the athlete now net all the focus must be scared, and and the competitive a deal to find a way to the race begin to see the three dames. So as you can find, in so as you can number, so when the rest start to lay sit, the Tatiana Zirkova, Fana, the Pamphon, the Stockish, Polish, second position. Uh, you know, you can see, John, that uh, this man is comfortable in this position. He's not planning to fight to catch up on switch off. Yes, Janiki running very strongly at the moment. 
You can see Shvetsov is probably halfway up Poly Shorts by now, and Janiki's just finished the climb up Little Poly, so he's still got that one kilometer downhill uh, down two Poly Shorts to contend with. So the gap at this stage, looking at around about uh, 4 minutes 35, 4 minutes 40, but uh, Janiki looking very, very strong, and uh, Muzingi in the third position, the man from Formula One from Zimbabwe. Uh, there's uh, the split, 4 minute 48 from Shvetsov to Janiki. That's over a kilometer, Donovan. Yeah, Kieran. Um, that betekent that Shvetsov al klaar om 30 kilometer tegen, tegen Poly Shorts al op is, en Janiki gaan dat nou begin. En a 5 minute voorsprong is a groot voorsprong. Mens kan ook zien hoe hard het is om tegen Poly Shorts uit te klim. Kijk hoe zwaar trek Shvetsov tegen, tegen die hevel uit, en hy moet rechtig inklim met sy skouwers om sy, sy ritme te bouw. Give me Fanegi, so you tell me them for the see better as them, but check those calves. You know, they're so big and strong. And you look at the Hemis, you know, Zaki, one for the name, El Betage, a clean Nagelo, the Bella, Polisot, he's putting all his, you know, Duguza came for them for the name, Unukisel, why 220,000. Kortwag is not the first time. I more two silly on to lay off. Leonard, a switch off on his dark glasses. He has He is rich today. Yes, 220,000 Rand, the first position on offer. And uh, Zet, don't forget that if he breaks the record, he's going to get a 250,000 Rand cash payment as well. So the man taking home uh, close to half a million Rand and also gets uh, some incentives from his sponsors. So. When you convert that to the ruble in Russia, he's a millionaire, Donovan. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Price held up a spell, 220,000 for a win, and then no 250,000 as Leonard said, no, the wet loop here, and a record tight for better. But we can see no swar, track it in poly sorts of poly sorts as as na 80 kilometer, and this will come at later, then a level that 1,8 kilometer long is, and with a 300. Type, type, type klim beteken het dat jy moet verskrikkelijk hard kan werk. Vir die eerste keer kan ons die teken sien van zwaar kry by Setsnof. Maar die man is gefokus. Hou tjong, kijk, hou slaas, zap, hy kak, wak en vond in die koekreen en sy in toeng hati, kom na in die pak, hoe jy got was jazi, in klung, wees die pak, glam zimba, en hoe jy tanda as a goeti, figa nie na pon die akona, die tjebe om taka swash of, en hoe taka tato, hoe tjelan, zi tego lak en vond in die I kepu ke inka banka ba yambona koto ba noko tande utonza nzima koto ya zukutu mkwimbi ulungi sele Ishvetsov gets the record the the deciding factor on getting the record today will be after Poly Shorts because his pace has slowed down a lot set on the climb of Poly Shorts. If you remember when Kotov broke the record in 2000, he flew up Poly Shorts and in 2006, Ole Karitanov, who won, albeit in a slower time of 5 hours 35 minutes, was moving a lot faster than Shotov is going now. But he's reached the top of Poly Shorts, uh, just another 200 or so meters to the top. And with 8 k's to go, he has to run in the region of about 29 minutes, so definitely on pace or record. I yeah, that like that look of sets of now and the crane van van poly sorts does eight kilometer work. That betekent as in in the following three kilometer net zijn van ritme kan terugkrijgen naar van de ritme dat die heel die record heel moeilijk gaan weer vandaag. Ja, je schuurt zelf kan average 330 kilometer en run the last eight k's in. Uh, 28 minutes, he will run a time of around 5.23, 5.24, which will be a new record. So a record definitely at this stage on the cards, but it all depends on what happens uh, on the little downhills and climbs through Jesmond and Oribe Road through to the finish at the Oval here in Alexandra Park. And uh, Janiki probably also on Poly Shorts by now. I know the gap um, earlier was 4 minutes and 50 seconds. So Janiki 
looking at a pace of around uh, 532, 533, not a bad run at all, none of them. Yeah, flat here. Johnny Kate himself a waste here, yeah, but my child. Uh, comrades after the rug, that they have a dicht tegenstander is op your af and op your op comrades. So, uh, as I vandaag tweede eindig, dan bevestig hy net dat hy van die moderne era as hy een van die groot atlete wat na comrades toe gekom het. Less than 20, less than 30 minutes uh, before ke uh, Lendo Tanke in Volkos uh, Glenda was kope kooyom van die uh, Sielindele vanake nogu kruzan zekam nandi Une kushi ni a gap, pagat kwa keke, it is a suka by Poland, a switch of the endo tag, and a spin, a challenge, a lendo along in Senia, Tindi Ambanayo, a endo tag, a full shalanam, my sale, Zoga, Zige, Ezi, and Fondini, a Sbornake, a Ulesia, no Helena, Tajana, a decap, we have Vulega, and the Pace. It had the old drop, a gang and a fondini, as in Zogaz has been as a John Kangalagati, as Zogazi, as is a coach arm to Tatiana, is drifting back steady. I don't see Tatiana clawing her way back into uh, contention for a win today. I think uh, this is just between Olesi and Elena now. Four hours, 58 minutes into the race, and they uh, just passed the 18 kilometer to go marker. So that means that the men's leader, Shretsov, is exactly 10 kilometers ahead of, at this stage. So the woman, uh, not on a record pace today, but uh, sub 6.20 uh, finish today is highly possible. And uh, what's noticeable is that only three men next to the twins at this stage, whereas at halfway there was a bunch of about 50. Ja, ik ben een ultramarathon kan je nergens gebeur, maar voor Tatiana zal het bijna moeilijk zijn om hier die gaping tussen haar en die twee zusters te kunnen halen. Kan je lekker gaan gaatje? We doing well uh, in the men's race, maar ook compare ge na le jamanton bazana. Kort wat ik uzo ook aan kan je kans ja pijn maar peteloen. Op een matot ik moet wel kijken naar de first ten gaan zijn en dan Kodwa ke noko seyo abala ngoku nao Sene temba ke uba Inso kazi za kuti noko za usuke mfazi ye pambi Sinso kazi ke za semzi ni ke Ezi za upete yo ke lo mtu imbe kwa kalogu nse Kodwa ke nge temba neze ti inso kazi Sia fundi Ja, ons is bij de harde gedeelte van die, van die wetloop net rondom vijf uur. Dat betekent dat hier die dames nog een uur en vijftien minuten of een uur en twintig minuten op die pad gaan wees voordat hulle bij die einde aankom. Die twins nu coming through the chicken farms with about 17 kilometers to go. Still uh, dominating the race. We cannot see Zokova in the background. So that gap earlier was around 100 meters and uh, that's definitely stretched now. And uh, the woman catching a lot of the early men's leaders, uh, Tumisang Matiesi from Lesotho, and the Mr. Prowse colors just ahead there. Four hours to, five hours into the race now, so the woman looking at about another one hour 15 to one hour 20 minutes of running. Um, time will tell, but dominating, and uh, I cannot see anyone catching them today. La two oceans that's in Lacatino. It's the Hashako to Valore, Bananavana, Ba Nurgalieva, Batashe, Bapit and Trinava Trading with Sakamishal Matati, Sai Sang, Sena Kohore, Monomoba Linting, Konam Tutu, Saval Hofiana Kaneti, Loreva Fitle, Mobilonel, Tafel Lanting, Kapamo, Kaneti, Tasso Shako, Napagan, Tabana Babi, Kufing. Eutaba Mampuri is against Olisei Le Elena. Highly banned in Kanete Muna Nua Shetov, Ulasa Shakisa Kanete Tava, Kilometer Tenga Tangata Fela, Murao Rao Kuan Hori, and Nazar Zilagajeno, Kiana Batamri, Asil Teskulasena as a comrade, Jolka Sapile Lemong as a fitting, Hanor Tokakuan Rekaman Kateven, Sazilagajeno, Ranul Sesa Tokateven, Tokakuanuka, M. Gungutrovo. Le nakona kani te rihorente shano le moto tulumo le moto tuana nte nyula fela juala le bile rihorente shano le moto tuka kabang e supreme kapa e le shume ofita apalo nyakolo. 
Well, this is the uh, third place lady, Tatiana Sokova, as she heads uh, into the last 18 kilometers of this 2008 Comrades Marathon. She's tried to take on the Negliava twins, but uh, not been successful today. And they're going to be finding out for the gold. Elena looking for her third uh, gold medal and win on the uprun, which will give her an amazing record. She's already the record holder, and she's going to be going and having got over what is today a tough day, having fallen in the first 20 kilometers. Simbonilo Elana Lapana a Pera Mova as a Funa Uhut Mimpella Abon with Gonzagala Nale, a Mova, Nomi Moto Bem Tiramez, Kushutiam Supale injury, Kushut Lali Mele Corner, Kepa Intoraze, I give up in Pelas, I born a Ilan Jenga soldier, Iaz Uti, Izele Nilapa, Yendeleke Chimanga Corner, it determination, the confidence is there on the half face. Keep it up, the good worker. Exactly what happened in 1988. Same spirit of comradeship, but Bruce will be pushing a lot more. Ik voeg het de naamwoorden om Brett voor een van die grootste sportmannen wat ons land zeer zeker in die geschiedenis opgeleverd. Bruce Fordijs, 50 meter van die windpaal. En hij maakt nou klaar. Een tijd van ongeveer 11 minuten, uh, 6 uur, dus komen wij. 40 minuten en 30 seconden. 5 uur, 40 minuten ongeveer. Heel wat stadiger als zijn record van 5 uur, 27 minuten en 42 seconden. And Leonard Sweats off the Russian, if you've just joined us, has got a four and a half minute gap over second place. But what he is chasing in the last seven kilometers is the record. Five hours, 25 minutes and 33 seconds is the record established by Vladimir Kotov in the year 2000. And now Shvetsov is getting ever so close to breaking that record today. It's not going to be that uh, easy. He's still got a lot of running to do and he's very tired. But it is going to be very, very close to the record today. Tulani. <laughs> Well, that is second place. Can you believe it? Second place and walking on poly shorts. This is how brutal this race has been today. It's been cut and thrust right from the first gun. The racing has been strong and fast up front, especially through the halfway mark, and it's taken the toll on these leading athletes. And uh, Yaroslav Yaniki, with about 200 meters to go before the top of this climb, is, is starting to walk, and it really shows the pace. He's not going to be catching the leader, that's for sure, but now he's just battling to hang on for second. Kumelen and Pella Uti Ui Bambe, the position Yako Gutui Green, Nan Waba Gunemali Paratilapa, Kandifuti Gunemedal Enkora Kulu Utui Tolapa, Agmelinju Utu Pele Luanga Manta, Waba, then to Israel, Nalababang move by Israel foot. How clear Sheba Moneno set off Ovanta Kanetore. Hi, Tuxa Tabilona, La Comrade, Hotting, Dibagato, Ashling, Alishwayang, Hore, Hafi Tautona, Sakata Sai, Saumata, Otasibaka, Tilting, 
e bia futa hona go ba ka tseding ga papa se fetole hore tsotse tsa batlang go dietsa dikhe di tshwanele se wa batlang go sfitlela tsa tsinla ka tseno e leng tlholo le buya le ba tshela ete be ka ba ndikite tse magolo a mabedi ana le mashomo a mabedi ka ofela ha ka tsa record o teng tla ifumanela ka nnete gauta e ngatangata fela a ntse e feletseng ya gauta ka nnete e tla ba e tlang ka ho yena le sheltetse tla ke na di lengatangata fela ho hla ho ba tshietse ba lebelena la comrades ha le tsa tsili dikela motha ka ifumana ka nnete sa tlotse dinoto tse tshelela ka ofela ka kwana Hai bem kuma karo ba rekoto tatsing lakatsin munne na rekoto ya be le al mosef tiding ula sa ayeta ay lukisa o futa ya khale el monsena ya yona apran yona tsureke munna ning eling vladimir kotov e kare tla tsama tsing lakatsin ula tla kilomita ra tsetseng le ka mo munne na mathanga ding e kare hatsa re shebisantle le re ke nza di burele tabena kar munne na shetov e kare o tla rmaka tsa tsing lakatsin I say in twenty side level la ho hang retai tsala tsatsin la katsin. Re khutela amram kanete manu police shots kanete ke monto sebetse a teng. O sebetse a le kanete munne na nyulu setsa teng. Wa le ke mo bana ba salante mo na police shots. A be kanete o sa ituksetsa le bilona hantle munne na muzingi munna o muzimbabwe. Kanete o nda ruti maemong a boraro maemong a bedintse le munna ne yanik ya le slo ya le ki Munna Shangamane can hang up Poland. Ratay power shut off corner mutu to Saruti Hanka Holka Pilikaman. Oh, Steve Mazungi from Zimbabwe has run a great race today and he's uh, heading up towards the last 200 meters of this uh, legendary climb of the Comrades Marathon, the Polish Shorts climb. It's a 1.8 uh, kilometers long and it really does take it out of you. It's not uh, exactly about uh, the, where it is where it, in terms of the distance and the elevation. It's more about where it lies in the climb. You've done almost 70, almost 80 kilometers by the time you get to the top of this, the bottom of this climb and it really gets very tough. Just to give an idea of Leonard Shvetsov's pace, he needs to run the last uh, five kilometers in around about 18 and a half minutes. Very possible for this man. A lot will take uh, account of the last uh, couple of kilometers when he gets into Jesmond Road, which is about a 400 meter climb up Jesmond Road. And that will be the time that will be decide whether or not we're going to see a new record today. It's not going to be that close. It's going to be very, it's uh, not going to be that far. It's going to be very close that he gets the record or not for this uh, great Russian. But it's uh, we're going to have to just see in the last few kilometers how he handles the pace. Tulani. Si boni le lensi zwa roche tsof e magwe shela uguti zinto bezinga mhambe liga shemanja kufleta nyana ama masil asaya recover futi goenze la kichima na kona sambona uguti ufulu kichimela uguti alpu lele record anze iskatia siye shemno kotofu enduse tuwe leli shera kulu mwaba wazga shene mpela njenga manje uguti if a wena le reisi uyongena emlandu eni ka bruce forda isi na yugubo ngo Westbilly, okay, Chime, I come to try win. I a little win. No matter if you are footed to win, is a corner. La, I'm going to go for. No one can get my hands on the key. Chime, I'm a corner. You sell only in Jack Pella. I'm a kilometer man. Back to back. So rest the building. I'm on the one. Shut off. Get out of the tela. I'm on the other half. Get out of the cannon. The building is a comrade. Asa matele shop asefin ka pasefin se tseba halanga. Inele kasile masane saa 1994. Inele kana kweo kanete pili jana humo. Khetule na kasile ka jeno. Ikari mune na shetwa fota hapa bilulina. Asa matele shop asefin ka pasefin se tseba halanga. Saa professional yu alka wo Mr. Price. Jualo jualo. Shop asefin ka ufela. Kwa na mchutu. Ota asanta atoke na karu baka sena saa Peter Marizbeck. Kibuwa kaya na mune na Leonard Shetwa. Kilometer at the Taro Fiona Super at the Fiona Roberi at the Capano Ka Pina Maris Bego to Fitakamaneka or Ribi Ibu Fitakamaneka Washington a Velo Rosaka at the Billy Capano Ka Milongo Muholo or Capano Capita Maris Beg. Well, there he is, the great Russian, 39 years of age. The last time we saw a winner win the Comrades down and up in successive years was going back to the years of Bruce Fordyce in the 1980s. And that's how long it's been that a man has dominated this race so convincingly as Leonard Shvetsov has done both last year 
and this year. Let's go to second place down on the road. There's Yaroslav Yannicki, also running fairly well now. He was walking up Polly Shorts, but uh, Tulani Yannicki has run exceptionally well, although you can see in his face now he's very tired. It's used to stay on the road for a very long time. And psychologically, for him, it doesn't affect that much. The only thing that will be affected are the muscles. But umkondo wake, uzo was we mela lento. Njoba simbona with nangen lela kichima akonanji. Ukulule gile. Uya azu kutaka fasti. Kepa lababa eza angimuva. Angege ba mtole galu. Teori nifuma na unajwa ale kite kumanka ore. Maemunga ni shume, mwili mtolo. Osakene maemunga ni shume, mtima mwili mtolo. Kikala mata biluna na kombrezi kanete. Osatule maketo amalo maemunga bubedi kanete. Kaili mafrika borwa mletisi mkizi nzal tembo. Le wanane harmans mkhuri mkhadi. Le na ote nka mwho bali shume wiki mpili ba kakwano. Agashema mwana liena Johan Ustazen Mwana mwlele lika seya mochena Kena hetu liba tante yu Mwana lisume kia dumela Sile yana uili mtolo Mwana wa Afrika mwana well, just looking at the gaps amongst this top 10 uh, men as they come over the top of uh, Polly Shorts. And it's amazing that we're seeing Vladimir Kotov down in sixth position. He's the record holder at the moment. He would establish that record in the year 2000. But at the age of 50, Vladimir Kotov is in sixth place overall, although 16 minutes behind Lenin Shvetsov at the moment. The defending champion from the last uprun, Oleg Korotonov, we saw him going, uh, going over the top just a few moments ago in fourth place. And just behind him, Grigori in. Also good news for South Africans is that William Tolo is looking good for a top 10 place here as well at the age of 44. That is a wonderful performance from the veteran South African who on Friday night was inducted into the Hall of Fame. In Zuzu. Ashia indo temlande layo, ikuishe ibe shia kalombi ili. It's 7 minutes and 51 seconds. Ogu more than a kilometer ako. Nenje la ekala ngako na len, sizwa lena, uusha tsofu. Siya mbona ngempela uguti, uya azi washla keseli mcheli ili. Futna koseba mcheli ili uguti. Uzo kichima, irekot. Ngani ngaba, iskati si mfumela ngempela, uselele li less than 3 kilometers to run that distance and of which he has got five hours 14. So Fanega Kichime, the sub 10 minutes for him to run the record. And Ngendlela Kichima Akona Ngempela, Yambona Uguti, he's got full of confidence. And he knows even a Mike Kichima Angel and Uguti, Mangia and Awene Tize, Nzobeni Kitela is cut. We are Kata Namakona. How Sheva can net a sechel in temp against Amuneno Alemonata Mamma Bedi? Kiskosasula, <laughs> Well, looking back at the records of the outrun, of course, the first outrun was held in 1922. Arthur Newton running eight hours and 40 minutes. And then the first time we saw anybody get underneath the five and a half hour mark was when Bruce Fordyce ran 527.42 in 1988. It took 10 years before Dmitry Grishin broke that record and established a 526.25 in 1998. And then, of course, in 2000, it was Vladimir Kotov who did a 525.33. Will we see a new record? today well just in uh, I guess about uh, less than 10 minutes from now we'll be able to find out Ngandela lenzi zwe ke chima nga kona uwenzi lo msewe nzi nante siya mbona kukutika uibambi ile lento ufuna uwenza ama record ngoba elso lenzi ile lo kala ilo kuti aprike that record ea le tebin na 4 minutes ASB ili he will be the first person to break, he will be the second person to break the up and down run in Vagwa Prius. Gepa umuto yobasa ipete ngempela ye mungo ongoshe wazozonke yobegu uyena. Onzata Fela Chualo, Leonid Shetov. 
Canete, au 16 km, il a perdu le secret à la fin. Il a fait le palon à Cholo. Canete, il a fait le dit que le Kikouane a fait le chien qui a fait le chien. Il a fait le chien qui a fait le chien. Il a fait le chien qui a fait le chien. Il a fait le chien qui a fait le chien. Il a fait le chien qui a fait le chien. Il a fait le chien qui a fait le chien. Il a fait le chien qui o etsela di konko se ka nete hore e tle o tswalle mo lemo o philomba ha o tswalo ka monena leone tshetsop well just on two and a bit kilometers to go and you see the robots just ahead here and they have exactly two kilometers to go they're the robots two k's to go at the pace he's running around about uh, seven and, and uh, minutes and 20 seconds which we think is just inside the record it's not going to be easily inside the record it's going to be very close Shvetsov is really suffering now that long loping stride of his which has been dominant right throughout this race is starting to uh, not get any less weak but his face is showing the strain he's grimacing uh, you can see his shoulders dropping a bit and he's putting absolutely everything into breaking the record today it's going to be close five hours 25 minutes 33 seconds that's the record he has to beat but then uh, michael and tulan there's something i'm realizing when he was running the down run last year he looked very relaxed this time around he looks more tense Injalong and Pella Babas, Kumbulo, Oguti, Maukichi, Mausugala, and Marisbeck. We are a tagging, although with humidity, but we are running from the high altitude to the low altitude. The air is a bit thin. But when Mausuga Emma Etegwin Uzanapim Kumunzov, we are running towards the altitude to Kumbula Pelmatu Zanapa Wokoli. We should learn to learn the high altitude. The air is a bit thick. So learn to Yazago. Can't you put in our hills? They are challenging you man waba ukala nje ikombets lete winu ikale nga wa mahin and the lezo zinto zine effect in kulu gapo Oh, lovely overhead shot of uh, Shvetsov as he heads down towards the finish. That mark of 5.25.33 really is definitely on right now. Estimating about a 5.24, maybe even a minute off the time. But all he has to do is get underneath by one second and he will take home a large prize today. 250,000 Rand bonus on top, on top of the 220,000 Rand that he will win for, take home for the win. So almost a far, half a million Rand that he will win today if he gets this record. He goes around uh, the stadium at the top towards uh, the, down towards the stadium where we are at the Oval here in Peter Maritzburg. He's got about 1.6 km a mile to go and at that time of 5.25.33 is certainly under threat now. Gempela ngendle lakhe jima ngakhona ngiyenzeka alipuri record uma limhlulile le yomsula futhi ngemzuzwana ngenga ichaza ke le nto le kepha u awe futhi naye ngoba simbona ukuthi noma ejike emakhonini uyazama ukuthatha the shortest way uwenza ukuthi angasiluzi lesikhathi leso ngani ngokuthi around kakhulu kanti futhi nangendlela a driver ngakhona it's all up in his mind now psychologically he knows he's a true professional he knows exactly but if you want to run the record, you give everything that you have got. Come on, Sua Mang, Wa Khauleta, Munena, Wa Khauleta, Weta Ore, Nakuya Haye, Ike, Iske, Ike, 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 La Oval Cricket Oval, Yakuanuka, Peter Marisbeck, Kahare, who Mitsutu, Emishan, and Konamutu, who Mitsutu, Emma Shumabedi, Lee Horatechan Kofela, or Rafi Kakuano, Rekotuana, and Tibuti Fela Jalo, Kiawa, and Wana Sonsa. Oh, just a few couple of hundred meters now for Leonard Schwetz off already. The stadium here at the Oval is beginning to buzz with excitement. They're expecting to see the fastest time ever run in the 83 years of this Comrades Marathon on the up run. And it has been a dominant performance from Leonard Schwetz 39 years old Russian who lives a lot of, the, of his time in America and has operated as a doctor for many years. He's a professional now. He's had some drama. There it is, one kilometer to go. That's about three minutes and 50 seconds or 40 seconds at the pace he's going and that should just secure him it's going to be very very close by about a, by about a minute or so Ngendle log mela kichi menga kona manje le kilometer mele enze show ugutu ikichima nge sap 
3 minutes and 30 seconds ngoba mayehlulekile ke wenza le yomhlula ngempela le record and as so ngempela ukuthi kube ilaphana ngengathi kuzamazama ngabe ngiyenzile kepha ngiyabona ukuthi njengamanje nje endlela ke jima ngakhona uyabona ukuthi usemathubeni ukuthi angayenza hakisheba munena shetsof ikare ubata nyulo lasekhahla sahaye osale haufinyana osale haufinyana ka nete osale haufinyana lukena ka kwano but he's going to feel just a slight shade of the floral mile as he goes through the trees. This is the final step before he goes onto the grass of the oval here in Peter Maritzburg. And he's striding out now. He knows the record is definitely in with a chance. It's the stadium here. Now the strains of chariots of fire begin to echo out across the stadium as he heads towards the entrance to the stadium. And it's a wonderful feeling as he comes into the stadium. The record is going to be on the go. It's going to be the fastest time we've ever seen on the outrun of the Comrades Marathon and it's a 39 year old Russian who's going to claim the record today. Yes, Mpela and Sizo are waiting Mpela is within the record and the name Nenjela Umpa Konga Kong Yam Vumela Moba Giasela. They were born ever for a wonky Amanda Ake Uti Alto Lele record Baba. Uti Alto Lana or not Uguena Lena Cheso Fukena Tualo Ukatela Yona Flora Maila. <laughs> it is an unbelievable excitement here now. 5.25.33. Look at the time of the clock. 5.23.25. It's still going to be pretty close. We're not sure even close. It is going to be probably 30 seconds that he's going to get underneath the record. He ran 5 hours 20 minutes last year. Into the grass he comes. He looks at his watch. He knows he's got the record in sight. But his legs are hurting. Everything is hurting. And the crowd now will bring him home. He collects his flower to take through to the mayor. And uh, now we'll round the stadium to the applause of this very big crowd here at the Oval in Peter Maritzburg. Well, he just uh, breathes kisses to the crowd as he goes underneath the last minute scaffolding. Around the corner he will come. This majestic Russian who has run a 209 marathon. Never have we seen such a dominant performance from an athlete in the last two years. He came to this race as the big favorite. He is going to take home not only the first place prize, but he will take home a new record. Leonard Schwetzer from Russia, the winner of the 2008 Comrades Marathon. Well, not only today have you seen a wonderful piece of running from a great athlete, but you're seeing history in the making. Five hours and 25 minutes. It was five hours, 24 minutes. I think the record, the time was around about 5, 24, 23. We're just looking at the final results here and give you an official confirmation of that just now as he receives uh, the congratulations of all the dignitaries here waiting at the finish line. He collapsed across the line. And uh, now we'll see who comes through for second. It's going to be a, a break of about seven and a half minutes to second place.
play so dominant was Fritz off today. But uh, you can see every single ounce of that body has gone in to performing here today, Tulani. Professional, <laughs> Haula kanete kekira house na sekaja mawata tele atela mutela ruri sebe kizika chata wane no atliane shetofa rapulewe la kanete dwilina siri bilo lebu no this is a, a test against yourself <laughs> and he passed it with flying colors well it's very difficult to run a race of this nature and go clear he got clear of the field at about uh, probably 47 kilometers into the race and uh, ran by himself pretty much for the last 30 k's and uh, that's pretty tough when you know you're just chasing a record all by yourself you've got nobody to push you he has second place Yaroslav Yannicki he's got second before he's won this race before he walked up poly shorts but now he's looking like he's a solid Second, never Ama kilometre anga mashumi amanga makula matatu na mashumi amabili. We should to spend 22 hours to run a low distance. Lena ngempela ingani siya mbona ngende la driver na kona nankana. Ugutu kululegini. Ugutu aga fast njengo chat off. But ya mbona uguti ngota. It determination. Ina ayo. Into si ibonile futi la pana. Ugutu lende ote ang eki chimenga kone ipula i record. Nkuluma ngwa chat off. He was very dehydrated. You could see the way he drinks that electrolytes. Ugut really hasn't got much liquid in his legs. He just throw it and it all just goes down. But he deserves it. He has done well. How can she have money now? Elena, I need you. I'm not dealing with the mushroom. 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 Thirty-nine years. I'm not dealing with the mushroom. I'm not dealing with the peripheral. I'm not dealing with the mushroom. I'm not dealing with the mushroom. Stephen Muzungi, Muna Zimbabwe. Well, Steve Mazungi now lying in third place. He's chasing down Yaniki, grimacing all over his face. 32 years old, lives in Durban North, uh, resident, well, formerly from Zimbabwe. And uh, at the moment, he's really chasing quite hard. Yaniki is very tired indeed, the 41 year old from Poland. And Mazungi is giving it absolutely everything to try and catch him. The gap just on about uh, a minute at the moment. So anything can happen in the last two kilometers. Muzingi kushuti yoba alage o makelo ane wetu. Insizwe buya kona la e Zimbabwe. Eyo finisha ku top three ku comrades. Siabaza bafana bali e Zimbabwe o makelo ane. Kukutwa kichimara ke kuma marathon. Kanjalo na kuma half marathon. Patungatu kopu mlando futi na ena mshanje. Yokuche ngisa ukutiba ange ena na kona la e comrades. It's good to see athletes. Abase ko abama oba o makelo ane. Be kichimara ke ngani. Maybe bazo fundisa bafana. He's actually proud to run here in South Africa. You could see the way he wears that cap. Well, this is uh, Yerosa Vinicky's uh, 
well, almost certain to get a gold medal. It'll be his sixth gold medal in all the starts he's had. He ran his first Comrades Marathon in 1996, finishing 33rd. Then he was third in 97, and in 1999, his sole win on the down run in five and a half hours. His best performance on the up run has been second place in 2004, where he was behind uh, Vladimir Kotov. So, the Yaniki is certainly a man who's good for the down and the up run. He hasn't quite won the up run just yet. And at 41 years old, you'd say that his time of performing at the highest level must be running out. But after today, who knows? He might well be back and doing even better next year. Well, Kotov did it in late in his 40s. So anything is possible in this race. Ningai pigi sagana nelonto. Lensi zai kichima rakulu ama long runs. Speed session a a a slow la. Kushut magmele a kichima a win le race. I kati ogmele kichima ngazo. Fanege zibe slow anyana. Maziba fast in jengen zoba sponi le uchet off a kichima le skati le ante mutoa bana low chance. While well, wearing his uh, South African hat, which has become a feature of his running career for Yaroslav Yaniki whenever he run the Comrades Marathon. In fact, I think he's been running for the Mr. Price team pretty much from the start of his Comrades career. And uh, a very solid, likeable man, very humble in his approach to Comrades, often helps a lot of the South African runners with their training. And uh, today he is uh, moving into second place. The closest challenger to Svetsov today, but in the end, he's going to be almost eight and a half minutes behind Svetsov on the line. Gempela uwenzi lo umlando. Wokshia unta ngaya ake nge full two kilometers. Nkuluma nga uchetsof eshia la pana uyaniski. Uyaniski wazi ga shawit nampeli. Ngatu seif nje nga manje nga ba ungena kona la pa na epakin. Ezi zombona noma inini engena la stadium. Ezo kota kuo esbili. Akonye lo efuti na ngom komelo. Kichimi, Opume Isibil. Your Chabula Rakun, Mabamari Converter Leo Manileo, into Russian money. Believe me, it's a good man. In Sizwa, Yalena is in Babylon, Muzingi, Samona and the Lakichimanga Con, Uguti, which have little and funny as with the position at his age. Russian rubies. Well, there's third place, Stephen Mazingi. The gap uh, now is actually extended now, down to up to about three minutes. So Mazingi is definitely behind Yosin Yaniki now, and there's little chance that he's going to catch him in the last few moments. But a very solid race for Mazingi, 32-year-old from Zimbabwe. There's Oryk Korotanov. He's making the uh, turn into the last two and a half kilometers, the defending upfront champion. And uh, he'll be happy with fourth, fourth place today, although he won't be happy that he will have lost his upfront title. Musingi, Muna Omo Zimbabwe, Murokoto, Ota Tahuya Nakanete, Ota Tavela, Dikete, Tamashuma Rubedia, and Limitu Medical Fella, Muna Machalang, Muna Machalang, Sopa, Sir Mr. Price, Mamung Pili, Munane, Wa, Murasha, Hana Sopa, Sas Matelang, Kakwa, Nukona Mutu, Haile Mamma Bedi Munen, Wa Yaniki. Lena Matas of Mr. Price. Mr. Price can it. Hatun Lena Basimita Anta Holo can it. Hwasa Kari. I want to pass in Seba Ming Capili. The Garabatashe by Itaul is at the Lagajano. Livillo Labome. Kibo Namara by Mr. Price. Once in by Itaula, Fela Juanu, Opola, but I'm far more than in Ning in Pacano to Abasan Hulu and Utakaqua Limona. But I can only one in Ning from Mitsuinga by Emma Shume Amane. Well, there we go. For the last uh, kilometre, just over a kilometre now left for Yaroslav Yaniki. And it should be a, if you're in the lead of this race, the last kilometre is a complete breeze block. But uh, for a man who are in second place, it becomes a really tough part of this race. And those legs will be hurting. He knows that Mazingi is chasing him. And he knows he's going to have to keep on going. The gap's still big enough. But if he has to stop, if those legs give up or he gets any sort of cramp in this last uh, kilometer. So Mazingi is right in the right place to take him out in the last uh, bit. And he won't want that at this late stage of the race. 
Yandela u chatko faki chimenga kona si abona kuguti. Iskatsa ke si nga lewe mzuzi eli shumi. Parati wake no ilandela ismili. Kogu shutu ki chime fasting yandele manga lisayo maikweta nje ipoli shot ngale. Ngoba ebona kuguti le record ya ngalipula. Nange mpelu wakona ugiye nza leonto. Laba waki chime liki record. Ukseva nje position. Ngoba baz miti le record in handi. Well, there he is, into the floral mile for Yaroslav Janicki, the 41-year-old from Poland, who uh, regards himself as pretty much uh, three-quarters South African. He uh, runs and trains here a fair amount and spends a lot of his time here. Of course, Vladimir Kotov, the uh, Russian who has won this race on three occasions and is uh, looking to finish in sixth place today, is now a naturalized South African, living in Telbeview in uh, Cape Town. And uh, certainly a lot of these international runners love training and racing and staying in South Africa. So he's your neighbor. He's my neighbor, Vladimir. I know. But he runs past me every day. I know. 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 Akarante <laughs> Joloka Yaniki Akena Kare Hulepala Lena La Cricket Oval Kakwano Ka Amazka Om Sundose Pina Marisbeck Akonka my Mabedi Lim Metali Wakauta Muna Yasakia Kwai Laja Kwai Kanete Bilon Lena or Kanete Tane Muyata Nakana Kotoshe Anna La Tele Boman Pudi Kali Limonata Kalimo Senata Fela Ibilam Pudi Hamu Fela Kanete Empa Sakia Fele Tarabanata well, Yaroslav Yannicki, it's one of his slowest times on the outrun. His previous uh, slowest was a, a 5.34 when he finished in second place. Sorry, I take that back. He's actually run a 5.42 before. So he has run slow before. 5.38 is going to be around about 5 hours and 39 seconds for Yannicki, which is a great performance from a man that... Uh, people have often thought has run his best comrades so far and is uh, pretty much in the twilight of his career. Well, he's proved them wrong today as the pole is 41 years old. He's uh, just been beaten by a 39-year-old and you can guarantee he'll be back in 2009 to do even better. Then <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go to the house. 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 i well, that was an incredible finish there from Steve Mazingi. If he'd uh, pushed that pace probably from a two kilometers out, out, he might have well been in second place. But it was a real surge over the last uh, 800 meters. Here's Andre Kratonov. 
Looking a little bit worse for wear, but it's a great performance from the man defending the title he, uprun title he got in 2006. And the time there, 5.35. So he's a little bit slower than he was there, but uh, Korotonov is a really gutsy character down this lonely little stretch here of the Flora Mile. It's beautiful later on when you've got hundreds of runners around you, but he cuts a lonely figure amongst the sponsors' uh, balloons. Mike, there's something I've realized now. The guys that have come in, all four of them, the youngest of them is Muzingi. The winner is 39, second place 41, and uh, Karachinov 40. What's the story? The story is that if you're 38, you still you you're still got a couple of years before you hit your prime, especially in ultra-distance running. Yeah, certainly it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big topic. Uh, you look at the uh, performances of Vladimir Kotov, uh, 50 years old today, looking like he's going to finish in sixth place. Amazing for that. But certainly the older runners in the Comrades Marathon, they just have more endurance. They seem to be cleverer as runners. And uh, age definitely counts to some extent in your favor uh, as, you, as you run ultra-distance races. I like it when you say clever. Yeah, Tulan. Baba, we we can't say that now. We get funded in new show, new team. Uluazi, all in general, Lapa. Now, new Goba, Lolo Luazi, Lolo. We go to go train with Ganjani, we race with Ganjani, we we in. Zonke is in Pia Isela, this in Tolos. Mom Nan, Awara Fundi, Awara be more short, Ugu Tuzas and the Tolos. Marathon, Panago, we are born Ugu Tikinua, Amake, Safana, Nabo, Capre Selassie. But Tichimama World Record, Nama Half Marathon, Kanjalo, Nabo Paul Toka, and then Henry Paka Lagadi, Kapasia Mon and Jenna Manji, which Mama Marathon is doing very well. So the only way be prepared to learn in each and every race. Well, you got a love performance of Oli Korotona, 40 years of age. He goes a little aeroplane as he comes out of the finishing straight. He knows that uh, for him, fourth place is going to be good enough to bring the sponsors back to him next year. And he's going to take his fourth place with a lot of pride and joy. Two years ago, he was the champion over this course. And today he wasn't. He was never really in the reckoning. He's run a very measured race. But on a day when there was absolute carnage out there in the slipstream of uh, Shvetsov, he has done exceptional well and the defending uprun champion will be very proud and happy today yes this is a man who has run 100 miles in under 11 and a half hours on a flat flat track so that's a man who knows how to pace himself and there we are coming in now Gregory Merzen, the first representative from the new Ned Bank Club the club only just opened uh, this year and already had 350 Nedbank runners in this race. <laughs> Coming home, leading them home just under, uh, well, he's going to be just over five hours 43. An excellent, excellent performance. And yet he's come through from the back, Talani. He hasn't done this from the front. He's just paced himself well to be the first through. Bonilla about kitchen, every kitchen, Nalumpana, Lona, Owine race, with Baza Mill and Pella, Ugutibat Bam Racer, Candela, Abebe Kitchen, a corner, Yabona, Ugutum Seven, Wabonga, Lega, and Rasha, no less than the Bezens, a training. They were not able to make sure what really we can match these people. And he taught them a lesson. And the race, you run your own race, know what you have been doing, La Perisin. Over Mouzoza, La Utufugenza, La, learn to write both Lugenza. Zongena and King, say one in Togas, the Pella La Panaz, let in Togas, the baby men, on Bona Angela, Echimana Corner, with Inogi Bambele and Pella La Pana, the now Elana, Togas and Spin, the Smanga Lisa, and Oba Zonking King, Epeganazo, and my parrot Neris, is a parrot, you corner Lisa Kitchen, Cantifuti Pambing, it don't have a sister with a Landel, and Obama Landel, who's of Tola Tatian. Yeah, no, it's don't have family. Get bangers and pen up with Umuntu only men. Avo, the Ashia Bantu, Ebana, Limalana, psychologically, she's stronger than the rest of the athletes. Oh, there we are. <laughs> just come out the top of Polly's. Both of us very excited about this race. It's been, it's had its interesting parts with Tatiana shadowing the twins virtually the whole way. She's gone, and now Elena, the person who fell twice in this race seems to be the one that's going to make uh, make the break and take the win this year that's an exceptionally good performance a bit slower than we expected mike but i think that's because earlier on they stuck together when elena's style and stride 
was being hampered from the, the two falls. Well, she's a real road warrior, is uh, Negelieva, especially Elena. We've seen her today come through some pretty uh, traumatic stuff with falling on the road, and she fell twice in the first 40 k's of this race. I don't know quite how they operated this uh, when they finished the last of this these ultra-distance races, because do one of them decide they're going to let the other one go? It's obviously significant that we're going to see Elena winning, because that will be her third up-run uh, title that she's won which is a very significant uh, title indeed. Into, uh, I think it is uh, seventh place. It looks like Nkise, uh, who's going to finish through. No, it's not. We're just going to check out his number coming into the top ten. And we'll bring his name very soon. Heavens Mokhadi. There we go. The man who won the Forever Results Lost Cop Marathon early this year. Into, uh, looks like a sixth place. We were expecting to see Vladimir Kotov coming through in sixth, but he's not coming through there. So this has been a great finish from Mokhadi. Excellent pacing. And another from the Nedbank Club who really weren't expected to produce anything here today. Helen, that's actually been uh, an exceptional race coming from way outside the top ten. I think it's been a day that's lent itself to people coming through from the back who have sort of run just a, a good steady pace. I, th I mean, we've just seen many people just fall off. We've seen a lot of stars not coming through. Um, we're still waiting for Vladimir Meokotov to come in and um, hopefully a couple more South Africans for the top ten. Right. Part of that was due to the blistering pace that Svetsov started off at, which would have pulled the, uh, the people who were trying to follow him through. He pulled them forward to a pace that probably wasn't realistic for them. And uh, it's the people that took control of their own running early on that have now come through into the top ten. Well, Mokhari now into the final straight here. He has had a great year so far. Number 47411 is his name, is his number. And he has come literally from nowhere to take the sixth position here. He won the uh, Forever Results Lost Cup Marathon earlier this year in pretty uh, exciting fashion. And he's absolutely delighted with this because he was, uh, he really wasn't tipped to be a major contender here today, specifically after his performances earlier this year. But he has refreshed himself, he's recovered, and now he's a second Ned Bank runner home, and he's in sixth place overall. And Mike, it is such, it is so important to realize how comfortable this guy looks at the end. And that's a sign of good pacing. The guys that are struggling at the end are the guys that were pushing early. The guys that came through at the end with a smile on the face are the guys who have paced themselves properly. And you'll see Schwetzhoff again did a negative split, and this man has done a negative split as well. Well, looking down, it looks like uh, this might be in Kizi now in seventh place. Just have a look at uh, Nori, who knows the local runners pretty well. Um, Sindisi Mkize, who was the leading South African last year in uh, third place, he's going to finish seventh today. And a great run from him, very solid and very consistent. Indeed, and he's uh, coming here to be a bit disappointed with third. He did have, uh, uh, sorry, he was a bit disappointed with his position because he did have third in mind. And uh, even better, he was hoping to go for the win. But it's still a very, very good run today. Lovely to see these athletes crossing the line and just being absolutely delighted with their performance. And uh, a big smile on Kizzi's face. This is a young man who has a huge amount of potential. This maybe is a former or a, a future Comrades champion. He's getting expertise. Here's Vladimir Kotov at the age of 50. He's going to get a gold medal, is the road warrior from Western Province. And he, former Polish runner, he's run in the colors of Russia before. He's finished 10th Olympic Games. He finishes it in uh, eighth place here in 2008. And I tell you what, if I can run anywhere near that time when I'm the age 50 or within three hours, of that's an amazing, amazing achievement from Vladimir Kotov. As, as a 50-year-old, I can tell you, this is an amazing, amazing uh, performance. But he went overseas. It had, he'd been injured the previous year, and he went overseas, spent 80 days specifically training for this. And uh, the word was that he was producing times that he hadn't produced for 10 years. Years. and he certainly did it today he certainly made uh, a phenomenal I think he will have decimated the 50 year old record in fact I would think that is the sort of performance the sort of comeback that uh, could be ranked with Wally Hayward's comeback in 1950 absolutely and he's been congratulated by the dignitaries as Johan he's going to take uh, the ninth uh, place we're going to wait for number 10 as well
round out the goals. But Helena has been, I mean, it's, it's difficult to kind of dwell on the eighth place finish here, but Vladimir Kotto's performance today, one of the highlights of the day. It's remarkable, and I think he's, what is, he's a popular athlete. He's come to South Africa, he's lived here, he's endeared himself to the local people, he's supportive, and I think the, the crowds do look at him as a South African, as one of the local um, runners, and he, I think he would have enjoyed plenty of support today. Body on stays in the young man uh, who will, uh, I guess, will be taking, we're just trying to work out exactly, Hermans Makhadi, I think, is from Lesotho, and uh, that means that uh, Vladimir Kotov will take home the title as the first South African. Am I wrong? Yeah, Makhiz will. Makhizi, there we go, Makhizi sorry, I'm taking back. Coast. Correct, correct, he is going to be first South African, you're right. And the interesting point with Makhizi is he doesn't race that often, but when he does race, he makes it count. And if more runners would do that, more South Africans would be in the top. But we're waiting now for the 10th goal, the last goal. <laughs> we, we, I don't know, do you know who it could be? Yeah, I'm, I've got goose place all over me. We understand it could be someone local well, as well. I'll tell you who I'm hoping for. The great legendary William Tolo was in that position at, uh, a few moments ago in the race, early on in the race. So we're hoping to see these figure as he comes around the stadium. It'll be a marvellous performance from William Tolo, who in 1989, can you believe it, finished second behind Sam Sobalala in his first Comrades Marathon. So it just shows you how long he's been running for. He's won the 1992 New York Marathon. He's been one of the stalwarts of South African running. And uh, I guess we're all really hoping it's going to be him we're going to see. Well, Mike, I've got some bad news for your stats there because in fact William Matolo ran uh, in the early and mid 80s one marathon uh, his first comrades marathon and we're just getting closer to oh, I think it's him it, it is I think it's him it's William, William Tolo can you believe it he looks as though he's coming in here on a Sunday run this is That's where fantastic. he used to he used to train with Richard Turnbull back in the mid and early 80s um, and this man came into uh, running he did his first comrade Helen I think he did a six uh, 615 or something round about there uh, and uh, he then gave it a break he went on and became twice the SA marathon champ he ran a 20815 one of the fastest in the world and uh, he was never recognized he came second in 1989 to Sam Schlabalala and he couldn't walk anywhere without being asked for his autograph. I'm going to ask Helen just to add something. I know Helen is dying to say something here. Helen, just to introduce her, has been harping over Lee a lot with his training. This is an emotional time for Lee, I'm sorry, for anybody who supports him. Well, it, it, not so much as training, but we've just been friends for 20 odd years and um, I just think this is unbelievably special. So. Well, there he is. This is and, a uh, great week for him. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame only two nights ago. I know that touched him emotionally. And uh, Willie Matolo, a great, great favorite. <laughs> well, carry on. I think everybody here, he lives near Maritzburg. He's, he's lived here, he's worked here, he's run here, he's popular, he's well known. The crowd out there are just going unbelievably crazy. And he deserves it. It, it says he's tried comrades quite a few times recent years, hasn't necessarily met with the result that we, he would have liked and today he's done that top 10 performance just Unbelievable. fantastic and, and the big thing here is this year he ran his own race and Willie should have won comrades I mean you can say but you know Willie had the potential of running and winning comrades many times but he tended to follow other people and run their races today he ran his own and Fantastic. And well, this is a man who has um, who has opened up about three development clubs around the country. He puts back so much into the sport. Well, this is why Fakini just giving a big <laughs> yeah. hug. She'll be relieved, she'll be happy, and a very, very proud lady. And well done, because she just supports Willie through everything. And Fakili has worked at the Comrades Marathon. She's worked for Kwazulu Natal Athletics. That is a, an awesome pair um, and of people I, committed to athletics. I, I must say, the other night, too, uh, when we were announcing the names of the Runswell Hall of Fame athletes, and uh, William Solo was uh, one of the people inducted, one of three. And uh, one of the comments that we got from the people in the tribute to him was uh, from Ray DeFries, his former manager, who just described him as uh, not only a great runner and a great statement, statesman, but a great South African. And he really is like that. He's been an amazing ambassador for this country over the years. He's been an amazing ambassador just for KwaZulu Natal itself. He's been a, one of those people who's
who's stayed in the province. He's worked tirelessly to help uh, younger runners working in rural areas, and it's been an amazing performance for him. So, William Solo, well done today. You have certainly got the support, and there's a lot of emotion just in this little commentary box seeing him coming through in 10th place today. Well, they say this is the unluckiest place, position number 11, no gold medal, no prize money, but you've still put in a remarkable performance. So it's Helen, a brave run around the track. May, that may be, and it's a bit, it's been softened a bit by the Wally Hayward Medal, which is awarded to 11 and all those that make it under six hours. Wally Hayward being the first man to break uh, six hours in the downrun comrades. So there'll be very few of those coming through, Mike. Uh, a Wally Hayward medal is limited on one hand normally, so it will be interesting to see how many we get today, and it will be an indication of the strength and depth of this race. Well, I do apologise. We're battling with our computer, so we're just trying to get the name and the number here of this 11th place athlete, and uh, it's a shame that we can't bring him home, but it's uh, lovely to see him finishing here. And... Uh, 11th place, well, it is, as you say, softened by that Wally Hayward medal, but 11th place is just one of those uh, absolutely unbelievable goals of just achieving that 11th medal. And the time for their last top 10 and uh, 11th position actually hasn't improved that much over the years, um, but it's going to be, and it is hot out there already, so... Uh, I think that's had a, an effect, Mike, where we've seen people that have gone out just a touch too hard and they've fallen off and blown a bit. Well, it was, in fact, Bully or Petle, who uh, was the man who... I don't know how we didn't recognise him because he was the man who was really taking on Shvetsov when Shvetsov made his big move. He was fifth at the two oceans this year. He gets 11th place here and when he was getting knocked around by Shvetsov um, at the earlier part of the race, we didn't fancy his chances of finishing anywhere near the top 20. So it's been a marvellous performance from, from Raputi over the last 30 Ks. Amazing what a hat can do. <laughs> I think what is interesting, if we look at the... We've got... Vladimir Kotter, 50 years old, getting a gold medal. We've got youngsters in their mid-20s, a span of over 25 years. We've also got a time bracket of over 30 minutes with the top 10 guys. So... Well, here's number 12 coming around the uh, stadium. I'm just trying to get a name for him. One of the early leaders, I think, did fairly well. I think this might be... Uh, we'll watch him as he comes around the corner. And uh, another Mr. Price runner making this final sprint towards the end, 3776. And uh, we'll just pick up his number for you very quickly and bring him home. And uh, Mikhailaya Situba, who uh, we haven't seen in any part of this race, picks up 12 spot. That's a great performance from him. And uh, running for the Mr. Price Club in Pomalanga, 24 years old. And he takes 12th place here today underneath the magical six hour mark. So he'll get a Wally Hayward medal. Looks like uh, number 49176. Gonna check out as well. Lots of Mr. Price runners we haven't seen pretty much for most of this race are kind of uh, coming through. And it's uh, Pilani Mamela who uh, enters the stadium. And the 35 year old uh, going for his, uh, I think his third medal here at the Comrades Marathon, 13th place for him. A Durban-based runner, which I think the local people always benefit from, just a little bit more support, and um, and it's just good for encouraging all our youth who live in and around Durban and Peter Maritzburg. Um, I think it's I think it's quite interesting to see how those positions between sort of eight and uh, 20 have changed so dramatically in those last final kilometers. And it again, and I'm sorry to be uh, pushing this point, but it again shows just how important it is to get to the last third with the energy to do the damage. And I'll virtually uh, wager that all of those guys have run faster second half. Negative splits, as we call it. Well, we've got some news from the road that the leading ladies are just uh, four kilometres away from the finish, so they're making that uh, climb up Jesmond Road, or just uh, about to climb up Jesmond Road. As far as we know, Elena Negelieva is still in the lead here, having fallen and hurt her knee early on. We thought she might be a doubtful starter, uh, or doubtful finisher, shall I say, but now she's going for her third uprun title in a row. 5.59.37.
and uh, Mimela will take home a Wally Hayward medal today. And the reason Dave Dixon, the chairman, is standing in front of that banner, there there will be a cut-off gun for Wally Hayward medal. And as I say, the great Wally Hayward, five times winner, um, sets his first medal in uh, as a 20-year-old and came back in 1950 as a 45-year-old and won the race. Quite a comeback, kid. And the first man to get the silver, just turning that corner there. <laughs> well, having the first silver isn't too bad. It is lovely that the little Wally Hayward uh, medal it just gives a chance for the really great runners to get a very special medal outside those golds. And that will be the first time of uh, four times that uh, Dave Dixon will fire the gun here on Comrades Day 2008. Busi Sukela will get home the full sil first silver. I think you're pretty proud of that finishing uh, just outside that uh, Wally Hayward mark. But it has been a day of highlights. If you've uh, been silly enough just to join us now, we can uh, Leonard Spetsov was the overall winner, just uh, breaking the record of Vladimir Kotov. And we've just seen William Toller taking home the 10th gold medal in an emotional way for South Africa. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with you uh, shortly after this break. Bonita's Medical Fund. Serious about what you need. If you could see your heart, would you take better care of it? Flora. The pulse behind the Comrades Marathon. You may not see germs. But they are everywhere. Regular soaps don't eliminate all the germs you're exposed to every day. New Dettol Active Soap has the goodness of Dettol to give you superior protection from all germs, keeping you fresh all day. Dettol, be 100% sure. Superior protection now in a new range. The body has many different yet equally important parts. The eye cannot say, I am more important than the hand because I see. The finger cannot say, I am more useful than the foot because I handle things. When one part hurts, the whole body is affected. And when it is healed, every part finds relief. Like the body, we find ways to make complicated processes simple. Bonitas Medical Fund. Serious about what you need. Welcome back to Comrades 2008. The men's race is over and done with. Leonard Schwetzoff, a new record holder in the outrun, his second victory in a row. Back to the ladies' race, and that is second place, Olesa Negelieva, and she is chasing, or is uh, probably being dropped, by her sister, Elena Negelieva, who has had a torrid time today in uh, getting the victory, but she is now heading for her third victory in the outrun, Helen. A fantastic performance and, and her fourth victory overall, if I'm not mistaken. She's won some down runs as well. So not quite as quick as her previous runs, but it really does not matter. It's, it, it's the win that counts. I think it's a little bit more important, the record. She's running quite strongly, um, seems to have recovered from any anything that she might have felt from the fall. Um, and it has been quite an, it's been an interesting race because we've seen her sister also drop back at one stage. We thought that she would not kind of make it um, through into the, the top positions. And you can see her stride is a bit uh, labored on one side, on her left side. And if you look at that knee, you can see the blood there and it's run down the leg. She's run a really, really fantastic race. She's got 2.5 kilometers left to go and she's in great control. So we're looking at about a two, uh, 6 14 um, time for today, and that's excellent. But, well, we, we uh, just, uh, she said it at the pre race, uh, pre race interviews. I've run two records, two ups. I don't see why I can't make it three. <laughs> well, I just wanted to, uh, sorry, interrupting you there, Nari, but just amazing to see uh, that we saw Sipo and Gomani that she just went past. Uh, Sipo right up there with the men's leaders and one of the big favorites from a South African perspective, but uh, already been overtaken by the ladies' leader. So, a little bit disappointing for uh, Sipo and Gomani in 2008. Well, if you remember where he was when uh, he was running with Spetsov, 
and we were saying he's a 2.14 and Spetsov's a 2.09 uh, marathoner. Um, that's the problem of pushing too hard. But this lady and her twin, they know how to pace this immaculate. And I'd say that it was slower this year, Helen, because of that fall early on. And that's why Tatiana was with her, because the overall pace uh, was slower and they were able to take control. Yeah, I think the pace was definitely a lot slower than what they would normally like to go out and do because as we've seen when we had the interviews with them, they were very, very confident of their fitness. They felt that they'd done everything that had been required, A, to win the race and possibly to get the record. But the win for them is the most important. They've come here, they've done that. And I think it's important to note that in the, of the last six Comrades Marathon up and down, Alana and uh, Alicia have won five of those six. And I don't think we'll see a sister or, or, or a family or a stronghold on the race again like this. And they will continue to come back and dominate this race. This is not the last that we'll see of them. Well, one of the comments that I found quite, um, quite nice at that interview was that Alicia was asked, what happens if you don't uh, win? She says, I won't cry if I don't win. You know, it yeah. will be my sister. <laughs> Well, just looking at Elena's record in the uh, Comrades Marathon, second in two oceans this year. Alessia was the one that won it, and uh, that was a big surprise because Elena was often seen as the better ultra-distance runner. Alessia has been spending a few years concentrating very much on her marathon performance and, in fact, missed out on Comrades in two oceans a couple of years ago to focus on international marathons. But uh, it hasn't done her any good today, although one might argue that uh, the the uh, emotional and the record of having three up runs might well have been enough for her to allow her sister to move away and uh, win this race. It has been a very brave performance. She has uh, fallen. We've seen blood streaming down her left knee. We see her saw her fall again and also blood coming out that little right knee as well. She looks like she's been in a, a Springbok rugby test rather than in a Comrades Marathon. But she's overcome it all and uh, now she heads towards the finish and she's uh, probably about 10 minutes away at the moment. Yes, just over a kilometre and a half to go and running with a, a clockwork stride. And she knows she's got it. All she's got to do is just maintain that pace. Go down past the old Harry Gwala Stadium. That was a previous finish when Bruce Fordyce set that, uh, his up run. Um, so it's about a kilometre longer than the Fordyce up run and about... Um, about half a kilometre shorter than the one to Scottsville. I think what is quite interesting with uh, Alicia and Alana is that they make no bones about it, that they are professional athletes. They come to South Africa to win these races. The money is important to them. It's their, what they, their income, it's what they live on. And um, as far as the women's race, they're certainly the most professional athletes that we've ever yeah. entertained here. Helen, they, uh, they also have off seasons and they go and do cross-country skiing and so on which takes away from the impact which is why they're able to do the high mileage and high distance in a week when they're building up for a main race so they become very focused and they will plan goals ahead and perhaps we need to learn from that in this country well just looking at the, the record that she has in this race Ilana Elena Negolieva first in 2003 her first uh, Comrades Marathon. Then she was first in 2004, third in 2005, first in 2006, and second in 2007. Never has she been outside the top three in the history of her Comrade starts. And that is an absolutely amazing record for this young lady. And uh, that, a lot of runners look at her and they say, well, she doesn't look like a runner. She's not this lean, sort of mean athlete that we often see at the top end of marathon fields. But what is so amazing about these athletes is that they have a very economical stride. They keep their strides very low to the ground. You see that she's not lifting her legs up very high. She doesn't waste any energy moving forward. And uh, she just keeps on going. And uh, that is exactly why she's so consistent over these sort of distances. She's taken on what South African throw at her today. We saw Faro Amenta and Rihanna van Niekirk um, giving her a bit of a go early on in the race. Tatiana Sokova as well, setting the pace through halfway, trying to push her. But she's responded to every single ounce of attack today as Elena Negolieva. And uh, despite all of that, she now leads this race by a healthy margin. And the time we recommend it will probably be somewhere around uh, 6.15. Uh, for her race today, which will uh, probably be, well, will be her slow 
slowest uprun time. Coming down now, down past uh, the old Harigwala Stadium, one kilometer to go. Uh, she's going to go into the Mayor's Walk, which of course is the Florida Mile, and down into the stadium, 500 meters from the gate of the Mayor's Walk into the finish. And uh, it's a very comfortable sort of run in from here. In fact, we can't even see her sister behind, so her sister's going to be a, probably a couple of minutes off. And like the men's race, the, the top 10 women are going to be a very, very spread out. In fact, a little bit more than the men's race. At the moment, we have only got results of the top five women. And between the first and the fifth lady, there is a time span of 20 minutes, which is quite considerable. Incredible to see the gap time gaps. In fact, there was something like uh, 12 minutes between 6th and 10th place at one stage. Rihanna van Niekerk and uh, Carol Mercer down in 10th place. So the gaps between the ladies' race are absolutely enormous. And it just shows you the level of competition, particularly from the international runners. Elena Leglieva into the glory miles now. She'll just uh, turn the short bend. This is the first part of the tree that gets a bit shady here. A bit of coolness before they hit the stadium. And I must say, there's one thing about this little stadium here at the Oval. It's a wonderful little atmosphere they have here. It's a very small stadium. The crowds pack in. It's very close as you come round the final finishing straight. And it really is a lovely feeling coming into the stadium for comrades. And as we can see, it's absolutely a magnificent day here in Peter Maritzburg. I think if um, anyone lives near this area, it's actually worth popping down and getting in the spirit out the outside, the crowd cheering them in. It's very, very, very special. Well, the crowd's already here, uh, but there's still space for everyone to come along. It's a stunning day out here, but it's not going to be stunning for the runners because that's going to heat up. That tarmac is going to start heating up and it will go up to about 35 degrees before the end of this race. And uh, entering into that Florida mile, she's going to come into this beautiful long uh, downhill through the mayor's walk and then comes in round the stadium. And that running round the stadium actually sees consider con feels considerably longer than the 250 odd meters that it actually is. Um, there's a sign on the uh, final bridge that says 100 meters to go and that is probably the one of the longest 100 meters in the whole race well it's, that's a very lovely area lots of the uh, spectators particularly the families of runners competing all stand by the side of this road as they uh, go down the floral mile it's a very really shady little area nice bit of grass they can sit on but it's not going to be where elena negalieva is going to be worried too much now she heads down this uh, floral mile this magnificent stretch of road she's alone she's got nobody around her though even not even any men to distract her from her finish here today and uh, she's just absolutely moving down and looking brilliant looking comfortable that stride metronome and it's making and uh, she just never seems to falter it is a fourth comrades win can you believe it three now on the up run isn't that ironic that she comes in here by herself and yet early on and that knee is probably caused by 20 30 runners all bunching around her where are they now <laughs> where are they now and there's a lesson there and I think we need to start thinking uh, in the sport, in these sort of events, how do we give some sort of protection to the ladies? Uh, because they get the television coverage, there are too many people running around for that television coverage and getting in the way of them. And this could possibly have been a record if it hadn't been for her calls. Well, whatever, whatever happened to her early on in the race, she certainly made up for it and she's put in a very, very impressive performance. And I think if we recall when she went through halfway, we predicted a time of around 6.16. She's actually picked up, run a very, very strong, comfortable second half. Looks fantastic and is, um, I don't know, we're not going to see too many other people winning such consistent Comrades Marathons. Well, you only run as fast as you need to in the Comrades Marathon. She's run 6.09.24 in 2006, the second fastest time ever in this race. In fact, it was the fastest time and uh, now she comes around the bend. It's going to be her slowest up victory but this lovely lady and she really is a sweet lady from Russia. 
comes around the corner here. She waves to the crowd. She's a big favorite here is Elena Negelieva. She's going to take her third Comrades Uprun win and victory. It is a wonderful performance. It's been measured. It's been brave against all adversity, against falling. And she takes the 2008 Comrades Marathon and along with it, her fourth title. And that is one of the most dominant performances we've seen from her in many years. And I guess she'll be back next year to repeat and repeat and repeat. And she'll be now waiting for her sister and I think she'll be quite relaxed to know that she's quite firmly in second place and here she comes around the track very very close these two, two girls and I think what is I think the fact that they are twin sisters the South African public actually are far more aware of them they're, talk, they're always on everybody's lips they seem to always say well are the, are the goals running whereas I think a lot of the other overseas runners tend to sort of fade into being quite anonymous but these the Nerglieva sisters have really sort of made a mark on and an impression on South Africa their domination is as great now going towards Bruce Fordyce's domination of the of the race in the 80s and uh, they've made they've made that attachment to South Africa. I know uh, that uh, Kieran Walker, our co-commentator, will be down there on the line and uh, there is a big bond developing between the twins and a number of the people here. And they really are lovely ladies initially when they came to South Africa. There she is, crosses the line in second place, Alessia Negelieva, and a victory for one is a victory for both. They always say that, they decide as they uh, get into the final few kilometers who's feeling the strongest. Today was Elena, earlier this year we saw Alessia winning the Two Oceans Marathon, so they've shared the prizes amongst the top ultra distance races in South Africa and in the world. There's Tatiana Sokova coming into the final straight here, she's done very well, she really has tried her damnedest to beat the Negeliava sisters today. She's won this race before, today she's going to finish third, and it really has been a very brave performance from this veteran. I think we must fa thank her because she actually made this race. Otherwise, it would have just been the Nurgli Ava sisters who was going to be the one that it w would come through first. And thank you, Tatiana, for making it a little bit more exciting, a bit more interesting, and throwing down the challenge to these other girls. Helen, do you think she threw that challenge down just a bit too early and maybe um, if she'd left it a bit later and just carried on her shadowing, could it have been a bit closer, do you think? Possibly. I mean, she certainly did try to push the pace, which was quite brave, but I think it is. Be she may have felt comfortable to do that because the initial stages of the race, the pace wasn't as quick as it has been in previous years, and it may have given her that confidence. I think it's a, uh, a great result, great piece of running, and really, you know, we say closer, but she's only... She's less than two minutes behind at the present moment. That's that's close in an ultra of this distance. Absolutely. But uh, I have a feeling it could have been even closer um, if if it should not push just quite as soon um, going down into Drummond and then again uh, around the Cato Ridge area. Well done, well done, Tatiana Sokova then into third place. She's the first non Negelieva to finish today. And uh, she's in third place. She collects her ribbon and her drink from the sponsors. She's also a lovely, sweet lady. Although most of the time we can't hear what she, she says because of her Russian. She doesn't speak a word of English. But uh, she really is very sweet. And she'll be back, I'm pretty sure, next year. Um, she took it on to the Negelieva sisters. She gave it absolutely everything. Whether her tactics were right or wrong, she's got big guts. Absolutely, and it's her fifth gold medal. She's um, got a very good record at Comrades Marathon. It's her third third place in this race. Um, but if we look, she's got you know, three third places, a first and a fifth place. So I think many people would like to be able to have that track record in this race. Oh, there it is, all red and white and all Russian. And uh, a real trio of great ultra marathon runners. Well, with the ladies uh, now posing for the cameras, we'll take a short break. Be back with further action after this. That's a very long 255 meters that he's stacking here. I can assure you that his legs aren't doing the work. The crowd is just carrying him through. And I think he's, if he's not suppressing a tear now, he just ain't human. And when he sees that finishing line, I'm sure you will see tears in his eyes. Well done, Nick Kester. Een jaar daar op ingesteld was, dus ons mentaal het schoven. Bij de handen vreemd is het om die aan die kamerads te winnen. Hij heeft hier aan die ultraman deel van hem mee. En nu komt hij in die peilvak 
Die laatste 50 meter, een baie gewilde winner. Ons onthou van dit jaar, toe hy tiende gekom het, het hy gesê, ek dank die heren. En hier is Nick Bester, die winner van die jaarse kamerits. 5 uur, 40 minuten, 52 secondes. Nie amtelijk nie, wat ongeveer die tijd is, wat Bruce Fordyce van dit jaar gehad loop het in die opwit. Netcare 911 is the official medical partner for the Comrades Marathon Association. is born with a unique set of talents. What are you doing with yours? Reebok, your move. Right, Marina Mislanova flying in fourth place. And uh, she's got somewhere to go still, probably close on four kilometers, Nuri, and uh, way behind. And uh, certainly she's uh, looking like she's uh, going to be in fourth. Yeah, she's definitely in fourth place. And... Um, we're going to see how what sort of time she does, but uh, about two k's away, according to Nori, but uh, still way off the leader. But a uh, very solid performance from Michelinova. Yes, Michelinova is actually just on Alexander Road, and there's a farmer mentor coming up, Polly Shorts, or just actually down Polly Shorts, and she's actually still looking pretty, pretty strong, pretty reasonable. You can see it's it's hard going, but. You know, she's going to keep that pace going through to the finish by the looks of it, Helen. She's, she's putting in a solid performance, but I, I think she will be disappointed because she was quite confident. She felt that she could go out with the Nurgliava sisters. She was confident that she was in the shame, same shape when she ran 6.18 on the uprun um, four years ago. And any athlete, that is disappointing, but still remarkable to hang in there very gutsy performance and just just come on through because she might still be the first south african well in fact uh, we know that rihanna van Eekirk is in sixth position uh, but we don't know what she looks like we haven't seen her for quite some time so you know there could be a good battle going on there and uh, maybe we'll manage to get a, a a bike back to have a look at that at some stage well, at the moment on our computers that we get uh, feedback from spotters out on the route, it is confirmed that Fanny Kirk, who initially led Faro Mento, and then Mento uh, overtook her and had the lead on her, and then it looks like she's taken it back. So a real fight for the top South African position in this field. And uh, Ms. Ndisi Mkizi, of course, is the first South African home in the men's event in uh, seventh place. And that really is a very uh, important prize because there are awards and prize money available for those athletes who finish among the top South Africans. But Michelinova now, the Russian from uh, almost 40 years of age and a uh, very solid performer, not a particularly fast marathon runner, but a very solid measured performance from her today. Well, when we said earlier on, it looked as though she was just going to maintain the pace. That was because she was climbing up out of Jesmond and the angle just wasn't letting us spot exactly where it is. But now she's just coming in towards to the turn. She'll make a left-hand turn, then a right to go down past Harigwala and... Uh, She's actually looking very much in control. And she will also be um, obtaining her fourth gold medal at Comrades. She's got a very good history with the race. Um, she's become fifth on two other occasions and sixth. So um, for, I think it'll be her first time she's come fourth, her highest position. Yep. Yeah, she look, I mean, steps. that's, uh, that's one, short of, uh, one short of a green number. Because if you get five gold medals, you get your green number. That's one of the three ways you can get your green number. And it would seem that she may improve. I think she'll definitely improve on her previous up run, which was um, 6.38.51. So in all lessons, she should be very happy with her performance. 
6th, 5th and 5th for uh, Medina Mishanova. And uh, she now heads down into the last thing. This is now some of the ladies coming up through Polly Shorts somewhere behind. Not quite sure who that is. It looks like one of the ladies. But uh, it's definitely inside the top 20 amongst the ladies, I guess. And uh, a bit of a walk. I think that's Leslie Train from Boxburg. She's looking behind it. She'll be anxious. She is sitting, I think, in 10th position. Um, and now that, to me, is a comrade spirit and the spirit of adversity that we were talking about. She's clearly tired. She's been up in the sixth position earlier on. And now someone's saying to her, come on, let's get going. Don't stop now. You can do it. And that is what it is about. Because I think we all know psychologically, when you're running the up run of comrades, you kind of put in your head that once you've crested the top of Polly Shorts, you, you've really just got your home and hose. You've got 8Ks or 7Ks to go. You've got a little bit of a dip, but it's just that huge psychological factor that you're over the worst of the hills. You're, look at her running now, and she's got that rhythm, and she's running. But as you say, she's been going backwards through the field. She was up in sixth or seventh position. She's now gone back. So it's demoralizing to have other people passing you. And that's put her into 10th and then the hill and so on and so forth. And she just needs to conquer that. And it, what's going on right now is weighing up. Is that pain, is that discomfort worth the reward? Can she make it happen? And that's what's actually going on in her head right now. And the more people come along and say to her, you can do it, you can do it, the more she will get going. And as you say, Helen, once she gets over that, there's that drop down and we'll see the same reaction. We'll see that same thing happening again as she climbs up to Washington Road and probably in Jesmond. And we've had it confirmed that that is 10th position. And there's a smile. Now, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. There is a comrade spirit really being uh, carried out for us. Well, she's a secretary and a personal assistant. She comes from uh, Boxburg. She's 34 years of age. And I can tell you last year that she finished in 13th position amongst the ladies. So if she can get into the top 10 here and get a ladies gold, that would be an amazing achievement. She is not a professional athlete. Runs for a little club in Boxburg. Well, I won't say a little club, but uh, certainly one of the non-professional clubs. And uh, she's over the top of Polish shorts and let's face it pretty much everybody walks at some point up poly shorts you know, even the top guys we saw uh, Yaroslav Yanicki walking up poly shorts so as Helen was just saying a few moments ago now that big hurdle is over she can just keep her pace going through and a top 10 would be a really amazing performance from somebody who's competing against the best in the world. Mike you know I'm glad you mentioned that because when the athletes I coach I actually encourage them to walk in places up poly short because it there's no point in going up there and taking your heart rate sky high you've still got seven kilometers to go and if you look at the um history now this Le leslie train is an inspiration to any person sitting out there of starting this race and running if we look at her history um she's finished position 5128 she has run uh, it looks like about eight comrades and here she is potentially finishing in the top 10 and i think what is she just is a regular person she's got a job she runs for recreation and here she is doing so well and so that hope that inspires many people who are sitting out there watching this race that can they do it yes you can just a little bit of patience and tenacity and you can be there. Well, back uh, at the Oval in Peter Maritzburg and uh, the crowd's beginning to fill up. They've welcomed home, to all, welcome, welcomed home all the leaders and we're seeing the top 20, top 30 men coming through at the moment. And it looks like uh, Mr. Nova is coming through now. Or is it? Let's see if we can catch up. Looks like it, she is. She's done very well into the last mile. And the fourth lady home, Medina Mishlanova. And uh, she will take home a gold medal for her. Lots of South Africans behind her. The first South African, of course. That's the big question. Is it going to be De Villiers or is it going to be Faramenta? And uh, we'll be waiting for that in the next half an hour or so. Rihanna, Rihanna Vinikirk uh, is, of course, the person who was um, in first place for most of this race. So we'll be seeing whether or not Farber has managed to uh, gain back that position for the seventh time. It's interesting to see the Netbank runner um, being with Marina and also with Leslie. So Netbank for, th for 350 runners in the race are, are being very obvious. <laughs> 
I think it's important for the South African athletes as well, is that they may not have achieved what they've set out to be. They mustn't give up hope because there is these races within the race, and that race of being the first South African home is actually quite significant. It's just enough to make you not sort of give up all hope because you may not have achieved what you had initially set out to do, like we know that that has happened to Fawa. Well, fourth place for Marina Mishanova. We're going to have a, a short uh, commentary change in just a few moments. And uh, before, just uh, before we do that, we're going to bring home the Russian. And uh, she has done very well congratulating from the crowds. This is the amazing thing about the Comrades Marathon, is that no matter where you finish on the street, whether you finish right at the back of the field with the 12-hour bus, or whether you're finishing in fourth place, everybody feels like a winner at the Comrades. And uh, they narrow a little, uh, I know that this year they made the little entrances, the little alleyways around that you have to run through, slightly narrower, which allows people to get a little closer to the runners and you feel the atmosphere a bit more. And Division Noble will be feeling that now. The commentators, the stadium commentators, will be bringing her home. And uh, for a runner that is competing against uh, some of the best in the world, she's done exceptionally well today. You can see the spectators banging against these pin branded uh, signs, and that's very much like uh, Oslo. Uh, Bislut uh, track, and that has got more track records on it than any other track record uh, track, uh, because the spectators are so close. So there's Marina coming across in six hours, 30 minutes, and 54 seconds. Um, fantastic run, very controlled run all day today. So as three gold medals. The fastest time up again, we comrade. Cool and Tombazana 625 18. Police or Tigelenich on Leo. Bazak, a so as you are a good and the jungle of Pam for the next free to 31434 to get your sexy mobile menu now. Boys, get your own sexy mobile menu right now. See you there. 